Get ready to match the stars. Bart Braverman, Brett Summers, Charles Notzenrader, from Falcon Press, Abby Dolan, McLean Stevenson, and Marshall Wallace as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Raymond. Thank you. That tie is dynamite. TNT. Dynamite. I learned it from Fred Astaire. Looking real good. He wears, he was the first one to wear this kind of combination. He really was. What combination? The, uh, what do you call this? Lavender. Lavender. Lavender and. Lavender and, you know. <laughs> Looks great. Lace. Absolutely. You see short and old age. Just, just a touch mafia, but very nice. <laughs> Here we have Gina Smith and Mimi Cutcall. Cutcall. All right. What kind of name is Cutcall? Russian. It is Russian. Yes. That's your married name. Yes. What was your maiden name? Mulder. Yes. Was your husband born in this country or born in Russia? This country. <laughs> what is wrong with you, madam? Are you in pain? Really? All right. Gina Smith, you ready to have to go at this? Yes. All right, let's go. Where are we? We're in the other half of round one, and uh, this is yours, Mimi. Yes. Here it is. Dan said, my wife is the world's worst cook. <laughs> How worst is she? Worst. Imagine that, and they're booing me. Never worst. Right. <laughs> Here's how bad she is. For dinner, she served creamed chipped blank. <laughs> Here we go, Mimi. Ready, Chuck? Dan said, my wife is the world's worst cook for dinner. She served cream chip blank. How about rat? <laughs> that ain't gonna get you nowhere. We are thinking something implausible here. Something that you would, so you would normally nice. serve cream chip beef, right? Or corned beef hash or something like that. Oh. We're thinking of something that you would never dream of creaming or chipping, right, Bart? Bet you saw that Gordon Liddy movie, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> he ate rats too, which yeah, is not it. what he should have eaten. Yeah. Really um, I thought Cheerios would be nice. Cream right. chip Cheerios. Or, chip or cream Cheerios. Go, Brett. I have one question to ask about Gord the Gordon Liddy film they did. Why? Yeah. Potato chips. All right, another good response. Liver. You would never cream or chip that either. All right, what would you not cream or chip, Abby? Well, I would never cream or chip a hockey puck. No. Good idea. Well, my Good husband sure. has uh, yes. said some of the things. Right. Yes. That's my speciality. Really? Yeah. You must cream chip hockey. Party puck. What is it called? Party. Not quite how we had heard Party it. Party puck. Party puck. I see. You're hot today. Okay, McClay. <laughs> Uh, I've had a party puck, and it's, uh... Are they tender? Tender? Quite. I, I enjoyed it. Tasty? Yeah. Good. Yeah, it gives you something to do for the whole evening. Just sit yeah. there and Parboiled. chew on that sucker for a Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 I had uh, Argyles and Jello. Cream chipped Argyles and Jello. That's a very good answer. Thank you. Well, you're blinded by the eye of love. It just stinks. <laughs> Show us a good one. Darling. Show us well, a good one. Well, this isn't too hot either. Oh. I should keep my mouth shut. Cream chip dishes. Well, that's good. Any, well, I mean, anything they were broken anyway. anyway. Anything implausible well, is all right. Oh, I know. It's a lot worse. I'm not blinded well, by the eye. Round two. That's You're ahead, Gina. You're you have right. to go first. A again. A it is. All right. Here we go. Huh? You ready? Sure. Yeah. Drift it off for a rest. moment there. Sherry said, "I'll never go out with that guy again." This is Sherry speaking. <laughs> No, she is said, Sherry a sissy or a girl? No, this is a girl, Sherry. She's speaking. She says, he's too fresh. All he wanted to do was play tug of blank. <laughs> That's disgusting. Here we go. Sherry said, I'll never go out with that guy again. He's too fresh. All he wanted to do was play tug of blank. Oh, gee, it's you. Right. <laughs> tug of... 
panties. Tug of panties. That's perfectly all right. Yeah. I do not understand this audience. Some of them are blowing hot and some cold. I mean, one minute from one minute to another, you never know what to expect from them. What do you say? Oh, well, life is tough, don't you know, hon? I said tug of tongues. Tug of tongues. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Tug of tush. <laughs> We will not ask you to explain that, Charles. <laughs> Things go. He's you too don't wear fresh. gloves. Let's leave it at that. Oh, all right. All he wanted to do was play tug of blank. Well, something that really stretches, and we all remember and love these, bra. Tug of bra. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was kind of fun. Yes, it was. <laughs> so, now, you have one more chance to catch up. But first, this for you. Here we go, ladies. Mimi, three to tie, four to win. Mimi Kekar. Pete said, that guy must have been a hockey player. He's got a sign on his desk that says, the blank stops here. <laughs> Mimi, Pete said that guy must have been a hockey player. He's got a sign on his desk that says, the blank stops here. Puck? The puck stops here. play on the buck stops here as you well know yes i feel almost guilty having written it down it was so easy but you did write it even though i spelled it wrong right okay he wrote the puke stops here but that's all right we understand if you'd had the night i had last night that's what you right. would have written too <laughs> no 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 the puck stops here all right score is now three to two moving on to a third spelling the puck stopped <laughs> here another spelling Three to three, you got P and K. <laughs> oh, goodness. Abby, sign on his desk that says the blank stops here. And it was a creamed one, too. Right. Puck. All right. That the game. What do we got over there? Puck. Oh, six oh, puck. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, you know, uh, we'll roll this stand over there in the blue dot, if you would, please. And uh, we'll uh, spin you around, but spin you back later for game number two. So uh, do not be dismayed. You'll have another shot at it. Oh, right there. All right, here we go with a big super match. Good luck to you, my dear. You could win a bundle of money here. We polled the studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Harsh blank. Harsh blank. Who do you want? I'd like Charles. Harsh punishment. All right, there's one. Marsha? Something I know nothing about, but I've heard. Harsh detergent. Harsh detergent. <laughs> and right. Abby. Harsh words. Harsh words. So you have words, punishment, and detergent. Do you want one of those or one of your own? Um, I'll go with words. Harsh words? All right, that was Abby's answer. Let's see if it's up there, and if so, where? Harsh words is what she's after. May we see the bottom one, please? Harsh taste. Well, that's a commercial phrase that we hear often. The next one says... Harsh words or language, uh, but that's uh, not close enough yet. Right. All right, harsh words is what she wants. Do we have it? We do! Very good judgment. Very good. Now, you've got the $500 there, my dear. That means the least you'll play for is $5,000, but step up there and uh, grab that peg right there. Give it a spin, not too hard, because it's kind of loose. McLean Lane, 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 Lane. Want to join us? Uh, right there, <laughs> on the blue dot facing me. Here we go. Good luck to you. Worth $5,000. Pretty good amount there. You must match him now. I'm glad I'm blank. Take a look at it so that you understand it completely. I want you to look at it too. Oh, I think I see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. 
Your job is to match McLean. If you do that, you get $5,000. What do you say to that? I'm glad I'm free. Free? Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm free. Well, some people like that. You look and some are a little uncertain about it. What'd you say, John? Me. What do you say, McLean? This time I said Trenton, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're not even close. I'm sorry. I said, I'm glad I'm me. I'm glad I'm me. Yeah, very good response. Well, it rhymes. Give her 2500 for God's sake. Why not? Now, Mimi, you've got $500, and you still have uh, one more game to play, and uh, you can come back here again. Let's see what happens as we bring your opponent back here. Here comes Gina Smith. Welcome back, Gina. Thank you. That wasn't a very long trip. Didn't get too lonely, did it? No. Now, you start once again, A or B. I'll go with B this time. All righty. Lily said, Hello. I think my marriage is in trouble. <laughs> On my first anniversary, my husband bought me a bouquet of roses. This year, he bought me a bouquet of blank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gina. Lily said, oh. I think... <laughs> she said, I think my marriage is in trouble. On my first anniversary, my husband bought me a bouquet of roses. This year, he bought me a bouquet of blank. I'll say weeds. Weeds. <laughs> All right. Nothing wrong with weeds, is there? No. <laughs> All right. I tell you a funny story. Tell me a funny story. We'll be the judge of that. No, when wait a minute. When I was a little kid, yeah, I, I went to a camp, uh, a sleepaway camp. It was on Catalina, as a matter of fact. And we went hiking one day, and a fellow fell into a bed of these, a bouquet of cactus. Oh, that they would hurt. They shipped him home in a, very delicately. They had uh, to remove all those needles. Huh? One by one. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, they it was nasty. barbs out on there. He was running, you know, and he went, hi. Ah! Just like that. <laughs> Sorry to the sound, man. Whatever happened to him? That was fascinating. All right. <laughs> you were fascinated with that? <laughs> now, right. would you like to be the judge of that story? <laughs> no. Harsh words. The correct yes. answer. Weeds. Weeds. There it is. Weeds. Weeds it is. This is Steph. I'm trying to do my job. I my money. All right. Uh, my first anniversary, my husband bought me a bouquet of roses. This year, he bought me a bouquet of... Well, this is more specific, but I believe this is a weed. Poison ivy? <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying, Yes, that's trying. very nice, trying. Yes. Sweet lady, she's trying. McLean always tries. I know. But he rarely succeeds. That's true. <laughs> no, he's been wonderful on this show. Are we still... Uh, the lady, the I think... No, no, I'm the judge of that. Oh, I say he's wonderful. Your time is up. <laughs> Okay, Marsha, back to you with the sports course. <laughs> no, we have to have your answer first. No, I just noticed the lady was holding up a sign that said stretch, and I know everybody was doing the best they could, which yes. means we had to fill a little time. I'm right. certainly not going to take up your time by telling anything terribly important either. Right. Except that every time whoever's sitting in this chair drops his or her card through this slot, yeah. we use an India ink here. <clears throat> Generally, the answers are not dry for about three and a half minutes. Right. Oh. Consequently, my right pant leg... <laughs> Looks a little bit like a Cincinnati Bengal football helmet. <laughs> Certainly not the most amusing story you've ever heard, but yes. a real filler. Yeah. Okay, I put down crabgrass, which is a weed. Crabgrass. Yeah, same yeah. to you, fella. <laughs> yeah. Scotch, you have no heart. Specifics do not match generals. All right, Marsha. I'm going to sew that into a sampler, hon. Sure. That's so pithy. <laughs> Now, I'm going to fill a moment and be informative. Right. What was the name of Patty Hearst's boyfriend when she got nabbed? Stephen Weed. Stephen Weed. Stephen Weed. A lot of people knew him. Yes. I guess we must have some of these, what is it, Symbionese uh, Liberation Army or what the heck ever they were called? Uh. Bunch Fun of weirdos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sue me, go ahead. We a lot of jokes about the What are you roast? doing here? You got three and you got none. <laughs> but you still have a chance to catch up later, but not now. Now we have this for you. Again, the star of our show, Gene Weber. Ready, Mimi? Oh, 
Whoops, wait a minute. I dropped my knob. Here it is. Oh, it really... Did that hurt? <laughs> yes, it did. Would you like to kiss it and make it better? <laughs> little head this has never fallen really apart smart, this way it? before. Well, I guess it needs a little, little glue or crazy something. crazy glue. Yeah, a little crazy glue. Is that what you guys use? A little crazy glue. Well, it's going to fall off again, so I'll just put it right there because the mic will work just as well without it. Gary said, last night I had a wonderful dream. I dreamed I spent the rest of my life putting Vicks VapoRub on blank. <laughs> Ready, Bart? Yeah, here we go. Gary said, last night I had a wonderful dream. I dreamed I spent the rest of my life putting Vicks VapoRub on blank. Um, Dolly Parton's... Dolly Parton. <laughs> She said, Dolly Parton. Well, I didn't want to make my answer sexist because I know that a certain amount of women would be angry with me. Right. But I've wanted to match at the same time. And we're a sexist nation, so let's face it. I said the chest of a beautiful woman, which would be Dolly Parton. All You'll right. be hearing from Dolly's lawyers shortly, Ira. <laughs> All right, Brett. Ain't that a I've always wanted to be sexist. And sexy, so I put the desk chest of Dolly Parton. The chest of Dolly Parton. All right, there's one. Dolly Parton, and he did it from nine to five. Aha. Uh -huh. yes, you got it. <laughs> it would take that long, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Really? I spent the rest of my life putting Vicks VapoRub on. And she did say Dolly Parton's. Yes, she did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped her in the nick of time. <laughs> All right, McLean. I, too, said Dolly Parton. You said that. <laughs> Dolly Parton's. All right. That's Look four how jaded her. they are. They should be screaming with delight and thrills. Dolly Parton! <laughs> You know how to get them going. Oh, we got a game going here, haven't we? A good game. We go to round two. It's five to three in your favor. That means you have to go first. Um, I would Enough. like B, please. B it is. One person plays. Whom? Dumb Bart. <laughs> You'll be hearing from my mother. Dumb Barton Oaks is a wonderful place. Dumb Barton Oaks. It's in you. New Hampshire. Helen said, my husband doesn't know his own strength. Last night he kissed me and broke my blank. Helen <laughs> said, my husband doesn't know his own strength. Last night he kissed me and broke my blank. <laughs> <laughs> Helen said, my husband doesn't know his own strength. No. <laughs> not in this country, it's not. All right. Helen said, my husband doesn't know his own strength. Last night he kissed me and broke my blank. Teeth? Teeth. <laughs> Hadn't occurred to me, but maybe it occurred to Bart. Lips, he broke my lips. Uh, lips, close. <laughs> All right. Gina, that means you need two to tie and three to win. Let's see what we have here. What? You want to do a commercial? Sure. If you want to do a commercial, that's okay with us. Because we're very easy to get along with. Here is a commercial message just for you, friends. We arranged this specially just for you. Only one time will you see this commercial during this program. Only once during this half hour will you be able to... Now, before tomorrow's show, I guarantee you we'll get some crazy glue and uh, we'll put this together again because I know it disturbs you when you see this unfamiliar situation here. That was so nice. Yes. Listen, are, are you... Uh, <laughs> Is there something wrong? With no, everything's all, all right. You want to tell us something about your show? What do you want to talk about? Well, it's uh, on Friday night on CBS at 10 o'clock following Dallas. And it's called Falcon Crest. Starring Miss Jane Wyman and Robert Foxworth and Susan Sullivan, and uh, we're doing quite well in the ratings. Yep. Thank you all for watching. I... Say hello to Bob Foxworth. Jane. I knew him when he was an undergraduate. Jane.
Gene, I can't get over that. Can't get over what? Fred Astaire put those two colors together. He was the first one to wear <laughs> a lavender tie amazing. with a uh, dark suit. I thought there. he just danced. No, he did a lot of Good wonderful night, things. Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Join us next time for the match game. I'm Gracie Rayburn. Today's contestants will also receive no cholesterol Hollywood safflower oil, higher in polyunsaturated fats than any other kind of oil from Hollywood Foods. Gas saving Quaker State Sterling Motor Oil, especially blended to help save gas and money. You'll be staying on the road with Quaker State. Minwax makes it easy to bring out the best in wood and top it with lasting protection. You can do wonders with wood finishing by Minwax. And a master mechanic 10 gallon shop back from two value hardware stores and combine value and personal service in over 5,000 locations nationwide. She works up her energy. She goes, ooh. <laughs> it's an actress's trick, isn't it? I said, yes. I said, Tallulah, what happened to your voice? And she didn't understand. Tallulah, <laughs> you're wearing a div you're wearing the Tallulah wig today, aren't you? Well, not exactly, darling, but close. <laughs> yes, uh, she does look like Tallulah, doesn't she? she like yeah. And the same age. <laughs> <laughs> they found her in a raft in the parking lot. Is everyone all right down here? We're just fine. Yes, yeah, so your twinsies there, both yeah. the flaming red. And We're gonna go to Saks out. later. <laughs> you are, dear. I <laughs> so like that. No, no, no. All right, let's all get it together now and say hello to our two players over here, Don Silifant and Pat Hale. How are you, Don? Fine, thank you. Don is our current champion. He has won five thousand six hundred dollars, and he's being challenged by Pat. And where are we? We finished round one at the score is three to two at the end of round one. And uh, are you ready, Pat? Yes, sir. All right, we'll start round two right after we finish this message for you. Here we go. I'll push this button, reveal our second round questions, ask Pat our challenger to make a selection. A, please. A is what you want. The last time you matched three, that was the... Jimmy's position, Brett's position, and Gary's position. The Bobsy triplets. And Brett and Gary were both here. Yeah. I just got here. Wait you a minute. You just got here, and you don't do nothing until I tell Holy you to. Holy mackerel. All right. <laughs> now, this is for you, lower tier. Santa Claus's elves were shocked when they saw Mrs. Claus pulling Santa's blank. <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad I'm not writing here. I don't want to write and spoil my image. <laughs> Did you hear that, Pat? Santa Claus's elves were shocked when they saw Mrs. Claus pulling Santa's blank. <laughs> All right. There you are. She's finished, and we'll call on Pat Hale now. Santa Claus's elves were shocked. Pat, when they saw Mrs. Claus pulling Santa's blank. Britches. What's that? Britches. Britches. <laughs> she didn't say whether Mrs. Claus was pulling him up or down, so I guess, <laughs> I guess we're all right. <laughs> she said britches. What did you say, little girl? <laughs> I was going to be terribly straight today and say beard. Pulling his beard. Yeah. 
That would hurt, wouldn't it, if Mrs. Claus was pulling his beard? Wouldn't that hurt, Richard? Pardon? <laughs> No, I liked it when I had a beard. I liked oh, yeah? That. yeah? People pulled your beard? What shocked them? He was nude. And she was pulling the beard up. There. Oh. Beard. <laughs> That's, uh... I love the beard. <laughs> now, Joyce, it's up to you to she, see if she's going to match you. She was really pulling his leg, but I said beard. <laughs> beard. Three beards, Pat. That seems to have been the answer. All right, now, Don, you're in a good spot. You need one to tie and two to win. <laughs> Brett does not play and Joyce does not play. Everybody I else does. I hope everyone is aware of the fact that I have become much smarter on this program lately. Well, that's that was right. the only way you could go, darling. Up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now listen to this, those of you who are involved. Gladys was so fat. How fat was, was she? I'll tell you how fat she was, and I'm glad you asked. In her high school production of the play Bad Night for the Titanic, she played the blank. Oh, I like that question. I wish I were playing. That's how fat Gladys was. In her high school production of the play Bad Night for the Titanic, she played the blank. What a terrific answer. Of course, why not? The Black Prince strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting for Gary, would you say that? Lovable word, just one time. You mean dynamite? Right. <laughs> you know what I missed, though? I I connect it with the. Would you hold my mic for a second? Yes. <laughs> Whenever I see you do it, you always go. You I'm always, always do, standing you always... up. I always have a standing position, yes. and I'm in movement. I'm gliding down the aisle, yes. and I say, dynamite. <laughs> That's the Jimmy Walker we all know. All right, are you ready here? Gladys was so fat. Ask me how, how fat, fat she was. How fat was she, Jimmy? I'll tell you how fat she was, Don. In her high school production of the play Bad Night for the Titanic, she played the blank. Titanic. The Titanic. He said she played the Titanic. What did you say? Titanic? That was the question? No, he, oh. he said she played the part of the Titanic because well, no, she was Well, no, that fat. was played by Fat Beulah. <laughs> what I did was he in play? that. I was in that. You were in the play? That's why I was in that play. Gladys played the part of the... Iceberg. The Iceberg. Of course! Yes. That's right. Oh. <laughs> How soon they forget. Yes. Don't Jesus pick cry. on a star, kids. <laughs> yes, that's right. He's got his own show. Leave him alone. <laughs> What'd you say? She's not I writing. said I love your suit. Oh, you're not writing there, are you? <laughs> See, Gary, she really does are. talk when it's not her turn. It's That's not right. always me. That's right. She's the one. Actually, I was going to say, would you read the question? No, yes. don't, uh, you don't have to read the question. She was so fat. I was going to say she played Fanny's flag, but she's not here today, so I said the ship. The ship, the yeah. Titanic. She's a man. There's a man. Well, now, John, that's one more for you, and you've tied the score three to three, and you have two more to go. One more will win the game for you. Let's see what this lady has here. One more wins a game. Wins a game. What you have? This is the iceberg. Come on down. Congratulations. Another hundred dollars for you, John. Now, Pat. We thank you for being with us, and we wish you the very best of luck. And we've got a gift for you, together with our thanks. Pat Hale, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye, my dear. Now, while uh, she's spinning around there, we'll spin this message for you. All right, here's our money-winning fireman, Don Siliphant, who's already won $5,700 and going to have a go at over $5,000. Now, are you ready? I am ready. Yeah. You sound a little uh, tired and dispirited today. Is everything all right? <laughs> yeah, I had kind of a tough night after I left your show last night. What happened? I had to go back to work, and uh, they didn't believe I was a celebrity, so they made me spend the rest of the night there. You worked all night? Yeah. And here you are today? Oh, I love it. You haven't any sleep? No. And you're still winning money? Oh, I can't stand it. Well, you better never sleep again. <laughs> Let's uh, have a go at it now. We polled a recent studio audience, got their best response to this. Blank March. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250. And the third, $100. Three uh, celebrities are permitted to help. Whom do you choose? Uh, Richard. Frederick March. Frederick March is one. Joyce. I'd 
Ides of March. The Ides of March. All right. And I'll try Jimmy. You'll oh. try Jimmy. Uh, it's tough uh, in the third position, Jimmy, but just uh, take a second now and think about it. I'll use that. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand. Uh, 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 month of March. The month of March. Thank right. you, crowd! The crowd goes with me! <laughs> hey, applause you even when you give a rotten answer there. Okay, you got the month of March, you got Frederick March, and the Ides of March. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own. What do you want to do? I'll try Frederick March. You'll try Frederick March. Okay, let's find out if it's up there. And if it is there, where is it? That is the question. Of course, uh, Don is hoping it's under the $500 response, but we're going to begin at the bottom and reveal first the $100 response. Forward March. Forward March. Remember I that, should have fellas? gone into the Army. I know that. That's yeah. right. Is that what you were thinking of? All right, it's not there. We're looking for Frederick March. Let's see if it's under the $250 response. Ides of March. Okay. Last chance for Frederick March. Here is the $500 response. There. Oh. Wedding March. You oh, had Wedding March, Brad? I cannot yeah. be. That's, I cannot has she had anything else I on can't her mind? believe that either. Yeah. They obviously were all aliens who voted. Yes, that's right. <laughs> the most marvelous actor in the world, and he doesn't even get that. up on the board. I couldn't believe that either. Yeah, we were all good. expecting Frederick March oh, to come man. up there. Okay. Even well, Frederick March was expecting yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, Dan, you still got your $5,700. You're the oh, champ. You're going to play another game. Let's meet another player right now and welcome Tony Nasco. your seat up there, Don. You know Tony Nasco. I guess you've met backstage. And now Tony will tell us a little bit about herself as we welcome her. Yes, I will. I am originally from Hialeah, Florida. Mm -hmm. I've lived out here with my family for two and a half years. And I have a wonderful husband. And in the same breath with wonderful husband, I'd like to say that I have the most wonderful in-laws. You've got great in-laws. The greatest in-laws. Well, that's refreshing to hear, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. You've been married 53 My years? <laughs> My in-laws were oh, married they've been... 53 years this month. No kidding. So Are they here? No, they're not here. Okay. They're both out with other people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they had dates there. <laughs> All right, so what is that you've got in your hand, may I ask? <laughs> These are three little hearts that my little boy, Michael, made for me for good luck. This oh. one says, I love you, and this one has a picture of the two of us on it. And this one has a flower. Uh-huh. Well, that's very sweet of your little boy. We join him in wishing you the best of luck as we begin now. Tony, please make a selection. A, please. A. Everybody plays. It's a new game. Horace said, My new wife has a weird idea of what's fun. On our honeymoon, she made me wear a blank. <laughs> I, Horace said, my new wife has a weird idea of what's fun. On our honeymoon, she made me wear a blank. Because she thought it would be fun, you see. That was her idea of fun, making her new husband wear a blank. Do you understand? <laughs> all right. I got it already, honey. Jimmy I'm and Brett are finished. Sealed and delivered. Come on, Gary. Okay. I know. All right. Don't, don't get pushy. Don't get all pushy. All right. What are you talking about? <laughs> Dynamite. Everybody said so we'll call on Tony Nasco. Horace said, my new wife has a weird idea of what's fun. On our honeymoon, she made me wear a blank. A wig? A what? A wig? A wig. Tony said a wig. No, she that said, was you Brenner's wife. Who made it. <laughs> she said wig, Jimmy. What'd you say? Wig? Yes. Well, you from Miami Beach? <laughs> oh, they don't have those movies down there. Hi, a Elias. mask. A mask. <laughs> You got to go to those movies and see that match. Little short guy looks like Alan Garfield. That's enough. <laughs> All right, Brett, you're on. I've missed him so much, I'm so glad he's back. Yes, he's cute. Isn't he cute and he's adorable? Cute. Old devil. I said negligee. A negligee. She hadn't, she, been in, she hadn't been in the movie either, I don't think. Not that movie. What'd you say, Gare? I have no idea what I said. <laughs> Come on, you gotta I show have, it. I'm gonna have to look at it. I said a very dull thing. I just thought she might wear, make a tux. 
a tux. I know. <laughs> I know when I'm bad. All oh, right, Lee, what do you say? Well, I originally wanted to say tutu, but I went to a straighter version of the same thing, <laughs> a skirt. A and skirt. I don't, don't ask me why, I'm sorry. So far, we haven't been a negligee and a skirt. That was an interesting marriage, wasn't it? Yes, I know. <laughs> what did you say, Richard? Well, on my honeymoon, my, my wife <laughs> wanted me to wear a plastic baggie, but I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> so, I wore a skirt. Oh, you did. Yeah. <laughs> I wear them now, and I don't mind at all. You have to be careful because, you know, the, you use up the oxygen in them very quickly. <laughs> That's the fun part when you black out. <laughs> to do. Oh, uh, <laughs> on her honeymoon, she... Little blonde Caucasian lady. <laughs> the uh, question, uh, the thing that Tony said was, on our honeymoon, she made me wear a wig. Now, what did you say? I wouldn't be so naughty as you. I don't know what kind of movies you're talking about. A well, you've been mask. in them. A mask. <laughs> a Halloween mask. All right. Tony, you didn't score with that. We'll see how Don does with his first round question in a minute or so. But right now, this for you. All right, Don, are you ready for your first round question? I'm ready. This is it. Listen carefully. When the midget dentist pulled Sharon's tooth... I resent that. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> no, he was smaller than you. Much smaller. He was Thank a real you. midget. You're not a midget. I appreciate it. You that. are tall by comparison. Thank you. When the midget dentist pulled Sharon's tooth to get extra leverage, he stood on her blank. Get the picture? <laughs> Could you draw me a little a sketch of a, a, of a picture? Well, it's a midget chair. dentist, you right. see. Well, and when he's pulling this lady's tooth in order to get extra leverage, he stood on her, or leverage, he stood on her blank. Come on, it's easy, Shirley. It's a short dentist. Well, I know, but there are a lot of choices. It's all according well, to how it's, short it's, Let's it say was. he was nine inches tall, and then take it from there. No, what that's misleading. Uh, I'm not my dad. What are you doing to this lady? Here's an eyelash. You have an eyelash in your eye? I think I'm going to have to give you a complete physical to... <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to stand by? <laughs> all right, everybody ready? Okay, we'll come over here to Don. When the midget dentist pulled Sharon's tooth to get extra leverage, he stood on her blank. You know, he's, how small is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. How small do you think he was? Let's talk about it. I think he stood on her chest. Stood on her chest. <laughs> yeah. I guess that'd help a little bit. You can stand and push and pull there. What did you say, Jim? Well, besides being a dentist, he also liked mountain climbing. <laughs> on her chest. On her chest. Of course. Right, that's one for you, Don. Brett, where did this little fellow stand? If anybody I mean... stood on my chest, I tell you, do you know how you'd scream? It would hurt. Worse than, well, it's worse than getting a tooth out. I said he stood on an old tum tum. Tum tum. I'm sorry. That wouldn't hurt as much, ma'am. What did you say, Gary? He stood on her chest of drawers. On her oh. chest. Super, you done? Where did the sick lady say he stood? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a lot taller than everyone else's. Oh, really? He, had, he stood on her knees. He stood on her knees. Uh, okay, yeah. that'd help a, a little bit, wouldn't it? <gasps> now, the answer that Don is looking for, he, to get extra leverage, he stood on her chest. What did you say? Well, he did that, and then he turned face the other way. Jumped off and committed suicide. <coughs> her bazooms. Bazoom her chest. Okay, that's three done. What did you say? On her lap. He stood on her lap to get extra leverage to pull her little tooth out. All right, so that's three for you, and now we go to round two. Ready, Tony? Go. B, please. B. Here we go. Everybody plays because she didn't match anybody in the first round. Mickey Mouse said, he said, Well, uh, uh, yesterday I came home early. <laughs> I found Minnie blanking the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> spelling doesn't count, does it? Spelling doesn't count. It's, it's, it's the not. thought <laughs> behind the spelling that counts. Oh, oh God! Oh, please! Wrong <laughs> 
All right. Never comment on what she writes off the right. camera. <laughs> okay. She's now, we're all set over there, Wright. I guess. And we'll come over here to Tony Nasco. Mickey Mouse said, Well, I, I, uh, yesterday I came home early and I found Minnie blanking the Pillsbury Doughboy. Playing with. Playing with the Pillsbury Doughboy? <laughs> You've led a very sheltered life, haven't you? <laughs> the unmarried maiden said playing with the Pillsbury Doughboy. What do you say? It's that sun on Miami Beach getting to your head. Highly. <laughs> you got to get out of that sun, mama. <laughs> you got to come over and watch where there ain't nothing, no sun at all. <laughs> Deal with the streets. <laughs> If you ever watch the commercial, you see the little Pillsbury Roy going. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he goes. That's exactly how he goes. Tickling the Pillsbury Playboy. Tickling. There you Gosh. got it. Okay, Brad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a way, that could be playing with. You're right. Yeah. Are you coughing? I'm not well. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, actually, I said dancing. Mickey, uh, Minnie, Minnie Mouse and the Pillsbury <laughs> Joe Boy were dancing. Yeah, yeah they were dancing. They yeah, were dancing. God, um, they were dancing. Indeed, um, okay. They yeah. were in Encino. <laughs> they had a bambino. <laughs> Just from dancing? <laughs> okay, Gary. Uh, what do you see in that microscope there? Yeah. Could you help me out? I have something in my eye. Yes. <laughs> Mice are very voracious little animals. Well, voracious. they oh, eat a lot, Pillsbury and I show. said baking the Pillsbury Doughboy. Baking the Pillsbury. Oh, the audience likes that answer. Come on, man. They're with you. Yeah. Okay. Now, you've got to match the remaining is. ones, Tony, to stay in the game, the lower tier. All right, Lee, you're on. I think this is absolutely the same as playing with its hugging. That's what I think. Hugging and playing with. No, that's not. So John wins his third game. Loving and poking. Okay. Oh, you're getting there little by little, aren't you? Now you're up to $5,800, and uh, you stand by for a moment or so, Don, and uh, we'll get to you in a minute. Now, Tony's got to go. I'm sorry to see you go, Tony. I enjoyed it so much. You're a sweet lady, a love to your son, and a gift for you. Tony Nasco, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye, Tony. Now, uh, she's spinning around, we'll spin this commercial for you. Gene Weber in Match Game 75. Join us next time. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Hudson Bill Sutton production. This program was edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars. Bert Condi, Brett Summer, Jack Corner, Tammy Flay, Richard Dawson, and Ann Elder as we play the Star Seven Funny Match Game 73. And now here's the host of Match Game 73, Gene Weber. Oh, okay, that's the way it's going to be. I'm not going to talk to you either. I'll talk to these people out here. What would you like to talk about? <laughs> okay, I'm going to wear it anyway. I don't care what you say. And I don't care what you say. And... <laughs> Jack, see if you can fix the channel, will you? <laughs> Something is wrong with my set. Oh, gosh. All right, I'll talk to Susie. Looks like a station break in Poland. <laughs> Look at that. You had to break the spell, hey? That was so beautifully woven. But Susie is our current champion. She's won $600. Uh -huh. And... Uh, 
when we ran out of time last time, she had finished the audience match part of the super match, and now she's going to go for $5,000. You ready, Susie? Uh-huh. Yes, as ready as I'll ever be. Okay, we'll have a go at that right after we have a go at this. Okay. You know what we're going to do here now? Okay, you've won your $500 in the audience match. That means you will now be playing for 10 times that amount, or $5,000. Now, to collect the money, you must match one celebrity on a head-to-head -head basis, and it's time to choose that celebrity now. Gee, they're all good. Um, I guess I'll go with Bert. You'll go with Bert. Okay, Bert, you get ready to write. Yes, and Susie, you face me. And here is the $5,000 question. If you'll write your answer to this, please. Blank cookie. Blank cookie. C-O-O-K-I-E. Okay, he's finished. And now, Susie, it's time for you to fill in that blank. Blank cookie. How do you do it? Chocolate cookie. Chocolate cookie is what she says. And some of the people in the audience think you're right and are wrong. Who knows? We'll find out right now. Bert, for $5,000, may we see your answer, please? Could have been many different cookies, and I said fortune cookie. Fortune cookie. I think both answers were good, oh. chocolate cookie and fortune cookie. Well, listen, there's nothing to be discouraged about, Susie, because you're up to $600. You're going to meet another player right now and play another game, and you may get back here. Let's say hello to Mary Ellen Braden. Hello, Mary Ellen. You ladies know each other, do you? Hi. Mary Ellen, would you tell us where you're from and a little bit about yourself, please? I live in Los Angeles. I'm a vocational and educational counselor, and I'm married to an adorably insane <laughs> uh, law school graduate and children's services worker, and we're rearing two cats. You have two cats? Oh, yes. Where is this adorable Orangutan insane fellow? Orangutan and vanilla. <laughs> there is a Mr. Adorable Insane Fellow over there. <laughs> Hello there. All right. It's the man that attacked me in the car park. That's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so he's rooting for you, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. He you know that you here. and Susie will be uh, answering questions, trying to match our six celebrities. The one who does that most often at the end of the second round will be the winner and have a go at the super match and a shot at over $5,000. Mary Ellen, would you make a selection, please? B for Braden. B for Braden, that's her name. Here it is. Everybody plays. Gary said, I hear they're making another one of those wild science fiction movies. In this one, a giant blank eats Los Angeles. <laughs> you don't like that question, lady? I, I'm not crazy about it. Well, just, uh, just put an answer down anyway. Well, I, Gary that's said, my I hear job. they're making another one of those wild science fiction movies, and this one, a giant blank eats Los Angeles. Oh, you're ready. Okay, first. Last. As usual. All right. Well, a giant. What have we written here? <laughs> Fanny, dear. I'm sorry. She's right. going to need two witnesses. Are we going to have to spend all week rehearsing your writing? All right. I'm sorry. Now they're all ready. So, Mary Ellen, in this one, a giant blank eats Los Angeles. What? Gorilla. A giant gorilla eats Los Angeles. Harking <laughs> back to King Kong days, I suppose. Bert, what do you say? I say that is an incredible suit. <laughs> I want to hear you read the question again. I just want to hear you talk. No, no, come on. Now, 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 now. I want to see you move around like so I can watch the pattern jump. <laughs> I said a giant bug ate Los Angeles. Oh. Giant bug. So she heard that. Could happen, you don't know. Gorilla, and uh, that's not a match, so Brett, we go to you. I could have said Fay Ray, but I didn't. I said bug. Bug, okay. Oh, they're both yes, bugs. Charlie. Yeah. This yeah. whole panel is bug. <laughs> I saw the movie. It was a giant creature, the monster. A but creature monster. No match there looking for a gorilla what have you got i know i had too much pressure on me i had apple i couldn't <laughs> <Giant apple. laughs> what are we going to do with her now don't cry everything's going to be all right richard what have you got i dreamt that granny smith attacked me on fairfax <laughs> <laughs> no actually a giant tomato 
Sprick. <laughs> oh, it was not an apple. It was a not. tomato. I'm surprised you guys. Yeah, okay. Oh. What do you say? I thought it was a meatloaf that ate it, but I thought a monster. A monster. Oh, yeah. monster. So the gorilla didn't work for you. Let's see what works for you over here, Susie. Susie Grabiel. Uh, Grabiel, we've got this for you. Say it again. <laughs> the prince said. The what? Does anybody the lay out this the time? What? The prince said. The prince. The prince. The prince. I tried to awaken Sleeping Beauty by kissing her, but that didn't work. So I guess I have to blank her. The prince said that. You remember the prince? He said, I tried to awaken Sleeping Beauty by kissing her, but that didn't work, so I guess I'll have to blank her. Old fast and quick. That's right. Ready over here. Or was it fast and loose? I can't remember. Go ahead, Okay, now we're all set. And we'll get an answer from Susie. The prince said, I tried to awaken Sleeping Beauty by kissing her, but that didn't work, so I guess I'll have to. Tickle her? To tickle her. She says, to tickle her. What do you say? Oh, how I wish I'd said tickle. I said he'll have to goose her. Okay. You have to wake them up, you know. It's a... Cut. <laughs> Terrible. Okay, there we go, Brett. No, no. We went through this earlier in the week. I'm not going to go... This goes with tinkle. And goose? Is that a way to speak on a television We're, We're not going to talk about it, my dear. Just move right along. Well, I've been married, as most people know, to Jack Klugman for 17 what, what's, years. What's his name? Who, who's that? Jack, what's his name, for 17 years. And we have finally reached the stage where we consider we're lucky if we can tickle somebody to wake up. I thought you'd never say it. Uh, what do you say, Jack? I forgot my question. <laughs> I mean, you I, can't rattle them and you can't roll them. You have to shake them. I said shake. shake. Shake and tickle do not match. All right, Fanny. Apple. No. I Apple. said pinch. Pinch and tickle. No match there. Would you accept pinch or tomato? No. No. <laughs> no and pinch. How about a third pinch? How about another pinch? Pinch seems to have been the answer. So you scored once there at the end of round one. It's one to nothing. Favor the champion. We'll go to round two right after we go to this. All right, we're going to go on with this game. We finished round one, and uh, here we go to round two. Mary Ellen, would you make a selection? I'll go for B again. B is what Mary Ellen wants, and this is it. Everybody plays. Are we on the air? We're on the air now. <laughs> one theater usher flag. said one. to the other. One who? One theater usher said to the other. Yes. Can you believe I actually found someone's blank under one of the seats? <laughs> Watch it. Theater usher. Two theater ushers talking to each other, you see. One said to the other, can you believe I actually found someone's blank under one of the seats? Yes. Okay. Jack, ready? Here we go. Mary Ellen, how do you fill in that blank? One theater usher said to the other, can you believe I actually found someone's blank under one of the seats? Wife? I actually oh, found someone's God. wife I take my answer? under one of the seats. <laughs> too late because we've had too many shouts from the audience here now. Let's go on to our celebrities and find out what Bert has. Yes, I said somebody's pants under the seat. Somebody's perfectly... Right. Okay. All right. Solomon. Well, I came say? close to pants. I said underwear. Underwear? Wife what is her answer. Say? Lost his shorts under the seat. Okay. <laughs> So far, no wife under the seat. Fanny, what do you say? I, sa I, I said, uh, found their stub. stub. A ticket stub. Okay. Okay. A lot of help. Is it that? Is it gentlemen? Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, which is, what do you say? It's a religious experience sitting here next to Fanny. <laughs> Excuse me, is that your stub? <laughs> Found her undies under the old seat of Rooney. Now, we're in a rather strange situation here. This doesn't happen too often, but Mary Ellen, uh, you must match Anne, or the game is over. Anne, may we see it? Wife is the answer. Well, I hate to disappoint her, but I said a what? Wife! <laughs> so, 
You got saved by Ann Elder there. All right. So at this moment, it's tied. Now, Susie, all you need is one match to win the game. Here we go. Everyone except Brett. You matched last time. No, Brett. So you won't do it this time. You're taking your last Brett. Are you trying to tell me something, James? When James Bond was in spy school, he got his best marks in blanking. James Bond in spy school. Spy school. Got his best marks in blanking. Can I talk while all the others are writing? I feel left out, James. Well, let's see. Uh, we've talked about uh, you and the new Perry Mason on CBS. Uh, and we've talked about... Uh, I did Password and, 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 and did a draw with Jack Klugman. I um, bet you were good. I was. I was terrific because, you know, when I played with him before, I only won one game for the whole week. All right. We're waiting for Bert and Jack. Okay. Now they're all ready. So, Susie... What do you say, when James Bond was in spy school, he got his best marks in blanking? Snooping or snooping? Snooping. Prying, you know, into people. Prying or snooping? Well, well all right, that's, that's what she it. says. <laughs> now, Bert, what did you say? Interesting, she said snooping, isn't it? I said, I, I know shooting, fighting, all those things, yes, but I said loving. Loving. <laughs> because he's uh, in a show, isn't he? Snoop Sisters, yes. Snoop sisters. Snooping is what it's all about, That's isn't right. it? That's yes. right, okay. All right, Jack. Well, I have the James Bond watch on, Pulsar. Oh, yes. But I knew he, he couldn't pass up a pair of 38s. So he was terrific at shooting. All right. No match there. Where do we go here, Fanny? Yeah, I said shooting. 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 Still haven't got a snooping there. Richard, are you a snooper? Yes, he's a tremendous lady, uh, gentleman with the ladies. So he did it. Best in his undercover work. <laughs> undercover work. I'll, I'll wait, I'll just wait. Let him lay there. That's a match. That wins the game. Undercover and snooping. That wins the game. Congratulations to you. Come on down. What do you have, Ann? Bugging. Bugging. It's close. Okay, so you've got another hundred dollars and you stand by for a moment here. Mary Ellen, it was a pleasure meeting you. We've got a gift for you, together with our Thank thanks you. for being with us on Match Game 73. Mary Ellen Brady. Now, Susie, you're up to $700, and here we are once again at the super match. And if you're ready, we'll have a go at it. You ready? Okay. All right, we polled a recent studio audience. We got their best response to this, post blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you can match it. The second most frequent response, $250. The third, $100. Three celebrities are allowed to help. Pick them one at a time, please. Richard. Post office. Post office you get from Richard Dawson. Okay. Yes. Jack. Uh, I'm torn between, uh, uh, I'd say postcard. Postcard. Uh, uh, post box. Post box. Okay. So you've got post office, post box, and postcard. You can give us one of those or choose one of your own if you'd like. Post office. Post office, she says. Okay. That's the one we're looking for. It's the one that Richard gave you. Let's go finding it. Now, let's find out what's under the $100 response. Post-mortem. Oh, Whoa. Never thought it was the Undertakers were in town that week, and a whole bunch of them came to the show. That's how we got the poll there. Okay, we're looking for post-office. May we see the $250 response? Post-card is one that Jack gave you. Still haven't gotten to the post office. Let's see if we get to it now under the $500 response. Ah! Post office it is! Okay. Congratulations. All right, I know you're very happy about that, and we'll get back to you right after we get to these messages. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Yes. Well, she's won the $500 in the audience match part of the super match here. Now we're going to go for 10 times that amount or... $5,000. And to collect that money, you must match one celebrity on a head-to-head -head basis. Which one will it be? Richard. All right, Richard Dawson. You got ready to write. He's all ready. You face me, if you would, please, Susie. Here is the $5,000 question. Ice blank. Ice blank. <laughs> Okay, 
Richard is now ready. So, Susie, how do you fill in that blank? Ice? Ice cream. Ice cream is what she says. Okay. Where are you going? I don't know. I'm nervous. <laughs> you are nervous? Well, we're all nervous, and we're all rooting for you. Now, Richard, for $5,000, would you please show us your answer? I can't believe what I did. I wrote Ice Cube, and then I thought, well, that can't be wrong. Can't be right. So, vanilla for everyone! <laughs> Would you all take your places? Hoops of the world are united. Ice cream. Okay, so now you're up to six thousand two hundred dollars. You're still the champion. You're going to meet another player. So let's all say hello to Emmy Rick, but no kissing. Ice cream. Hello there. You ladies know each other. Susie, Emmy, nice to have you with us. Would you tell us where you're from and a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm originally from Connecticut, a former airline stewardess and the mother of two daughters. Okay, good luck to you here. You know how this goes, do you? Right. Okay, I'll push the button and we'll go right to round one. We're all a little bit out of breath because we <laughs> kiss a lot on this show. And, uh, <laughs> oh, we, uh, we'll start this game, but first we've got to do a little business here and this is it. I'm sorry to say, ladies, that our time is up. We've just got time to say a leisurely goodbye. So, goodbye. Goodbye. So, uh, <laughs> You'll come back next time, will you? All right. Yeah. Splendid. Good luck to both of you. we just got time to say a leisurely goodbye here. So, uh, <laughs> I want to thank all of you for being with us. Uh, Bert, we're going to look for you on the Snoop Sisters. I hope and we'll so. look for you on... Um, uh, the new Perry Mason. I and want listen. everybody to buy Annie's new. She has a new album called The Watergate Comedy Hour. And it is a smash album. And go out and get it, please. Yes. Thank you, rich lady. I've heard ice cream for everybody. It is a brilliant, yeah. brilliant record. I've heard it. Uh, they play it on the radio stations mm -hmm. where I live, and it really is a very funny Great. thing. Yeah. And may I say that Fanny's on it, and she's brilliant. She is brilliant. Yes, yeah, Fanny, you're terrific. I'm so modest. Right. We share. I have that a Gumby special coming up. I'd like me. to mention. Uh, Hey, what, if, what would you like to say, Jim? Oh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm on Match Game, 73. Atta boy. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to uh, seeing all of you uh, uh, next time uh -huh. when we will have this terrific galaxy of stars. Jim Backus, Brett Summers, Nipsey Russell, Patty Deutsch, Richard Dawson, and Betty White. Okay, thank you for being with us. Steve Weber here saying so long for Match Game 73. Today's consolation prizes are Charm Glowette, the completely portable gas grill that goes anywhere. Instant flame without starter fluids or charcoal. Charm Glow products of Antioch, Illinois. And glamorous eternal lash eyelashes. You can put them on once and easily, they stay on alluringly. Work, shower, sleep, and stay beautiful. Eternal lash. And legs. Super stretching, super fitting patty holes made to fit your legs. No bags, no sags. Legs hug you, hold you, never let you go. And rice a roni, the big flavor side dish. is so quick, so easy. Saute and simmer to flavor. For perfection, rice aroni, the San Francisco treat. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73. A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. the stars from the Rockford Files, Joe Santos, Brett Summers, 
Charles Nelson Riley. From Happy Days, Lori Mahaffey. Bill Daly. And Marsha Wallace. As we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 79. And now, here's the star of Match Game 79. All right. Can we get it right? Yes. <laughs> You're going to stay here. All right, I'll go. Oh, I'll thanks very sure. much. Hey, nice. I, uh, do you like the trousers with it? Yeah, I was thinking safe flannels might be better than them. Well, what do you say? Wait, I like them. How's it look in the control room uh, there? Hi. Uh, Mark, is this an uh, answer? Do you really want an answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want an answer. There. Let's uh, all applaud. <laughs> Oh, thank you very I, much. Well, I couldn't see the, with the yes. blue, you see, with the thing, but now that I'm close up with my glasses on, I think it's adorable. You look cute as a button. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. This is Joanne Rupp and Mary Lou McKenna over here. Applause, applause. <laughs> Joanne, is, she's giggling and laughing and scratching because she has $11,200, <laughs> and that'll make anybody happy there. And, we met Mary Lou and found out that she's a body surfer, among other things, and she's ready to play the game, and we'll get right to it now and ask her if she wants A or B. A, please. All right. A says, Karen said this weather is really terrible. It's so cold, I have goosebumps on my blank. <laughs> this weather is terrible. It's so cold, I have goosebumps on my blank. Mary Lou never said she was a body surfer. Oh. She said she was a surfer. You put the body in. No, I think Mary Lou's put the body in. <laughs> I think you said you thought of her as a surfer with a good body, so no. that's why you said body surfer. Now, Mary Lou, do you do body surfing or uh, the other kind of surfing? No, I do body surfing. See, she does body surfing. There. No, you know, she, we were talking about it after we went off the air. Oh, really? And she told me she does body <laughs> surfing. And that's why I thought she had said it on the air, but I guess I was wrong. Which I am occasionally, maybe once every five years. Brad, are you ready? I'm standing here babbling like a... Oh, a, a, yes, waiting for you to finish. Oh, Karen said, this weather is really terrible. It's so cold. I have goosebumps on my blank. My shivers. Aww. On your shivers. You have spent a lot of time in the water, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> but you'll get better. <laughs> It happened to him the other day. Uh, what do you say? That sounded like one of my answers, but I put but. But. <laughs> yep. He got, old Joe gets right to it here. That's what we all like about him. What do you say? I thought of it more as a song title. <laughs> a song title? Sure. How's that go? Goosebumps on my bun. Oh. And goosebumps on my buns. Charles? Goosebumps on my goosebumps. Yeah! Goosebumps. what they say usually. I so call I get goosebumps on my goosebumps, right? Right. Right. Sort of. <laughs> oh. What did you say? Well, you Mary Lou say and that. I are Wait just sort of... Don't do that. That uh, makes me nervous. Oh. <laughs> That's gesturing. Oh, I see. I thought you like... had arthritis for a moment. You said nervous, but you don't mean nervous. <laughs> Brett, can I go home? <laughs> uh, no. Show us your card here. Oh, you can be replaced. Scalp. <laughs> goosebumps on my scalp. Well... Uh, goosebumps on my scalp. That could happen. <laughs> Leave her alone. She's she can cute. See. Look at that beautiful. No, 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 wait. Don't go. Don't go. Please, don't go. Her husband, who is big oh, and married? tall and strong. Oh, she married? Oh, rats. Oh, that was a dumb answer. I was <laughs> Uh, he will come and blacken your eye. Yes. Yeah. So what do you see? Here's say? how we do it here. Okay. See, if we put it in this way, then, then it's it upside down. Come out upside but down. then it comes out like this. Yes. Goosebumps on my goosebumps. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Yes. I that was true. Yes, Marshall. Yes, uh, yes, Marshall, my If dear. I were to match Bill Daly, yeah. I would run straight for the bin. <laughs> but I also match Charles. So, that's right. So, the three of you will go to hand in hand. Okay. Now, Joanne, you stand by. We'll have your round one question right now. We have a little message for you. Hello. <laughs> Joanne, here it is. Okay. Muggsy said. Yeah. Our neighborhood was really tough. That was kind of a half-hearted response from you. 
I don't want no more of that. He says, we never played catch with a ball. We played catch with a blank. That's how tough he was in my neighborhood. Brett? Well, I'm trying to think of something clever but correct. Copy from Joe. <laughs> okay, I'll just have to put down anything. I mean, I'll just have to put down... I'll just have to... Joanne. All right, I'm sorry. You're changing your mind. No, no, I'm not changing my mind. That's your privilege. No, I'm not changing my Anything you want, Bill. No, I'm You're fine. You're a guest. I'm just, no, I'm just You're sitting You're an honored here. guest I'm in our house. No, I'm finished. I finished. For the last I'm really time. finished after this answer. Muggsy said our neighborhood was really tough. We never played catch with a ball. We played catch with a blank. Grenade. Grenade. Okay. Grenade is good because you see her rationale is that a grenade looks like a ball a little bit. Yeah, but you got to come from New York to understand this one. A sewer cover. Yes, sir. Those guys were really tough. Right, Joe? Well, I figured they were, they were hard and tough and they could... And I, I can't apologize for this answer. What can I tell you? I said bowling ball. Bowling ball. Well, that's it. That would be difficult. That would be oh, tough. Ricky, it's, it's Nothing tricky. wrong with bowling ball. Exactly. Don't apologize for that at exactly. all. I just said rock, Gene. A rock, yeah. Well, you country kids, you see, you didn't know what it was like. There were no rocks in the city streets where Joe and I grew up. I was born in the Bronx. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Laurie. I think I'm in trouble with animal lovers. A cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want me to go home? Is that what you said? Yeah. No, Leah, let her stay. She's darling. Yeah. yeah, she's pretty. I agree with that. She's pretty. Married, but pretty. I said bomb. <laughs> bomb. Yeah. 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 embarrassed myself so early in the program, too. Once again, I marched to my own drummer. None. <laughs> uh, rolled her up into a little ball and just tossed her around, eh? Sister who? <laughs> okay. So there we are at the end of round one. One to nothing. Favorite Joanne. Now we go to round two, Mary Lou. I love you. You may have A or B. A. A it is. Won't you keep your promise true? Let me tell you how unlucky, unlucky Louie is. Right. He's the only guy in the army ever to receive a Dear John letter from his blank. <laughs> <laughs> unlucky Louie. Only guy in the army ever to receive a Dear John letter from his blank. Wonderful. Thank you. See your own thing. I'll put this one. I like okay. that one. Mary Lou. You like that one better? You like this one like better? Let me tell you how unlucky, yeah. unlucky you like Lou Wait, wait, is. am I going to figure out which one I like best? I'll take that one. Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to tell you. You've made I'm up your mind. I'm doing my own game. I'm playing another game here. No, you've, made, you've made up your mind now. I made up my mind. Well, I didn't want to tell you while you were trying to make up your mind. No, I'm finished. They both stink. You okay. are? Right. <laughs> Let me tell you how unlucky, unlucky Louie is. He's the only guy in the Army ever to receive a Dear John letter from his play. Would you like to... Did you, you, did you, did you figure out an answer? Yes. Yeah. Mother. Mother! Yeah, I want you to know I'm doing pretty good, you know? You are? Yeah. Oh! I'm proud of you, Joe. I thought you were pretty good last night. I saw you in the Rockford file, too. What do you say? What'd you have in mind? <laughs> Mother? I said, uh, from his sergeant. Sergeant? <laughs> Well, that would be real. All your life would be a living hell if you That's got right. a dear John letter from your sergeant. It's rejection of the highest order. Yes. <clears throat> Boy, is she on a roll. <laughs> Mother. Mother. <laughs> got something with Mary Lou, Laurie? I sure do. Mother. Yeah. Read, that, read that to me again. Maybe I got that wrong. Let me tell you how unlucky, unlucky Louie is. He's the only guy in the army who ever got a Dear John letter from his blank. Yeah, that's right. This is stupid. I put uh, mother-in-law. Mother-in-law. Yeah. Right. We'll back you up on that, Bill. Yeah, we'll back you up. What was your other answer? Uh, my other answer was uh, doorknobs, which doesn't make any sense at all. Yes, sir. <laughs> all time. Mother is the answer that we're looking for here. You're absolutely right. Oh, absolutely. Right. <laughs> so are we out here with our two? Right after we do a little business with America. There we go. Are you ready, Joanne? 
You know what you have to do? Three to tie, four to win. Ready? Ready. You do not play. Because you... Oh, I play you should have told him that earlier in the week. <laughs> Brilliant person that you are matched her in the previous round. I wish said. I had some of that hair. I, I've yes. only got four hairs. I just arranged them. <laughs> Fred said to the psychiatrist, Doc, you've got to help me. My wife thinks I'm a stamp. Yesterday she tried to blank me. <laughs> Doc, you've got to help me. My wife thinks I'm a stamp. Yesterday she tried to blank me. <laughs> Is he cute? We run into each other occasionally at the Ginger Man and yes. say, hi there, baby, how you doing? Yes. Don't we, sweetheart? Yes, baby. He's always sitting at the bar. Was, I myself am always... Was he there when you were there this past? Oh, you really? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joanne, you ready? Fred said to the psychiatrist, Doc, you've got to help me. My wife thinks I'm a stamp. Yesterday she tried to blank me. Uh, lick me. To lick me. That's sad. I don't believe that. Yeah. That's that guy. Oh, there it is. Going to the score? Well, let's just keep this moving right along. Lick me and stuff me in the mail queue. Lick me and stuff me in the mail queue. Going to the score. What do you got there, Chuck? Chuck chose a different route. Yes. Cancel. <laughs> Cancel is good. <laughs> Cancel is quite good because it shows a little hostility because he was very unhappy. What do you say to this? I'm on a roll. I'm doing good. Lick. All right, we got a tie score. Tie score, Marcia. This is mine because I can't play. Want <laughs> <laughs> to get that in there? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for nothing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the closest one I got today. Oh, I just. <laughs> I wish I'd thought of Lick. It's so wonderful and lewd and terrific. But I said male. Male! Okay, so this game is a tie. It means we have to go to a tiebreaker. Well, to do right. that, of course, we'll turn off all of these lights on the Quickly front part forget. of the machine here. Push the button, reveal one tie-breaking question for each. The one who's matched the most stars will be the winner. Mary Lou, A or B? A, please. A it is. Okay. Fred said... The Pacific Ocean is so full of pollution, last week... I was the first person to ever blank from Los Angeles to Hawaii. <laughs> Good question, I think. I think it's an excellent question. And number two... The Pacific Ocean is so full of pollution. Last week, I was the first person to ever blank from Los Angeles to Hawaii. Now we are ready for Mary Lou. Fred said... The Pacific Ocean is so full of pollution. Last week, I was the first person to ever blank from Los Angeles to Hawaii. Full of pollution. Um. Would you like to read it? Out loud. Fred said... Body surfing. <laughs> it is full of pollution. The Pacific Ocean is so full of pollution. Last week, I was the first person to ever... Skid. Skid. Oh. It would be a long yes. way to skid, wouldn't well, it? Well, on the garbage. <laughs> on the Slide, garbage, you yes. Know, like a yes, of course. It's so oily and greasy. Oily. That yes. makes sense. He skidded. Yes, right. That makes sense. You're thinking of really like oily, greasy. hard, yeah. heavy. Since when have you oh. ever made oh. sense, Bill oh, sure. See, lots of stuff like in there. The what do you think? I was going to say trudge, but I said walk. Walk. <laughs> oh, cool. So full of pollution, the ocean was just solid with solid I matter. I of like you oil could and walk on it. What did you think? Oh, oh, I can't think of a melody for this answer. I guess I'll just say it. Walk. All right, that's good though. Walking on the water. We're all very grateful for yes. that. <laughs> Pike is another one there. See, walk on the water would be the thing because it had been done once before in the history of human <laughs> civilization. <laughs> but not recently. No, I'm not that old. I said float. Float? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, oh, Brett. I'm Both very This is the first time I've been really disappointed in you this week. <laughs> <laughs> You're, still cute. You're still cute, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I said jog. Huh? Jog, yeah. Jog. There you go. 
Okay, that's really polluted, isn't I've it? I've been sitting next to him too long. Now he's getting them right, and I'm going down the tubes. <laughs> Float on garbage, a large Twinkie, perhaps. Yay! Whatever. Float on garbage, then. So she said skid, and she didn't match any of our stars. And uh, Joanne, that means you all have to match one to win another game. But right now, we got to do a little business with you. Right, let's go. Okay, John. Now, Joanne, here it is. All you have to do is match one of our stars, and you will have won your third game. Let's see how she does. Tough Teddy said. I just invented a new tough version of Monopoly. When you pass go, instead of getting $200, you get blanked. <laughs> Here they are again. Tough teddies that I've invented. When you pass go, tough version of Monopoly. Instead of getting $200, you get blanked. Come along, Bill, dear. You're on your own. Okay. Tally-ho. Don't forget to send a postcard in case right. you think of an answer. Right. Mm. Like okay. Tough Teddy said, I just invented a new tough version of Monopoly. When you pass go, instead of getting $200, you get blank. Mugged. Mugged. Boy. She said mugged. I said smacked. Smacked. Okay. Slap in the face. One mug job will uh, win the game for her. A mug job? Mug job is when you hit somebody in the head with a blackjack. Oh. A mug job. You guys will look like this. Right. Hey, mug them. Mug them. Game 79. We'll send you 87 pounds of Kentucky fried chicken. I hope you got a deep freeze. Thank you, Mary Lou McKenna, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Well, how this goes. We polled the studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank mania. Number 500 for the most popular. 250 for the second most popular, and $100 for the third. Okay, Marsha. Well, God knows where I'm every night at the Disco Mania. Disco Mania. Bill. Beetle Mania. Yeah. Charles. He shot this guy. Ego Mania. Ego Mania. <laughs> so you have Ego Mania, Beetle Mania, and disco mania. You can choose one of those or give us one of your own. Beetle mania. Beetle mania on the field. Let's see if beetle mania is under the $100 number. Kleptomania oh. is there. No, we want beetle mania. Let's see if we got it under the $250 number. Disco mania is Marsha's answer. Here it comes. All right, last chance for beetle mania. Slide that big one. you'll play for is $5,000 or $10,000 if you get a lucky spin on the star wheel let's all root for Joanne go Last time you spun the wheel, it stopped at Laurie, and good luck to you. Here we go. Here we go. $5,000. It ain't hey. Blank syrup. There it is. Blank syrup. Put it in the slot there if you're finished. And here we go with Joanne. Give us the answer that Laurie has on the card. If you do that, you get $5,000. Maple syrup? Maple syrup. She says maple syrup will match it for five thousand. What have you got to say about that? Oh, I did it again. I said cough syrup. Cough syrup. Oh, that's all right. 
Goff syrup is not a bad answer. Chocolate syrup, maple syrup, they're all good. I love them all. Oh. Okay, Joanne, you're going to meet another player a little bit later. Right now, we're going to do a little business with America, okay? Okay. All right. I hope you'll join us next time for Match Game 79. I'm Gene Rayburn, and you'll see all of these beautiful people here again. Thank you. Goodbye. From Nash, Loretta Switz. From Family Feud, Richard Dawson. And from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, Betty White. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game PM. And now, here's the star of Match Game PM, Gene Rivers! Thank you, Johnny Olson. Thank you, friend. How kind of you to come. How kind of you to come, because we'd be have egg on our faces if we weren't here. <laughs> Let's say hello to Sandy Nagatani and Pat Young. We welcome both of you. I want to find out a little bit about each of you, and we'll begin with Pat Young and have you tell us the story of your life in eight seconds or so. Well, uh, I'm, I'm from Newport Beach. I'm a bachelor, and I'm involved with real estate throughout the United States. Okay. It's all right with me? That's the best I could do. All right. And good luck to Pat. How about you, Sandy? I'm from Delano in San Joaquin Valley, and I go, I'm a student at UCLA. And I'm a member of the Sigma Kappa sorority. Okay, Sandy, good luck to you, too. Now, here on Match Game PM, we'll give each of you three chances to match as many of our celebrities as you can. And the one who's done that most often at the end of the third round will be the winner. We'll go on to play the Big Money Super Match, which can pay off over $10,000. Wow. Well, here we go. Pat, you have a choice here of A or B? A. A, he says. He says A. Hey. 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 Well, please, blimey. A. Hey. That TV show, Big Event, yeah. you know, it's really getting dull. Last week, their big event was home movies of Howard Cassell blanking his toupee. <laughs> That's some big event, huh? Home movies of Howard Cassell blanking his toupee. Nothing personal, Charles. I'm wearing basic blue. May I borrow your pearls? Oh, certainly. Yeah, thank you. They look so nice with that. You yeah. really enjoy them. They do go well with blue, don't they? Oh, certainly. Yes. Do. Yes, you hold that for just yeah. a second. Thank you very much. I wish much. I had a nice purse for you, but I left it upstairs. <laughs> well, with basic blue, I just forgot right. my pearls there. All right, here we go. Pat Young. That TV show, Big Event, is really getting dull. Last week, their big event was home movies of Howard Cassell blanking his toupee. Washing his toupee. Washing his toupee. He says, washing his toupee. What do you say to that? I'm a tin guy got a match. Cleaning his Cleaning toupee. and washing is a match, indeed. Thank you. Oh, Just the effect I needed. Oh, Just for a moment there. Now, what do you say to that? He says washing is what he's after. Ethel Merman gave me these. How nice. The pearls, not the others. Right. Uh, I said gluing on his toupee. Gluing on his toupee. How about you, Charles? You're the guy that wore the beads earlier. Yeah, that's me. You gonna Boy, make something of it? Yeah, you're sissified. <laughs> I said putting on his. Putting on. Putting on is not washing. No. The big event last week, is really getting dull. Home movies of Howard Cassell, blanking his toupee, and he said washing. Combing? Combing. Not what? Nice answer, isn't it? But I matched someone Doesn't out match there. Pat Young. Match someone, some weirdo in the Thank audience you. there. Then. How about you, Richard? Well, I, uh, I guess I matched 
one of the ding-dongs up there. <laughs> I said gluing. gluing. Yeah. That is an emotional experience to watch him do it. Yes. Glue, yeah. He takes a tube, squeezes it right on there, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. How about you there, Betty? Well, close. What do you got there? Brushing. Brushing, yeah. You had the I-N-G, oh, so Pat Young, that's close one point. for you. At least you're on the scoreboard. Sandy, are you ready for yours? Yep. Shirley said, my husband, the movie star, is a movie star 24 hours a day. Even on our honeymoon, he brought along a blank. <laughs> what? My husband, the movie star, is a movie star 24 hours a day. Even on our honeymoon, he brought along a blank. I okay. Take these pens off because they don't work, so they put them right back in again. Isn't yeah. that clever on them? Well, uh, do you need another one? Here, I'll get yeah, you one. Maybe this There's one. Oh, this one. That one works. works. Thank you. Is that the one that doesn't work? Let Not me take neither that. Neither of them. Well, let me take those and I'll throw those away. <laughs> oh, what? Don't work. Thank you. You're right. a marvelous human being. These don't work. <laughs> They're all worn oh, to a frazzle. Oh, that's too bad. That's a shame. <laughs> He's Ready? so neat. Here we go. Sandy. Shirley said, my husband, the movie star, is a movie star 24 hours a day. Even on our honeymoon, he brought along a blank. Script? A script. What'd she say? Yeah. She said a script. What'd you say, George? No. A script? I uh, thought he might have needed a little direction. A director. <laughs> That's a very cute answer. George, what do you say? All I can say is what Jack brought along on ours. <laughs> <laughs> Worked like magic till he left. <laughs> Charles, I said a camera. A camera. Okay. <laughs> Brett said a director also, and she said it worked for him. Um, my husband, a movie star, 24 hours a day. Even on our honeymoon, he brought along a script, according to Sandy. Uh, no, I said a resume. A resume. That's what actors do. They carry these yeah. resumes around. Yes. At first, I wrote Starlet. And then I thought that wouldn't be what Starlet didn't know. Yeah, Starlet would have been cute, though. But a big star <laughs> never goes anywhere without a stand-in. Yeah. A stand-in. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. This is a really big star. Betty, what do you say? He's a really big star. As uh, Well, uh, when I told Richard his answer, I... He agreed. Yes, I... <laughs> So there we are at the end of round one, one to nothing in favor of Pat Young. Round two coming up in a moment or so after this. Two, we'll push this button, reveal the two questions. Pat, you're ahead, so you go first. I think I'll try B this time. B is what he wants. George, you lay out. The rest of you respond to this, if you would please. Colonel Sanders is getting absent-minded. Last night, he kissed his chicken and he blanked his wife. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, here we go with Pat Young. Pat, Colonel Sanders is getting absent-minded. Last night, he kissed his chicken, and he blanked his wife. Plucked. He plucked his wife. <laughs> right, so, Brett, I believe Pat Young has come up with a definitive answer. Are they uh, judging from the audience reaction? Am I the first? Oh! You're the first, because he matched him in the first round, yes. Well, would you believe he plucked her? He plucked his wife. Okay. Rick Child. He pressure cooked. He pressure cooked. No, no, no. Put her in the pressure cooker. No. Turned on the heat. Kissed his chicken and he... Deep fried his yeah. wife. Deep fried his wife there. What did you say to that, Richard? Just plucky, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So that's up to three. What have you got on that car? So close. Fried. Fried. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's, he's up to three now. And Sandy, listen carefully now. They're getting easier, aren't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey the Undertaker used to be a dog trainer. And that's why he teaches all the corpses to blank. <laughs> Harvey the Undertaker used to be a dog trainer, and that's why he teaches all the corpses to blank. Don't look at my card, Richard. <laughs> You tell him, fat lady. Don't look at my card. Okay. Very good. Good, good, good. Here we come. Oh, oh, I'll trade you. I like you. 
Now, Sandy, <laughs> Harvey the Undertaker used to be a dog trainer, and that's why he teaches all the corpses to... Roll over and play dead? There it is. Now, that little girl come up with a, the perfect answer, I believe. Yeah, but I didn't have it. I had to have the bark. Bark, really? Okay, what do you say? I say, let's all go find ourselves a coffin and play dead. Play dead, that's one for her. Charles? Play dead. Play dead, that's two for her. Score is now three to two. He's catching up to you, Pat Young. Uh, he used to be a dog trainer, and that's why he teaches all the corpses to... Roll over and play dead. Roll over and play dead, who is that for? Three to three. Well, a corpse doesn't have to play dead, does it? Is <laughs> <laughs> it kind well, of well, redundant? It is. It's, it's a little... A really smart undertaker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Teach them to dig. Sure. You dig, well, Gina? Yeah, I dig you. Yeah. Oh, what do you got there, Betty? Don't you wish you'd looked at my car? No, no. I don't want it. <laughs> Please. Right there. So now... Four to three to score. Sandy is ahead at the end of round two. We'll go to round three, and since you are ahead, Sandy, we'll ask you to go first this time. A, please. A it is. Here we go. George plays, and Richard plays. Everyone else does not. I don't look at my card. <laughs> I can look at it if I want to. Horrible Hannah yes. said to the art teacher, I'm an artist. And he said, Horrible Hannah, the only thing you can draw is blank. Horrible Hannah said to the artist, I'm an artist. He said, Horrible Hannah, the only thing you can draw is blank. Oh, I got it. You got I it? I wish I were playing. You got it? <laughs> right. Better. Better. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Better. Better. Okay. Yes, indeed. Horrible Hannah said to the art teacher, I'm an artist. And he says, horrible, Hannah, the only thing you can draw is... A line. I don't... You drew a blank on it, so you have to say something. What did you say? A line? A line. <laughs> well, Sandy? Oh. Oh. Do you have a good answer in your mind? Yeah. All right, if he says your answer, applaud. Is that it? Fly. Fly. Have you heard of the expression... All you can draw is flies. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. What have you got there? I said all she could draw was her salary. <laughs> okay. Or oh, salary. No. <laughs> Pat, you know what you have to do? You have to match one to tie and two to win. Here we go. Uh -oh. Charles. Yo. Ready? Here we go. The captain of the firing squad said. That last condemned man was strange. Instead of putting his hands over his eyes, he put them over his blank. I can understand that. When you get nervous and everything. <laughs> Shh. Go that last condemned man was strange. Instead of putting his hands over his eyes, he put them over his blank. First you have to wake up, sweetheart. You... <laughs> I'm thinking. Uh, thinking. Why don't you tell us about Ethel Merman's pearls again? <laughs> <laughs> are you ready, Loretta, my dear? Yes, you are. And Betty is ready. And Charles. Betty is ready. Be... Betty is ready. <laughs> it's baby talk. Oh. Okay, Charles. <laughs> the captain of the firing squad said that last condemned man was strange. Instead of putting his hands over his eyes, he put them over his loins. Loin or Loins? a reasonable answer. <laughs> 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 That's right. <laughs> Charles, he said loins. <laughs> Ears. Ears is good. Ears is good. Ears is a good but response. It's not a match. Loins is good too, but it hadn't occurred to me. Loins. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it had occurred to me, Loins. but I didn't know how to say it. Yeah. <laughs> What did you say? You gotta read between the loins. <laughs> read between the loins? <laughs> I said mouth. Mouth. Now you must match Betty to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Let's see if it happens. Betty? I no, I don't wish I had looked at your card, but I'm sorry I can't. I said ears. Ears. So that means Sandy Nagatani wins the game.
Good, you stand right there in that adhesive cake. Pat, it was a pleasure to meet you. It was a you pleasure. Gonna, you're going to be receiving a lot of gifts from Match Game PM. Thank you very much. You. Pat Young, there he goes. And while we're spinning him off, we want to spin some messages just for you. Now, here we are. This little lady is uh, on her way to some big money. We all hope now. It's time for the big money super match. You can win over $10,000 here. Now, to do that, we have two audience matches for you. And I want to point out to you that whatever you win in these audience matches, you'll have a chance to multiply by 10, and that will be the final amount you'll be playing for. Here we go now. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank-minded. Now, the answer that bunch gave most frequently will get you $500 if you match it. If you match the second most popular answer, you get $250, and then it's $100 if you match their third most frequently given response. Three of our six celebrities are allowed to help by suggesting answers, and you can call on them now. Richard? What do you say, Rich? I forgot my answer. <laughs> <laughs> so absent-minded. <laughs> Absent-minded is one. Brett. One Charles is. Simple-minded. Simple-minded. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to give you a straight line like that. <laughs> He's thinking, friends. What Brett is. <laughs> Feeble-minded. Now you have feeble-minded, you have simple-minded, and you have absent-minded. Those are the three the celebrities have given you. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own entirely. How about absent-minded? Absent-minded is a good one. It's the one that Richard gave you. Let's find out if it's up there. And if it is there, where is it? That's the question. Let's begin down at the bottom, and we'll reveal the $100 response. Simple-minded. All right, that's the one that Brett gave you. That's uh, off to a good start, I hope. Let's take a look at the $250 response. Narrow-minded. That's not bad now that I see it. All right, last chance for absent-minded. Slide it, Earl. Yes! Good girl. Now well, you've got $500 there, which means the least you'll be playing for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. Stand on the adhesive tape. That's it. And we're going to see now, Sandy, how much more money you'll win with this second audience match. Go. Blank squad. All right. Let's see what good answers we'll get from our celebrity. Richard? Absence of... Uh, <laughs> the mod squad. Mod squad. Betty. Well, I've, I've, to some of my best friends, the Vice Squad. <laughs> the Vice Squad. Uh, Charles? Uh, <laughs> feeble, no. Oh, yeah. The last guy in a firing squad we, we had before. Firing squad. Yeah, that's okay. cute. So we've got Hello. firing squad and we've got mod squad. Hi, Ma. <laughs> Mod Squad, Vice Squad, Firing Squad. You want one of those? Sure. Which Mo one? Mod Squad. You want the Mod Squad. All right. She makes up her mind very quickly, doesn't she? You're a very kinetic person. Stand on the adhesive tape. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can have the Mod Squad under the $100 response. Firing Squad was Charles' answer. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Step down. Now, let's see if we get the Mod Squad under the $250 number. <laughs> Vice Squad. Only Vice for $250, eh? Okay. Mod, are you under the $500 number? Yes, you are. Holy Good girl. All right. You want another $500? Multiply that by 10, makes another 5,000, and add that to the previous 5,000, you've got a pot of $10,000 to shoot for. Now, to collect it, you've got to match one of them. This will have to be an exact match, and you have to choose one now. Richard Dawson. Okay, Richard Dawson. Stand on the adhesive tape. That's it. Good luck. 
All right, good luck to you. Get your ESP flowing in his direction so he writes the answer that you're thinking of. Ready? Here we go. Blank snake. S-N-A-K-E. Blank snake. All right, he's finished, Sandy. What answer would you like to give us now, which you think will match his? Get you the $10,000. Blank snake. Blank snake. Blank snake. All I can think of is cobra. Oh! Cobra. Well, she thought of that because we got so many of them around here, especially around CBS. There. What do you say? That she says cobra will match you for ten thousand dollars. What do you say to that? Oh. Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake. That's the great American snake. Well, Sandy, I'm sorry you didn't win the $10,000, but you did indeed win $1,000, and that's pretty good. Thank you very much, Sandy Nagatani. We'll be back in a moment right after these messages. Listen, I hope to see all of your beautiful bodies on this stage on another occasion in the near future because you were just dandy, yeah, so George. You, the, thank with you. the pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward Smart to seeing outfit. George Kennedy on the Blue Knight and this pretty lady on MASH. Loretta Sweat is marvelous in that part. And this, of course, this marvelous lady you see on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. And this good-looking, peachy kid, snappy dress. Stand up and new show him your total... Has a new reversible you got, I've never seen you so ensemble. No, Look up, at this. Stand straight up. Stand straight up. Straight up. Stand straight up. Look at that. The vest matches and everything. Watch for this suit on Family Feud. This suit will appear next. And, uh, that's enough of that. Gene Rayburn here. Join us next week for more big cash prizes here on Match Game PM. Goodbye. <laughs>
little lady won $5,600. What are you going to do with all that loot, Dianza? Well, I said I was going to quit work, and then I had to go to work today. You did? <laughs> this morning. <laughs> what did he say? Well, he's supposed to be here. I don't know if did he's you, here. Did you change your mind about quitting work? Well, I'm going to stay a week. <laughs> <laughs> How did your boss greet that news that you were quitting? Well, I think he was happy for me. He I, was? Yes. I mean, you didn't go in and spit in his iron and say, I quit. No. I'm rich. I don't need your job. I got a lot of money. You didn't do that, did yeah, you? We had a party this morning. In the oh. Office. Oh, well, terrific. Okay. Now, Mary, it's nice to have you with us. Did we, shall we find out a little more about you, Mary Lattimore? Be nice. I'm Mary Lattimore, and I work for the Los Angeles City School System. I'm an assistant principal. And I'm married to a sergeant in homicide, and I have three beautiful children. Well, you should have, because you're a beautiful lady. Isn't Thank she you. a pretty lady? Yes. She must have. Yes. Beautiful baby. Thank you. All right, we'll start this game in a moment or so, but right now we've got this message for you. Here we go. I'll push this button right over here and ask our challenger, Mary Lattimore, to make a selection. Please. It is. New game. Everybody plays. Right. Eddie. Ask Dumb Dora to play post office. Mm -hmm. So, Dumb Dora blanked his foot. <laughs> Are you astounded? I am astounded. You are astounded. Eddie asked Dumb Dora to play post office, so Dumb Dora blanked his foot. I'm finished. finished. Good, because you're a perfect person. He's a yes. perfect person. He's, He's a little finished. less perfect than I am. Charles is a little less perfect than you are. And I'm and just finished. More wrinkled. In a little. <laughs> yeah. No personal. You remember what Mother said? Do not make personal comments. <laughs> oh. Remember that? Didn't they teach that to you in finishing school in Maine? Yes. But what else they teach you? They, oh, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody is now ready. We'll call him Mary Lattimore. What? Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. I gotta put it in there. Okay. They're so busy with their own shows, they That's forget right. they That's don't right. know. <laughs> now that you're a host of your own Just show, they don't know where they are. I don't are. have to put anything in the slot of my show. Yes. Oh, all right. Booth. That's all. Okay. Now, Mary Lattimore. Honestly. Eddie asked Dumb Dora to play post office, so Dumb Dora blanked his foot. Kissed his foot. Kissed his foot. That's how you play post office. Now, wait a minute. That's not bad. When you play post office, you kiss him. Weren't you ever a teenager? No? You were 18 years old when you were born, huh? Oh, All right. Yeah, yeah. She said, Poor kissed woman. his foot. The first thing I thought of was what she said, and I said to myself, nobody would say that. So I said, stamped his foot. Stamped his foot. Dumb. He was dumb. Dumb. No? Now, boy, those are the two good possibilities. Dumb kissed his foot is good, stamped his foot is good. What do you say? I, I thought as... A kiss, too, and then I quickly wrote stamped because I was so thrilled with myself. Charles, what about you? And I was the first one finished. Yeah. <laughs> After you copied, we all copied from Bob. Right, so <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Mary. So far, it's all stamped. Dumb Dora, uh, Eddie has Dumb Dora to play post office, so Dumb Dora blanked his foot and she said kissed. Well, I said Dumb Dora was so dumb that she just stamped his foot. Yeah. I don't think Dumb Dora really had it together this day. That's right? why she's so no. dumb. Hey, dumb Dora. Kissing her foot, his foot would be a lot more fun than stamping on it, wouldn't it? What do you say to You're that, Richard? Sick. <laughs> no, there's nothing sick about that. Let me show you. No. <laughs> Come on, take no. your shoe off. No. Go ahead. No. I'll kiss your foot. No. I don't care what's his name. What he, is he watching today? <laughs> yeah. What do you say here? You. I say I'll kiss her other foot. <laughs> okay. I hate to see that. Look, you have such a darling smile. I figured you were going to get six like that. Yeah. Because I'm sure that we all have it. Stand. Ooh, so far it's fine. Now, you don't have a, you have it's a foot six. fetish. Kiss my foot, yeah. stamp. Stamp. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Well, it could have gone either way, Mary. That's the way it is here. Deonza, this is your first round question. Gunga Dingy said. Gunga Dingy. Gunga Dingy said. <laughs> Read it first? He said. Talk like that, by the way. He says, when I meditate, I really lose contact with the outside world. <laughs> Last week I was meditating. While I was meditating, I didn't even notice my blank was on fire. <laughs> When I meditate, I really lose contact with the outside world. Last week while I was meditating, I didn't even notice my blank was on fire. Got it, Cleo. While I was meditating, I didn't notice my blank was on fire. My blank was on fire. My oh. blank was on fire. My blank was on fire. My blank was on fire. 
I've linked with Empire. Will somebody kick the record player? Can't shock tone play him. Who played No! What's your name? What's his name? Do not break your concentration because Franchot Tone has nothing to do with this question. Franchot Tone was in that other one. Bengal Lancers. Yes, The Lives of the Bengal Lancers. The bamboo tells me something. What is that? Yes. Betty, I know, when you're fiddling around with my ankle down there, something goofy is going on. Has Alan been out of town? <laughs> Is that your problem? I would have been overseas too long. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we here? Oh, this is yours. Gunga Dingley said, when I meditated, I really lose contact with the outside world. Last week while I was meditating, I didn't even notice my blank was on fire. <laughs> my beard? My beard. Gunga Dingley, did he have a beard? <laughs> I, I don't know. Did she not have a beard? Did not have a beard. Was clean shaven man. Have a clean shaven man. That's right. He did not have a beard. What do no you say? Bearding. Well, I thought you'd get this. <laughs> I wrote the simplest thing I could think of. What's that? First, those pants were on fire. My pants were on fire. I figured you'd say that. Gunga Dini did not wake him. He wore right a dress. Yeah. You know Gunga Dini. He wore. Well, you do. Well, we, we don't call them dresses, but we call them something else. What do we call them over there? <laughs> they call them Ginji. Ginjis. We call them Ginji. Ginjis. My Ginjis on fire. Ginji. Did he wear a little hat? Gunga Dini. Little cloche. Yes. Sure thing. Little cloche. Yes. Yes. His little turban was on fire. His turban. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, that's not bad. That's better than Charles. I don't know, but Gunga Dini will never be the same. No one knows about a beard, wore a dress, or what? <laughs> Toga dress or caftan or robe or whatever the. Uh, that's, it. that's the idea, too. Okay. Now we're up to you, Sarah, my dear. Yes, we are. Well, <laughs> oh. you don't want to show it. You're ashamed about it, right? No, I'm not, I'm not ashamed. It's, oh. Well, maybe I should be. No, I thought that if he lived in a. Um, you know, a house or a hut. You know, he was just sitting there and his little house started burning. That's we would have his minute thing and even notice my house was in fire. It's a bad, bad answer. You are not only underweight, you are weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Richard? I say, why don't we go somewhere quiet and kiss? You do, right, yeah. <laughs> Could I hear the question again? Yeah, yeah. Gunga Dingley said, when I meditated, they really lose contact with the outside world. Last week while I was meditating, I didn't even notice my blank was on fire. The little trousers they wear. The trousers? Oh, yeah. Little things. Oh, yeah, little I said loincloth, but the real name, Ginji. Ginji. That's what they're called. They call it Ginji. Right. Ginji. Yes. Ginji. I thought With the, the Ginji was the, uh, the river that they all jumped in after <laughs> no. they were dead. It's the Genji. The Ganji. The Ganji. It's the Genji. It's the Genji. No, that's their Ganji. They were, no, I got wound up in my answer and said turban. Well, you better turban. Oh. You got wound up I'm in your sorry. Yes, sir. Another pitch is still going here, friends. Zip to zip is a score. Pay close attention. More of this excitement will continue right after this message. Continuing with our Cinderella hunt. Come here. You think you can wear this? Yes. If it fits you, you'll go to the ball. Terrific. <laughs> or would you like to see something in green? No. We have been carrying on, haven't we? I'll push this button, we go to round two. Mary Lattimore, make a selection. A, please. A it is. Everybody plays a game. I didn't think, I must tell you, if I'm sat at home now, I would be very cross. Why? Well, because they don't know. A lady from Coronado, very prettily, asked Jean for his socks. She'll wear them Oh, up. she's got them. <laughs> Souvenir. Well, otherwise, the people at home have no idea 
Oh, I thought I explained that. No, I you forgot didn't. about that. Thank you. Thank Tune you. Tune in that. again tomorrow when his shorts will be. <laughs> <laughs> but not on camera. Yeah, all right. Here we go. She does okay. windows. King Kong was hungry. How so, hungry was he? I'll tell you. He took two huge slices of bread. He went to the naval base. <laughs> and he made himself a blank sandwich. <laughs> King Kong was hungry. Took two huge slices of bread. Went to the naval base. And he made himself a blank sandwich. I'm finished. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Got it? Got it? Got it. Got it. Ready? All right, lay it in there. Waiting for old Bob. Put it in the slot now, and away we go. Now we come to Mary Lattimore. You know what a naval base is, don't you? Yes. Okay. King Kong was hungry, so he took two huge slices of bread. He went to the naval, naval base. <laughs> and he made himself a blank sandwich. Now think about it. Torpedo? <laughs> It's not bad. It's not, not over bad, here. Not bad, but I don't think it's going to happen. Now, Mary, in a moment you'll see why, and I think it will be clear to you. Bobby? Yes? Oh. <laughs> That's how you answer. see Bobby's answer. Torpedo is good, but <laughs> there are some that might even be better. What do you say? I don't know. I didn't know what to say, so I thought he went over there and made himself a Fay Ray sandwich. A Fay Ray sandwich. Mary, got it. Well, that's worse than hers. I know. Well, I like hers. Yes, her. What you do you say? Now, the operative word was navel, was it right, not? Right, right. Not meaning belly button. No, navel, where the boats uh, hang on. Well, meaning sailor. Oh, boy. I see we don't have any we don't have any sandwich eaters on this oh, panel. Well, I hope yours is better. Hello, Captain. But he like people, King Kong. Yeah, that's true. But wait till you get now. Wait a minute. It may come up here, Charles. In keeping Gene uh, and other <laughs> panelists with the uh, <laughs> the C motif, which I'm so uh, you know recognized as. Yes, yes. Said Gene. Battleship. You fool. <laughs> socks and turtlenecks what is it <laughs> it's coming now, up now sarah it's coming up now does sarah oh, have the good oh, answer oh, i don't know oh, 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 sarah will show you I the do. perfect answer I go do. okay it's a submarine <laughs> Yes, you have. Okay, well, I guess it just slipped I her must mind. tell you that I thought it was going to be like stamped. I thought it was going to be six submarines. Yeah, that, I think <laughs> we have three people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Enroll in your school immediately. Uh, submarine. <laughs> Are you a sandwich eater? No ship. <laughs> <laughs> we have four people. <laughs> Come on, come come family. We'll have your second round question in a moment, but right now we have this for you. Now, Deonza here is in a very good spot to win her second game. She's got 5,600. All she has to do is match one celebrity to win a second game. All right. Little Johnny was thrown out of the zoo when they caught him blanking in the kangaroo's pouch. <laughs> Little Johnny was thrown out of the zoo when they caught him blanking in the kangaroo's pouch. Now, if I don't get it this time, I'm getting it. Well, Spelling doesn't yet. count. Don't worry about it. We'll you figure it out somehow. Okay, put it in that slot, Sarah. Yes. Splendid. Okay. All right, everybody's ready. And we come to... Dianza. You're not ready, Dianza? <laughs> have you been thinking about it all this time? You still have, well, I'll read it one more time, give it a little more time to think. Little Johnny was thrown out of the zoo when they caught him blanking in the kangaroo's pouch. This is awful. What? Wedding. Wedding? That's all that came to my mind. Okay. One wet pouch wins the game. <laughs> What? One what? One wet pouch wins Except the game. Wee wee. Wee wee wins the game. A 
she's very excited. I'm sorry to see you go, Mary Lattimore. You really are a beautiful lady. I know you've got beautiful kids. We've got a couple of gifts for you, and thanks for being with us on Match Game Thank 75. You. Goodbye, pleasure. Mary Lattimore. Now, step down here. And we'll have another go at it. You know how this goes. I know. You've been here before, so should we just start? Let's and... go. All right. We polled a recent studio audience, De Anza, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> Knuckle blank. Oh, now, the answer God. they gave right. most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250. If you match the bottom one, you get $100. Three of the ding-a-lings are permitted to assist. Whom do you call on? Richard. Richard? A dance that uh, fighters attend. A knuckleball. The knuckleball, all right. Knuckleball. Leave him alone, he's a star. And he's, he's right 98% of the time, ball. too. Charles? Did we get knuckleball from that same brilliant mind that got submarine? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a ball that they throw? Knuckleball, knuckleball is yes, a very we'll explain uh, it. There's term. a paper given out to the audience so that you're interested. <laughs> Well, we'll see if it comes up, Charles. Pitchers, uh, pitchers uh, use the knuckle Chuck ball. says knucklehead. Knucklehead. Okay. Uh, Betty. Betty, have you got one? The Betty. more you look at knuckle, the funnier it looks. It's one of those words that gets sillier the longer you look at it. Yeah. Knuckle under. Knuckle is a funny word. Knuckle under. Knuckle under. Knuckle under, knuckle I ball, and knuckle head. Knuckle Why, down. Why, you think all three are good, don't you? Knuckle down. Down. Have you got a better one? Have you, anything occur to you? Mm-hmm, but I, I'll go with knuckle ball. Knuckle ball. Okay. That's the one that Richard gave you. All right, knuckle ball. $5,700 between us. Don't boo us, folks. That's please. right. You know, the fact is, a, a baseball is a great American Wouldn't pastime, and knuckleball, I mean, anybody who watches baseball ought to know about that, so we'll find out if it's up there. Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. <laughs> knuckle down. Knuckle You're not down. even right. It's buckle down. It is. It's buckle down. Buckle down wins. No, it isn't. Buckle down. Buckle down, no, 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 no. Knuckle down no. is the next chorus. Knuckleball is what we want. Let's see if it's under the $250 response. Knucklehead. All right, here's the last chance. Charles gave you that one. All right, here's the last chance for knuckleball. May we see the $500 response? I almost said sandwich. Did you almost say knuckle sandwich? Oh, I can't Submarine expert. Red had it. I tell you. Red had it. You know, if you had said knuckle sandwich, it's not very likely that she would have. Would you have said knuckle sandwich? That's what I thought of. I know that sounds awful. Oh, and listen, that didn't even do the thing. Did, you, did it occur to you? Yeah. 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 What is a knuckle sandwich? Is that what someone you belts like you in the mouth? Sandwich. Is that what a knuckle sandwich yeah. is? How would you like oh. a knuckle sandwich? I got oh. two knuckle sandwiches yes. and a BLT. <laughs> and one submarine to go. <laughs> Well, Dianza, you've picked up another hundred dollars here, and you're going to play another game. Are you ready to meet another I'm contender? Ready. Here we come with Terry Thompson. <laughs> Dianza. Okay, let's find out a little bit about Terry Thompson. Okay, I've uh, been in California for 11 years. Yeah. I'm a, a professor at one of the Los Angeles Junior Colleges. Yeah. Teach marketing, and uh, I love to snow ski. You do? Yeah. Downhill. Uh, I try it downhill. It works a well, lot I better cross that way. Country. Well, I'm Which, not too good at that. It sort yeah. of wears me out, you know? It's a very difficult score. But you see, when you're as young as I am and as strong as I am, you can do cross country. You older fellas, you can't do it. That's right. I never thought of that. <laughs> okay, now that we've alienated him, let's have a little commercial. The 17th. Gee, I'm sorry, we've got to stop right now. But you'll all be fresh as a daisy the next time we get together, and we'll start right from the top with a brand new game. I want to say you are absolutely splendid today, but you're going to be even better next time. You may forget to watch Channel Tales. Oh, yeah, watch Channel Tales with Helen, what's her name? She's terrific. Gene Rayburn here, Match Game 75. Goodbye. <laughs> Stay tuned for Tattle Tales next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars from the love boat, Fred Grandy, Fred Summers, 
Charles Delson Riley from the Vernon Shirley, Lester Easterbrook, McLean Stevenson from Palmer Valley PTA, Franny Flag. As we play the star studded big money match game. And now, here's the star of match game, Gene Lambert. How do you do? Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Hello, stars. Hello, Jane. <laughs> Got a new kid on the block, haven't we? Yep. Kiss time, right? Got to give her uh -oh. a proper Very welcome. Very careful, Leslie. Because she's never been on this show before, and uh, I just have to say hello to her in a proper way. Simple kiss. No tongues, huh? <laughs> Roger, a little Kleenex, please. I think I got some of her lipstick on my chin. <laughs> Thank well, you. that's the best time Mr. Periwinkle's had since 1914. <laughs> Listen, is it true they created the Man Act because of you? That's right. Uh, that's what I thought. Are you wearing Ted Lange's old suit? He wanted me to have it, Gene, because you liked it so much, you gave it to me. To I think it's marvelous. Yeah. Yes. I, I like yours, too. Thank you very Emma much. Emmett Kelly clothes, right? Emmett Kelly, right. right. Thank you. You look smashing. Think so? Do your number from... You're not going to make any ice cream jokes, right? Set, no. Okay. Good. Just do your number from Saturday Night Fever, and you'll be home free. Now, let's say hello to May Kita Soul and Kitty Soper. <laughs> Ladies, welcome. Let's get acquainted. Kitty, tell us where you're from and all that. Uh, I'm Kitty Soper, and I'm from Walnut, California. Can't hear. I'm from Walnut, California, and I'm married, and I'm a beauty consultant. And you probably think that I'm originally from California, but I, I'm not. I thought you were originally from California, Kitty. <laughs> no, no, I'm from Texas. You're from Texas? Yeah. No. Originally. Kitty. <laughs> what yeah. part? Dallas. You well, may have heard of it. It's just a small town. Right. All right, Kitty. <laughs> but it's Kitty. really pretty. Walnut Creek, eh? No, Walnut. Just plain oh, Walnut. Oh, Walnut. Oh, all right. Now, May, Kitty Soul. Kitty Soul. That's a pretty name. Oh, thank you. Where Spanish. are you from? Um, I'm from La Palma, California. I'm a student at USC. All right. Yeah. I see fans out there. Um, I fence. I study languages at school. And I love to travel, basically. Are you in the fencing team at USC? Um, we haven't started a fencing team yet as of this year. It's a wonderful slow. sport, isn't it? Oh, I love it. I did it in my youth. Did you? Yes. I was quite good. No. Yeah, when was that? <laughs> bring bring your foils out. You good at you, you. Bring your is foils out. I'll give you a lesson. Mike? Look at this form. <laughs> No, you don't have to do that. You want A or B, Kitty? Uh, B. B. <laughs> B. No, she's from Southern Cal. Don't kid me. Old man Periwinkle said, uh -oh. My 17-year-old finance, uh, fiance, <laughs> is making demands. She says she won't start the honeymoon until I get blank. <laughs> I missed the honey. Uh, old man Periwinkle said, my 17-year-old fiancé is making demands. She says she won't start the honeymoon until I get blank. Uh, get up and get going. Until I get... Uh... You're from Dallas, eh? <laughs> they just telephoned, said they don't want you. What'd you say, Fred? Well, the contestants advised that we're not allowed to write novels on these things. The cards are only this big. Uh-huh. Get teeth! Teeth. <laughs> That's why I get a set of teeth. <laughs> Funny stuff. Sounds good to me. Teeth. All right. She's speaking from his church. <laughs> For all those who boo the lovely beauty consultants, answer up. Get up. Aha. Uh -huh. One for Kitty. My 17 year old fiance is making demands. She says she won't start the honeymoon until I get. I'm so old fashioned, I can't believe it. Married. Aww. I like you, it. Is that the first thing that came to your mind? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You are old fashioned. Boy. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't kiss old fashioned, she just writes old fashioned. Well, I'm learning. Oh, huh? all right. <laughs> McLean? I'll give you some idea what my life is like. Um, I said, uh, up. Oh, up. Woo! I tell you, Kitty, everybody in the room thought it was a turkey of an answer. Yeah, see, but you got two. What about it, Fanny? Me too. Yes. Uh, 
Well, I used to be old-fashioned, but this was what I was thinking about. Um, she, said, <laughs> she said she wasn't going to go on the honeymoon until he got more insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I just saw a guy five minutes ago wearing a beautiful white suit like that. Nice. Are you kidding me? Yeah, a white he... suit someone else? Yeah. You're What's going the... on here? I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I, as a matter of fact, I've come to pick up that white suit. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah that's my have... white suit. I loaned it to Fred and the time is up. He only Wait. paid me for ten minutes. You <laughs> said I could have it until the show was no, over. No, man, I'm man. sorry. I gotta have it now. Let me have it right now. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get... right. Go. Wait. Give me my suit. I want my suit. You I want your suit? Yeah. All right. I'd have to take off the... the well, take off the take, suit, Fred. The guy the comes suit, to collect yeah. the suit. You Come want on. Get down and get... Come on, Fred. I'm going to take right on the suit. I want the tie. That's, that's my tie. What about the shirt? Is that his? No, that shirt is mine. The shirt is yours? The shirt is mine, man. I want my tie. Now, listen. Gene, don't make me do this, okay? Well, listen, I am no, I'm just a middleman here. I have no control over this. If, uh, if he owns the clothing, if the merchandise is his, you gotta, you've got to give it to him. That's it. This man is not wearing the shirt. Yes. I want the whole suit. Take it off! Is that only really fair? That's well, if it's your suit, it's That's your merchandise. Right. He's nice. got to give it up. All right. You'll never work in this town again, Rayburn. All the high school kids are shouting, take it off. <laughs> I'll tell you what's going on back here. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's uh... <laughs> Listen, I'll see you later. I just had to drop it. I gotta wear this. I'm doing Hollywood Squares and I need another suit. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win. Listen, you gonna catch cold? Can I wear your vest? Yeah, listen, take my vest. Hold on. I don't go all the way. Sorry. You know they're yelling at you to put it on. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not the same, but I guess it'll have to do. Yes, thank you very much. Listen, oh. uh, we got to do a little business with America. In the meantime, we'll get a blanket here for old Fred. Now, uh, watch this if you please. Well. I suppose we have to go back to the game, huh? Let's I just do hope that. Lauren Tweez doesn't come by and want her underwear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, May, this is yours. Listen carefully. Art the Arctic Explorer said, The men have been up here too long. One of them just designed a strapless gown for a blank. <laughs> Art the Arctic Explorer. No, just in case. No, no, no. Art the Arctic Explorer said, I think the men have been up here too long. One of them just designed a strapless gown for a blank. For a, a dog? For the a huskies. dog? One of the huskies? Well, there's something, uh, an animal that's a little more prevalent up there. What do you say, Fred? I don't know. I feel like I'm up there because it's so cold in the studio. All <laughs> Polar bear! Polar bear! Sure. His dog is good. Polar bear is good. There are a lot of good uh, possibilities here. Fred Grandy and I have matched two uh, uh, rounds in a row. Suspect. I own. Oh, Suspect, oh, right. Somebody's you got it, cheating. right. It was actually a penoir for a penguin. A penoir for a penguin. Uh, the men have been up here in the Arctic too long. One of them just designed a strapless gown for a... A very large strapless gown for a whale. A whale. <laughs> uh, that would be a... A lot of Kiana, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. What do they call that stuff? McLean? You. Yes. Uh, you're up to bat. Uh, ah. Just designed a strapless gown for a... Wrong. 
polar bear. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and they lived happily ever after. Yeah. Really? Miss Fanny. I said a ping gin. A ping gin. <laughs> How about seals or walruses? Yeah. yeah. How about them? Yeah. Let's go to round two, shall we, ladies? Uh, uh, Kitty, you're ahead. The rule says the one who's ahead has to go first. So you go first. Okay. Aye. Aye. That's right. Ed said the president really loves horses. In fact, in Washington, D.C., they're replacing all the parking meters with blanks. <laughs> you don't play. I got rhythm. I got Oh, I tell you. Ed said the president really loves horses. In fact, in Washington, D.C., they're replacing all the parking meters with blanks. I think it's mine. Oh, it's <laughs> yours, Kitty. I'm sorry. Okay. You've got to pay closer attention, Gene. Uh, you want the vest I, back? I think the word that I'm looking for, okay, is that thing, it's a hitching post. Is that a hitching you? post. What was the final outcome of that? All you cowboys know about hitching posts, don't yeah. you, cowboy? We sure do, buckaroo. <laughs> hitching post! All right. All right, Kitty's up to three. Many of the people I love best in the world come from Texas. I knew you'd smarten right up, darling. And most hitching of the horses. Post. And most of the horses. <laughs> in Washington, D.C., they're replacing all the parking meters with... What do you say to that, Leslie? Where's my Western vocabulary? Pay stables. Pay stables. <laughs> yeah. You ride? Well, I did. I'll never say I did. I'll never do it again. All right. You promise? And, and now we're up to Fanny. What do you say? Well, I have to fling myself at the mercy of the judges. I couldn't think of hitching posts, but I meant it. I said, tie up poles. Tie up tie poles. poles. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Meg, you've got a little catching up to do. Five to tie and six to win. Weird Willie is really weird. How weird is he? Well, he got tired of buying clothes, so he had a blank tattooed on his body. <laughs> you like that one? Good. All right. Weird Willie is really weird, May. He got tired of buying clothes, so he had a blank tattooed on his body. The thing I can think of is a suit. Yeah! What's wrong with that? That's good. Boy, have I got an answer for you. Have you got one for her? That's the thing. So weird. A white suit which he borrowed from a cheap son of a... <laughs> okay. That is a match, that is a match. right? The light lit up there. You're all set. Wrong. A three-piece pinstripe suit by the people in Palm Beach. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Palm Beach will be very happy. A three-piece suit. Three and it was white. It was white. A white three-piece suit. This guy got tired of buying clothes, Leslie, so he had a suit tattooed on his body, according to May. Score is five to three. What do you say yes, to that? he did. A suit. A suit. All right. A uh, suit. Uh, four now. Well, McLean, Will McLean Stevenson tie the score? That is the question. This is close. Oriental chick could win big bucks for this one. <laughs> I hope jumpsuit is a match. A white love boat suit. <laughs> the score is tied, Fanny. Yeah, yes. Is this pressure? Yes. I need some pills. Okay. <laughs> All right, I have two answers. <laughs> Shut up, Fred. A suit of clothes or a suit of clothes? <laughs> now, Kitty, this is going to revolve and uh, take you backstage for a little while, but it'll bring you back to game number two in a short bit. And while we're wheeling her off, let's uh, do a little business with America, if you please. And here again, the star of our show, Gene Rayburn. Thank you, John. Here we are with Nate to the Soul. She's going to have a go at the big money. Good luck to you. We polled an audience and said, what do you think is the best answer to this? Step on blank. Step on blank. 
All right, three of the six stars will give you some assistance here. Whom do you want? Charles. Step on it. Yeah. Step on it. Step right. on it. Brett? Step on a crack and break your mother's back. That's a childhood saying, yeah. Uh, McLean? Uh, let's see. Step on the gas. Step on the Good. gas, Good. step on it, and Good. step on the crack. Uh, you want one of those or one of your own? I think... Step on fetch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with step on it. Yeah. Step on it. All right. Let's find out if it's up there. And if so, where? We'll go down to the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Step on me. I had a very masochistic group there yeah, that day. Yeah, a bunch of weirdos that day. You wouldn't say that, would you? No, sure. The next one says, step on the gas. All right, she's looking for a step on it. Let's see if it's under the $500 response. Yeah. Yes, it is. There you go. Charles gave you that one. All right. Now, May has the $500. That means the least she'll play for is uh, 10 times that amount, or $5,000. However, we do want her to spin the wheel and see if she can double it up and play for $10,000. Good luck, May. Here we go. Leslie, this is your first day on the show, and uh, the wheel stopped on uh, your name, and it is a double. Boy, that's as close as you can get. Uh, don't be nervous. Right in there. Oh. All right, good luck to you. On the yeah. blue dot facing me, there we are. Now, Leslie, here it is. That's not blank. You want to take a look at it, May? That's not blank. All right. Your job is to match Leslie. If you do that, you get $10,000. What do you say to this? That's not it. That's not it. All right. That's not it is what she says, Leslie. What do you say? That's not right. Oh. oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. She's got $500. That's not bad. Oh, and she has a shot at another one with game number two coming up. So here comes Kitty Soper once again. <laughs> Welcome back, Kitty. Thank you. You ready to have another go at it? You betcha. All right. You want A or B? Uh, A. That's twice you said I. Dan said, I love New York. Where else can you find more money than Fort Knox, more churches than Rome, and more blank than television? <laughs> I love one. New York. Uh, Dan said, I love New York. Where else can you find more money than Fort Knox, more churches than Rome, and more blank than television? Stories. More stories? That's Jeez. a good match. You're wrong. That's a good, that's a good match. There are eight million stories in that city. Remember that line? Nothing to do with what I said. What did you say? I said sex, violent crime, and other athletic events. Right. <laughs> They're applauding violence. Go, Brett. Well, I, uh, the, uh, yeah, well, no, I said Just hold a card up. Yeah, thank you. A crime yeah. and sex. All right. Roaches. Ro <laughs> <laughs> Where else can you find more money than Fort Knox, more churches in Rome, more blank than television, Leslie? Well, you can see that I have several things here. <laughs> I chose exposure. Exposure. Think how many people expose themselves in New York well, City. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I've never counted. <laughs> What do you say, McLean? Oh. I said, hating to give the Big Apple a bad name, but it's true, I'm afraid. Violence. Well, they've got it under control now. They're doing very well with it. Oh, they do? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, not as bad they'd as it used to hit you real hard in a cold day, they'd wrap you in a baggie, but I didn't I know that they'd got it under control. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Fanny. I said crime. Crime. Sorry. All right. So there you are, Kitty. That's your question. You stand by for yours. Now this for you. You were all splendid. 
Yay. New kid on the block wasn't bad, did <laughs> no. right. Good. Right. Good. And she's got cute dimples, too, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gene Rayburn inviting you to be with us next time for the match game. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good Today's contestants will also receive... Brass Black Hawk Extra Lean Hams, a low smoke over genuine hickory. Three distinct flavors, hickory smoke, honey glaze, barbecue glaze. From across the Pacific comes Hawaiian Tropic, natural tanning lotions and oils, plus this Hawaiian Tropic float, Hawaiian Tropic, the tan of the islands. Minwax finishes the beautified wood indoors for years, now Minwax goes outdoors. Get your home ready for weather and wearable exterior wood finish by Minwax. When you've got anything that sticks to squeeze, reach for WD-40. Makes things work smooth and last longer. Do it yourself with WD-40. Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game, a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. This program is edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars. Pat Harrington, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Joanne Flug. Richard Dawson and Betty White as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 73. And now here's the host of Match Game 73, Gene Rivers. Hey, hey, hey. Hello there. Thank you, Johnny Olson. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You look just you like remember the other half of Yes, what was that? <laughs> you, you, I <laughs> bought an like... Edsel from you, didn't I? I bought a, you bought a what? An Edsel from you. An Edsel? No, you didn't. <laughs> this is, it's an old vaudeville suit I found in a shop. The other there. half of frickin' frack. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we just did it. used to have feet in it. That's all I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong! Wrong! Would you like to say hello to Sonny Coleman and Chaplain Tom Schultz? Yeah. Hi! Okay. Hello there. This uh, gentleman has won quite a bit of money. He has $3,450 to his credit. He's won two games. And last time we were together, we started another game, finished one round. Nobody scored anything. And we're going to start round two. Sonny Coleman is challenging him. And uh, we'll see how she does with the beginning of round two right after we hear these messages. So please don't go away. Here we go. Are you ready, Sonny? All right. Yeah. Push the button and reveal round okay. two and ask you to make a selection, Sonny. Uh, let's try B this time. She wants B this time. Everyone plays since she didn't match anyone at all in the first round. Let's okay. see her second round. Tarzan screamed, Who blanked my vine? <laughs> I've got it! Tarzan screamed, Who blanked my vine? He always covers up his answer like Would he has just... anything to say. <laughs> Anybody would want a cop. <laughs> Do your Shut own. up, Brit. <laughs> Everybody does his own thing. Remember, the object is to match, or she will attempt to match your answers in a moment. Soon as you all finish. Right. All right, Sonny. Tarzan screamed, "Who blanked my vine?" Let's try took. Who took my vine? Who took my vine? Is what Tarzan screamed, according to Sonny. What do you say, Pat? Uh, Sonny, he didn't scream that. He screamed, "Who?" Greased. You can't go very far in a grease vine, no, can you? you? Can not. That's, true. That's true. Brett, what did you say, no, Tarzan? On the way to the ground, he said, Who broke my vine? Broke! And that's the end of that. Broke! Okay, Charles. Who stole my vine? Who stole my vine? Oh, that's what she said. Who blanked my vine? She ah, took God. Stole. Oh, that's a Great. Right. Oh. I'll back you up, Gene. I'll back you up. Uh, ju judges make a little Who's faster decision my there, just so we can keep the game rolling there. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Joanne, what do you say? Well, his Tarzan fell. He screamed, Who stole my vine? There's another match. <laughs> so, took and stole match. Tra uh, Richard, what do you say? Oh, call me Charles. <laughs> you almost did. <laughs> yes, we have three thieves and two greasers. Who <laughs> greased? Who greased my vine. Well, thank you. Yes. <laughs> what do you say? I should have said who drank my vine, and I said who ate my vine. Uh, who ate my vine? Ate my vine. Okay, ate so my you vine. did fairly well with that, Sonny. You scored two matches. I point out to you, Tom, 
You must match two celebrities to stay in the game. Three, however, will win your third game. Everybody plays. This is it. Alex said to Shirley, I love to watch you blink. <laughs> Alex said that to Shirley. I love to watch you blink. Who said it? Alex? Alex is Alex. speaking okay. to Shirley. All right. I love to watch you blink. Oh, I think I'm just going to nod off for a minute. Yes. Yeah. 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 There. Just talking about it now. <laughs> we got a cackler. Another cackler down there, John. <laughs> you ready? Pat and Brett, you yeah. ready? We're ready. Yeah. Don't include me in that. Include me out. Include okay, out. now they're ready. Tom, Alex said to Shirley, I love to watch you sleep. Sleep. Mm -hmm. Tom says sleep. All right. Oh, good. There's his answer. Pat, what's it's yours? It's pretty risque. I don't know if this is more or less. I love to watch Alex said to Shirley, dress. I love to watch you dress. Yeah. Okay. That's probably after she sleeps. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right no match there. Brett? Well... If you're a good, clean-living kid, before you dress, you bathe. I love to watch you bathe. Uh, yeah. okay. Actually, Shirley's forte was she danced like crazy. Oh, she was a dancer. Oh, da, 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 yeah. da, da, Very good. Da, da, All right. Does it say Brett sings? Where does it say Brett sings? It doesn't Brett say anywhere that Brett sings. There. How about you, Joanne? Charlie. Alex said to Shirley, I love to watch you da, dance. Dance. Wait. Da, you must da, match both da, Richard da, and Betty da, to da, stay da, in the game and achieve a tie. Da, Richard, we call on you. Well, actually, of course, the gentleman, being a man of the cloth, should know that cleanliness is next to godliness. Right. So he liked to watch her bathe. Bathe! So there's no match, and Sonny Coleman is a winner. Congratulations. Will you come down? What did you have? Laugh. To laugh. That's nice. All right, we've got $100. Chaplain Tom Schultz, $3,450 will be coming your way. Many thanks for being with Thank us. You. Nice Thank to you, sir. Tom Schultz. Goodbye, Tom. All right. Are you ready? Oh, you're full of energy, aren't you? May I have this dance? Okay. Oh, no, no dancing. Let's play the big super match here where you can win up to $5,000. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, yeah, you said that you're ready. I knew you were ready as soon as I looked at you. Okay. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank bucket. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you can match it. The second most frequent response, $250, and the third, $100. Which three celebrities would you like to get a little help from? Let's try Brett first. Brett, how do you fill in that blank? Uh, I have two choices. It would either be... I'm going to say Old Oaken Bucket. Old, old Oaken, oaken bucket. bucket from the... Old barbershop oh, harmony oh, song. No. Yeah. yeah, so you and I have to sing it. Just a simple actually, answer is all we're after. Okay, another celebrity. Let's try Richard. Yeah, let's try Richard. <laughs> I'm very good, actually. Uh, I have some recommendations. Ice bucket, doll. Ice bucket That's is what he said. All the winos in the audience are yaying you there. Yeah. Okay. The Eskimos. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's go with Betty. All right. What do you say? Oh, it's either kick the or wine. Um, I'm going to say kick the bucket. Kick the bucket. Okay. Now, Sonny, I'm over here, Sonny. You may choose old oaken bucket, ice bucket, or kick the bucket, or give us one of your own, but we have to call for an answer now. Let's see. I think I'll go with Richard and say ice bucket. Ice bucket. Once Ice bucket is the answer she is looking for, so let's reveal them one at a time now. First, here is the $100 response. Kick the bucket is up there somewhere. That's the one that Betty gave you. Okay, still looking for ice bucket. Here is the $250 response. Ice bucket it is! Well done, Richard. All right, you're a winner, Sonny. What do you think is up there now? Water bucket. They say water bucket in the audience. Old Oaken is what you say? Foot in the. Foot in the. That's another rotten answer. Here we go. Let's see the $500 response. Water. All right, everybody up on stage. No. 
carry okay. a water bucket. Yeah, water bucket. In the f football games, a fella carries a water bucket water. out. Oh, I don't go along with sports. I've told you that. <laughs> so you won the $250, Sonny. That means you will be playing for 10 times that amount now, or $2,500. <laughs> And to collect that amount of money, you must match one celebrity on a head-to-head -head basis, and it's time to choose that person now. Whom do you choose? I think I'll stick with Richard. Head to You'll head. stick with Richard. Richard, you get ready to write? That's more than Diana, did Sonny, you face right. me. <laughs> and uh, here is the 2,000... Five, no asides there, please. Right, thank you. Here's the $2,500 question. Color blank. Color blank. All right, Richard has finished his answer. Sonny, how do you fill in that blank? Color blank. Color book. Color book. All right, Richard, for $2,500, may we see your answer, please? Yeah, I put color blind. Color blind. You win the money. Coloring book is, I guess, what you were thinking about, eh, Sonny? Well, all right, you're up to $350. You're going to meet another player and play another game right after we pass along these messages. Got a brand new player here. Let's welcome Janice Peters. Hi, Janice. Janice will now tell us the story of her life in eight seconds. <laughs> Well, it all started in Chicago, and I came to Los Angeles to attend UCLA and stayed on for a career as a television production assistant. Okay, good luck to you in that ambition. You know that you and Sonny will be answering questions, trying to match our six celebrities. The one who does that most often at the end of the second round will be the winner and have a go at the big money super match. You ready? Here we go. Make a sex selection, please, Janice. <laughs> What is that? A. A is what she says she wants. She wants A. Stay away from that Coca-Cola. <laughs> That's right. Dumb Dora said. Remember Dumb Dora? Yeah, she said, married her. That good wife is coming tomorrow. Dumb Dora said, I didn't know Kung Fu was a TV show. I always thought it was a blank. Uh, you didn't hear the question, did you? I'll read it again for the benefit of the studio audience. Dumb Dora said, I didn't know Kung Fu was a TV show. I always thought it was a blank. Yeah, so think about that. Come up with an answer that she hopes will match the celebrities, but they've got to write their answers, Brett. I love your shoes. There will be... Uh, Yes, there will be. Oh, there will be. Okay. We're just negotiating. <laughs> At your place? <laughs> okay, we're all ready, Janice. What do you say, Dumb Dora said, I didn't know Kung Fu was a TV show. I always thought it was a... Food. A food. Okay. Pat, what do you say? Right. She's right, but I'm wrong. She's right. It's a main course. Main course. Can't match do we that. Get a, no. Do we get a no? no. Oh, the same oh. idea, but really not a match. Oh, the people who run the show are really severe. The judge is right over there. You want to boo? How does anybody oh, graduate? Don't boo anybody up here. There. <laughs> Wait a minute. I tried. <laughs> no, they're not booing you. They're booing the judge for not matching you. A very friendly audience we've got here. Brett, what do you say? <laughs> I'm for booing Pat Harrington. <laughs> All right. Boo! Okay, that's enough. I always thought uh, Kung Fu was a Chinese person. A Chinese person. No match there. Or Food a is the answer. Person. I, or a <laughs> I said, it was a lovely answer, dear. I said egg roll. Egg roll and food, no match there. I'm still a popular favorite. On this <laughs> I didn't know Kung Fu was a TV show. I always thought it was a... Chinese dish, but I have food in parentheses down here. That's quite What about that, Judge? Can you read that? Food, yeah. Okay. Now, Richard. Yeah, Anna May Wong was a Chinese dish. I thought a meal. Meal and food. How about that for a meal? We've got two there. What about you? Now, let's not have any of them. Just to keep it straight, Chinese food. Right. Okay. Three for you, and let's see how you do, Sonny, with this. <laughs> Margaret said... Are you listening to what oh, Margaret yeah. said? <laughs> yeah, I, did. I wish you'd get your own show, Pat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Margaret said, it's hard to blank with a girdle on. <laughs> Margaret said that. It's hard. To, you remember girdles? Ladies used to wear them. They, 
to the... Margaret said it's hard to blank with a girdle on. I've got a whole drawer full. <laughs> you know. <laughs> drawer is full. <laughs> You don't. Okay, the bottom tier is ready up All here. All right, the top We're tier the is ready too. We're Come the on, Brent. They're the best. Brent. What is it, Brick? You better watch it. Okay, here we go. Now, Sonny, Margaret said it's hard to blank with a girdle on. What answer do you think would match our six celebrated folk over there? <laughs> That's kind of difficult. Let's try make love. Yeah! Well, let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she says, let's try and make love, and yeah. well, I said, I'm busy. I, what do you say, Pat? I, uh, I'm, I, I'm dumbfounded. I have nothing to say. Oh, you mean, what did I write? Yeah, may we see uh, that? I said, uh, it's hard to pinch yourself. And it is. It is yeah. Yeah. Do you wear a girdle? No. I uh, know. Brett, you give us a Not when I'm making answer. love. Her answer is make love. <laughs> Neither do I. Uh, I said go to the John. Actually, I meant John. But you heard me, so right. I didn't get okay. my O all the all way. All right, we've got the answer. I, can do I it gave now. a simple I answer. It's hard to dance. That is true. Because I find it terribly <laughs> so. <laughs> You're going to stick with that. full. Uh, Joanne, what do you say? It always shows in those commercials I'm pulling them down. When oh, they're yes. Leaving. When yes. they're sitting a long time. So I said sit. Sit is a sensible answer. And here is sensible Richard Dawson. Yes, the one thing you cannot do with a girdle on is high jump. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't do it. It's no, an impossibility. Impossible there, as this lady will attest. I do think that's stretching a point. <laughs> but it's very hard to bend over. It is. So, Very easy to stand up. He didn't score at all with that. <laughs> and so at the end of round one, it's three to nothing in favor of our challenger. And we'll go to round two right after we go to these messages for you. All right, here we go with round two. Three to nothing in favor of our challenger. Janice, would you make a selection? I think I'll go with A again. A was good to you last time. You think it'll be good to you this time. You matched the bottom tier last time. Now you're going to try and match the upper tier. The sword swallower lost his sword, so he swallowed his blank. <laughs> sword swallower oh. lost his sword, so he swallowed his blank. There Look how go. quickly I'm going. Look at that. Look at the improvement. Terrific, I've made. Pat. Look at that. How's that? Yes. Not in there? We're waiting Charles for. Charles Nelson Riley is no, dragging he's, behind. He's writing a letter to his mother. <laughs> Okay, the sword swallower lost his blank, oh, they so don't write at all. He's lost his sword, so he swallowed his... Pocket knife? Yeah! Pocket knife. Ah, that hadn't occurred to me. Pocket knife is what she said. What did you say, Pat? Well, it, he, you know, he could only swallow his pocket knife if he was... A boy scout. A boy scout. I said he swallowed his sheath. Oh, the sheath that the sword came in. That the sword came in, he right. swallowed that. Right, okay, swallowed the thing there. Okay, pocket knife, uh, Brett. Maybe well, I'm see keeping her. up my usual run of bad luck. K. Swallowed his queen. Did you? What a, yes, I got the. I idea. said he swallowed his broom, the wide end first. <laughs> <laughs> Great imaginative no. celebrities here. Sonny, we've got this for you. You need three to tie, four to win. Here we go. Pinocchio was. Petrified to find out that his blank had termites. <laughs> Petrified to find out his blank had termites. Actually, it's of finding out, but it's all right. Pinocchio. Quickly. <laughs> okay, Sonny. Pinocchio was petrified to find out that his nose yeah! nose had termites. Okay. I need three to tie. Four, however, will win the game because we're at the final round. And let's see what happens. Everyone has played, so Pat, may we see your answer first, yes, please? Yes, sir, I agree. Now, as long as you got one, you need two more to tie. Would Rick. anybody like to look at the new popular favorite? No. No. Yes. But indeed. coming right back? Yes. <laughs> no. You tie your own, Charles. No, this is uh, just put on. I tie my own. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's Joanne. incredibly that's interesting, Gene. Yikes, the nose. Nose wins the game. Congratulations. Can you come around, please? Oh, Sonny, that's another $100 for you. Oh, what do you have? Everybody had nose. 
So you had a perfect round there with nose, but we believe you. It was nose all the way. Janice, we thank you very much for being with us on Match Game 73. We've got a gift for you. Let's say goodbye to Janice Peters. Good luck, Bye. Janice. All right. We want to have a go at this, the super match, or the audience match part of it. You know how it goes. We pulled a recent studio audience, got their best response to this. Flip blank. Now, you know the answers are worth 500, 250, and 100. Let's see what help you're going to get from your celebrities. Brett. Brett. Wilson. Flip Wilson. All right. Another one. Joanne. Joanne. Oh, I took mine. Now i got to think of another Flip. one. Come along, dear. <laughs> Flip. Flip and flop, flip and fly, flip and quiet, flip and flop. Flip and flop. All right, that's her answer. One more. Richard. Flip over. Flip over. So you've got Harry those Richard. three. Flip Wilson, flip and flop, and flip over. You want to choose one of those or give us one of yours? Flip Wilson. Flip Wilson's the answer. That's what she's looking for. May we see the $100 response? Wow. Flip flop. Okay. It's not there. That was kind of Joanne's answer. like mine. Here is the $250 response. Flip your lid. Third and last chance, Sonny, for Flip Wilson. Here is a $500 response. Flip Wilson! Okay, we'll be right back after these messages. Sonny Coleman will join us next time we get together, and she's going to have a go at the big money, the $5,000, and I hope you'll be able to join us too. And I know you're all coming back because you're, because you love us and we love you and we'll see you next time. Gene Mayburn here saying so long for Match Game 73. Join us next time. Today's consolation prizes are charm glow wet, a completely portable gas grill that goes anywhere, instant flame without starter fluids, a charcoal, charm glow products, Antioch, Illinois, and an airline eight-band portable radio from Montgomery Ward's Christmas catalog. It features shortwave and exclusive citizen bands from Montgomery Ward's catalog. And a wearing air freshenizer. It fills the room with a fresh, clean scent. It helps make the air you breathe a little nicer without mist or vapor. From wearing and... Rice-a-roni, the big flavor side dish is so quick, so easy, saute and simmer to flavor perfection. Rice-a-roni, the San Francisco treat. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73. Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. getting ready to make an appearance. Now, those of you who weren't with us yesterday, you know that McLean and I got the kid. He got the kid to me about my suits and how come he's only wearing a sweater and all that sort of thing. And I told him that I would give him part of my wardrobe. And Land. we... Now. Lend. Lend. And we decked him all out, and he really looks spiffy. Hey. So let's bring him out here now in his Palm Beach wardrobe, McLean Stevenson. <laughs> But tennis shoes? Mm. I'm not as concerned about the tennis shoes as I am the dippy sport coat. I gotta tell you, I think I look a little bit like Pinky Lee in this. <laughs> <laughs> you look Possibly a lot like have anything Pinky in a light blue or you know, a beige? Light blue or beige? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> but face it, you have no gift for fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, now wait a minute. Have you got something in a light blue for McLean Stevens? Here's Keats Tyler, who uh, is in charge of... Uh, yeah. 
Yes, sir. Show him something to like over here. You don't have to throw it on the floor. Now, I can tell already this is me. Is that better? Uh, what do you think? You like that? Yeah. Okay. What about the hate? Oh, wait a minute. What about the... Okay. And the hanky just points. like... Make there the you go. points. All right, Make the that's points. Make the points straight. Did he? Yeah. At straight the risk the of repeating myself, you have no talent for fashion. Who asked her? I think you look nifty, don't oh, you? Yeah. Thank you. I'm amazed that actually we can wear the same clothes and somewhat frightened by the fact that there is a Band-Aid in these pants. Does that mean anything at all? These were clean, weren't they? Yeah. But then I'll go sit down in them yeah. and do the best I can. Let's say hello to Walter King and you Carrie Heckroot. I'm in spoiling effect. Ah, you look great. All right, now, Walter King, as you remember, uh, please uh, uh, repeat the story of your life very briefly for us here, if you would, please, Walter. Well, I'm married 58 years, got one daughter, four grandchildren, and eight great-grandchildren. Yep, and where do you live? Where do you live? Thousand Oaks, California. Thousand Oaks, California. Right. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Carrie is a recent bride. Right. right, I've been married for eight months. Yep, and uh, she flies for one of the airlines, and she has a total of $10,500, which she already won in game number one. Yeah. We're in the middle of round one of game number two. He matched two of the stars in his first question. Carrie, let's see how you do. John said, my wife is really immature. What? At our last party, she served blank as an hors d'oeuvre. That's a... Immature is the operative word. All right, you ready, Walter? No, this is Carrie's. John said, my wife is really immature. At our last party, she served blank as an hors d'oeuvre. Cookies and milk. Cookies and milk. That's children's food. She said cookies and milk. What do you say, Bart? I thought maybe she was fond of going to the movies and would serve popcorn. Popcorn. Uh, any kid's food is okay here. No, she was very, very immature. She could hardly walk and she could hardly talk. You could have and that she picture. was just a little baby. She served farina. Farina. <laughs> Farina is real child food. Pablum. Pablum, another good one. All right. Three goodies up there. Let's see what we get down here. Connie. Yes, another good one. Pablum. <laughs> Cookies and milk is what she said. What do you say to that? Well, it's kind of a new me, Gene, and I'm not going to be silly or goofy or zany or anything. I'm just going to be a, an attractive... Straightforward kind of mature leading man. Kind of a Devil May Care Burt Reynolds type guy, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> So if I can get a hairpiece for the chest and possibly a bigger gold thing, I'll be on my way. In the meantime, I said Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Roll! <laughs> what do you say, Deborah Lee? Twinkies. Twinkies, yeah. another favorite of the younger generation. Now, we go to round two, the final round. Walter, you're ahead. You have to go first. Okay, I'll play with B. Really? Yeah. All right. <laughs> she doesn't mind. <laughs> Nancy said... Uh, Nancy said, I'll never vote for that politician. Yeah. Not only did he give my baby a kiss, he gave my baby a blank. <laughs> <laughs> now, here we go, Walter. Nancy said, I'll never vote for that politician. Not only did he give my baby a kiss, he gave my baby a blank. Cigar. A cigar. <laughs> Cigar is not a bad answer. Not a bad Made answer at all. Yeah. I come from a different political background myself. Gave the baby a hickey. A hickey. Ready? Walter, you know what a hickey is? I'm afraid I do. You do? <laughs> I'm very happy for you, Walter. All right. Richard. Gave my baby a rash. A rash. That would be very dear. You gave my baby a what, Connie? It's a rowdy crowd. This is going to be much too mild. A pinch. A pinch? Uh-huh. A pinch What do you say, what? sir? Um, I said, uh, before I show what I said, there will be glossy 8x10s and resumes available uh, of me in the uh, right. lobby. Just right to match uh, game. Goodson Todman, Goodman. 6430 Sunset right. Boulevard. And right. see me in my entire wardrobe. I said, uh, rash. Rash is what you said. Okay, McLean. Now, there we are. 
It's two for him, right. and you have a chance to tie it with two or win it with three. Now this for you. Here we go. Last chance, Carrie. Larry said, people are so nervous these days. That yes. The, the, the drugstores are selling blank and six packs. <laughs> People are so nervous these days, the drugstores are selling blank and six packs. I guess you can't use it. <laughs> okay. Yes, you can use it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Don't say that. People are so nervous these days. Right. The drugstores are selling blank in six packs. You're on your own. I can't help you. I've done everything I can for you. Uh, why don't we? I don't have anything. Give her an answer, Bart. She I gave her one. She did. She rejected it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not like. Brett and I are really good friends. We exchange everything. Uh-huh. Secrets, uh -huh. boyfriends. Larry said. People are so nervous these days, the drugstores are selling blank and six packs. Tranquilizers? Tranquilizers, she said. That's good answer. Okay with me. Those of us who have been subjected to nervousness in the past know about that. Yeah. See what that says? What's that say? Binzer welcomes you to Vegas, the third, and it should say the last <laughs> year. Oh. Tranks. Tranquilizers. All right, so it's not two to one. What do you got there? I've never been nervous because I've always had a six pack of savings. Sleeping pills. I think this equates Valium. Valium. All right, score is tied two to two. Connie, show us yours. We're in uh -huh. tune. Tranquilizers wins the game. What do you have there? And sleeping pills. Now, we have to say goodbye to Walter King, no. but we're going to send some gifts to him. <laughs> Walter, we're going to send you a headache and a case of whiplash and all kinds of wonderful things. Nice to meet you. Nice oh, we'll send some nice gifts to you, Walter. Thank you. Here we go. Carrie, we pulled a studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank hazard. Blank ah. hazard. Now, who do you want to call on here? Brett. Dukes of Hazard! Yeah. Uh, I've I never even seen it. Deborah Lee. Oh, gosh. Um, haphazard. Haphazard. That's two now. And Bart. Traffic hazard. I, I traffic think hazard? Traffic hazard. So you have traffic hazard, Duke of, Dukes of Hazard, and haphazard. You can choose one of those or give us one of your own. Dukes of Hazard. All right, let's see if it's up there. And if so, where? May we see the $100 response, please? Haphazard. I made it. Very good, Deborah Lee. That, the next one says, Dukes of. Uh oh. oh there it is. Dukes of Hazard. That's what she chose. That's what you got. What's on top, audience? Traffic. You don't know, do you? Well, neither do I. Let's all find out together. Go. Fire Hazard. Very good one. Now, listen, you've got $200, means the least you'll oh, play for is 10 times that amount, or $2,500. But you could double it up as you did last time and play for $5,000. let us see if it happens. Step right up there and give it a go. We'll all root for a double. Here we go. Didn't you play with Con? Yeah, you won the 10000 with her, didn't you? All right, here we go. Face me if you would, please. Good luck to you. This yeah, is it. What they have. I married blank. I married blank. Now, you give us the answer that Connie has in the card, you get $2,500. What do you say to that? Forever. I married forever? 
Well, that's in your mind now, because you've been married a short time, and you think it's going to last forever. Ah. And it probably will, because you're a very sweet I hope lady. So. Yes, indeed. We do, too. Yeah. What do you say? I should have thought about that, just getting married. An angel. That's I good. married an angel. Was that your second I choice? An very angel. close. Yeah. All right. You leave here with a total of $10,750. Congratulations. Bye. Welcome Jeanette Tuner and Byron Gillickson. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Welcome to the two of you. Let's find out who you are and where you're from and all that. Jeanette, please tell us about yourself. Well, I'm a student and I just finished up a semester at UC Berkeley. Any Berkeley fans? <laughs> Any of your chums here? Pardon me? Any of your chums here in the audience? No, no, oh. nobody came down. UC Berkeley, uh, okay. Yeah, and, um, well, I'm interested in flying airplanes and rock and roll music. Are you a pilot? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm getting my license. I'm working on it. Good for you. And Byron, what about you? Well, I'm a carpenter. I live here in Hollywood, and I'm married, have two children, and I've been watching the match game for over 15 years. a boy. Yeah. That's hard to do because we've only been on for nine years. No, no. Ah, I know you. Yeah, we did a straight version in the '60s in New York. That's uh, right. That's exactly right. All right, we'll start this game in a moment or so. But right now we have this for you. Here we go, Jenna. A or B? B, please. B it is for her. We start a new game. The teacher said, "That kid must be the class clown. I can tell he's wearing a blank." <laughs> Windy. 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 Would you like to see something in a darker blue? No, I think this does it for me. He yeah. did, he did my hair. Oh, he did, yeah. All right, here we go. Teacher said that kid must be the class clown. I can tell he's wearing a blank. A rubber nose? A rubber nose. <laughs> a very good response. Well, there's one good response, anyway. A clown suit. <laughs> a clown suit. <laughs> yeah, that was my first thought, sure. Well, now, this is the set. Don't shout, dear. No, not Now, this is, I have hiccups. Uh, this, should I hold my nose and get some bitters? Yes. It's the uh, same thing as a rubber nose. It's a funny nose. That's a rubber nose. A funny nose. <laughs> no. Too bad. Now I'm going to get that. A, a ball, on, a his ball nose. on his nose. Could be a rubber ball. Could it not indeed? Yeah, I guess it could be. That's the only kind that uh, I have could ever have been heard a baseball, of. Ira. No, it could not have been. I, I've never seen anything but a rubber ball. In there. Yes, ma'am. Baggy suit and red nose. Baggy suit and red nose. Wouldn't that count? We're looking for a rubber nose. It must be a rubber nose. That's what I meant. Yeah. A, it has to be a rubber nose. It has to be a rubber nose. I said a red rubber nose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how you can really, I mean, those things are, those red noses are rubber. Oh, how can you be doing right, that? Right, right. Yeah. They don't. Yes. Yes, that's what we I always that. think when we think right. of the clowns. Right. We're getting the red yeah. 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 rubber nose. Yeah. What do you think? What are you talking about? Now wait a minute. Here's Paint what he's, it on? He's, he's talking about makeup. No, no, Sometimes no. Then I would have put a made-up nose if I wanted makeup. You mean they're not real? A red nose. Red nose. Red. She's already the producer. Who's the judge? I tried. What are you doing? Boo him. And this decision to Silverman. Doesn't this feel good, Ira? Aren't you happy you're I the think judge? I you're a mean, nasty person, and you're wrong. Don't you pick on my Ira. All right. Harry said. I went to the world's strangest restaurant. How strange was it? Well, instead of a violin, a strolling musician went from table to table playing the blank. Jack and I. Oh, 
Oh, I think it's a wonderful color for you. The one problem I have with this jacket is when I sit with it, it looks like a new tweeting. Yeah, my right. living dictionary. Yeah, so I leave it on the button. Until you lose a little weight. That's Eugene, the incredible bulk. <laughs> Here we go, Byron. Harry said, I went to the world's strangest restaurant. Instead of a violin, a strolling musician went from table to table playing the blank. Drums. The drums? Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> that is a strange restaurant, years. all right. Byron, this place was strange. He went from table to table. He played the customers. Playing the customers. Right. Aha! Get the action where you can get it. Right. I agree with you. Get down and get funky. Okay. <laughs> Go. Oh, he is such trash. <laughs> he's cute, but he's trash. You love it, Bill. Uh, oh, no, I noise. said he went from table to table playing the piano. Uh-huh. Carried it around with him. And I said playing the nose flute. The nose That's flute. That's pretty far out. Yes, it sure is. The nose flute. All right, Connie. I had one of those once. Plates and silverware. Plates and silverware? There you go. There you go. You mean banging on them, tapping them? Is that what? Yes. Uh, as percussion instruments? My brother used to do that. Drove me crazy. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They put him in the home. You right. know what, Gene? What? If I match him and she doesn't, we've got a tie. Aha! From. Aha! Now. We've come down to the final moment. What do you say, Deborah Lee? I think we might have a tie because I said tuba. Tuba! So the game ends in a tie, and we'll go to the tiebreaker right after we do a little business with America. Oh, it's only round one. No, we won't go to the tiebreaker. First of all, we will go to the commercial, though, that's for sure. Here we go. Listen, uh, we got a minute to fill. McLean, would you like to do the rest of the show? Sure, Gene. I'd be glad to do the rest of the show. I got a right to sing the blues. <laughs> I got a right to see you low down. Say white guys can't sing the blues, huh? We do have a tie. So tune in tomorrow and see whether Danette. J what? Would you like to see something? Constantly in interrupting me if, for. Would you like to see something in a darker blue? Sure. Slip that off. Let's see how this works. Don't throw my ties around that way. Now, let's see what that looks like. Let me take that look at it. got no flair for fashion. Now, wait a minute. Now, stop that. that. That's a perfectly beautiful... I don't know, Pally. It was yours, and now it's on me. This is you it. have no gift, no. McLean, no. for Sorry. fashion. Go back to the V-neck sweaters. Gene Rayburn, join us next time for the match game. Goodbye. Today's contestants will also receive beautiful wall covering and easy to use squares. Dip them in water and put them up. The Pont Flair squares make decorating easy. Pilot pens, a razor point with the extra fine point and the fine liner that even writes through carbon. More than just something to write with. A cheese server and Gino's Party Special Pizza with a crisp and tasty crust you can trust plus the flavor shaker Gino's in your grocer's freezer. A calculator and pledge gives your furniture a clean, clear, more beautiful shine. Pledge brings out the beauty every time you dust. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game, a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotman production. This program was edited for both. Get ready to match the stars from the Bob Newhart Show, Bill Daly, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Rod, Sarah Purcell, Richard Dawson, and Betty White, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 78. And now, here's the star of Match Game 78, Gene Rayburn. Thank you, friends. Thanks for joining us. Are you all quite ready? Good. Yeah. All right. Now, I yeah. get a lot of letters asking, you know, from young people who want to be comedians. Right. And they all always ask me the same question. What's the most important element in a, com in a comic success? Right. You ask me that question. Yeah. Uh, Richard, time What? <laughs> Here we go. Say hello to Bob Carmichael and Nancy Landers.
Now, Bob's the current champ. He's got $600 to his credit, and they played a game to a tie here, and we started the tiebreaker last time. Nancy had her question, did not match any of our celebrities, which means all Bob has to do is match one celebrity to win uh, his second game. Are you ready for that? I am. Okay, let's see what happens right after this. Ready. The other half of the tiebreaker, Bob Carmichael, all you need is one to win. Agnes the actress said, I think that makeup man used to be a short order cook. He just put blank over my pancake makeup. I think that makeup man used to be a short order cook. He just put blank over my pancake makeup. Oh. Oh, of course. Don't look. <sighs> I out of my peripheral vision, I saw you, Charles Nelson This one, you like this one. It's like this one. Well, I'll put it in. Atta boy. <laughs> Atta way to go there. Okay, Bob Carmichael. Agnes, the actress, said, I think that makeup man used to be a short order cook. He just put blank over my pancake makeup. Syrup. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a good answer. I, oh, he's so smart. Oh, boy. He got the oh, idea. Rats. Well, I haven't got the answer. I'm close. Uh, they go together. I said pancake on my pancake makeup. No? No, wait a minute. He just wait put pancake over my pancake makeup? Yeah, well, he put, you know, short order cooks put pancakes over things, right? Not yes, over good. pancakes, you dummy. You put pancakes. <laughs> You certainly have a way of putting it, Brett. So to the point. Not our pancake, you dummy! She hits me. She kicks me when I'm wrong. Oh, boy, you're getting hostile. No, right she's after not. You. She's not a drop oh, of never, hostility oh, in her body. Oh, man, a woman who would hit a parked car couldn't possibly be hostile. <laughs> I hit a parked car last week. Yes. Uh, I think he's smart as a whip. Stirrer up. Stirrer up. That's the name of the rest of you. Thank you. That many gifts will be coming your way from Match Game 78. Thank Thanks, you. Had a good time. Okay, Nancy. Goodbye. <laughs> there she goes. And here he is again, second time up here. Picked up another $100. you got a total of $700 now. How's that? Fine, fine. You ready Excellent. to go on here? Sure am. Over 5000 could be yours if you do it right. Now do it right, Bob. We uh, polled a studio audience and we said, you write down your best answer to this. It's beginning to blank. Remember, you got $500 for matching the answer they gave most often. If you match the second most popular, you get $250. And for matching the third most popular, $100. Whom do you call on? Richard. Beginning to rain. Yeah. Rain! <laughs> Didn't it rain? Betty. It's beginning to look a lot like ah, Christmas. Yes. Wonderful. Charles. <laughs> it's beginning to melt. It's beginning to melt. <laughs> That's what they've been saying on the East Coast for a long time, but they're still frozen in out there. Okay, there they are. It's beginning to melt, it's beginning to rain, and it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Those are your three choices. However, you have the option of giving us one of your own if you don't want any of those. I think the best one is it's beginning to rain. It's beginning to rain. All right. Let's find out if it's beginning to rain is up there. It's one Richard gave you. May we see the $100 number? It's beginning to bug me. Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, <laughs> right? 1975. <laughs> yes. I like that. It's beginning to... <laughs> Timing. We're looking for Richard's answer. It's beginning to rain. May we see the next one, please? There's Betty's answer. Christmas. Thank you. Second chorus next week. Last chance for it's beginning to rain. Slide it. Yeah. yeah. Now you got a shot at the big money because you're going to play for $5,000. I'm ready. 
All right, you're going to match, you're going to try to match Richard. Richard, Richard it is. Yes. All right, here we go. Good luck one more time, Bob Carmichael. Worth 5000 This is what it says on this card. Basket of blank. Basket of blank. Basket of blank. Okay. Now you give us the answer that Richard has written on the card and put in that slot there. And if it matches his exactly, we give you $5,000. Basket of blank. Basket of cheer. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> One weirdo is with you. <laughs> All right. Richard, he says, basket. What did she say? Basket of cheer. I thought yeah. that's what you said. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. Basket well, of a, cheer. He's a perky person. You can't uh, put cheer in a basket. It falls through the... That's right. Yeah, it falls through yeah. the uh, uh, right lattice. Through, What's it? there? Fruit. Basket of fruit. Basket of fruit, yeah. That's a common phrase, basket of fruit. Well, I'm sorry, Bob, you're getting there the hard way. You got $1,200 now, you're inching up little by little, and now we've got this for you. All right, if you're quite ready to meet a new player, would you all applaud Pamela Carrington? Hello, Pamela. Hello, Jean. We want to find out a little bit about you, if you please. Okay, I'm from Winnetka, Illinois. A wonderful town. <laughs> I'm single, but uh, I am engaged to a marvelous person. Oh. oh. Sorry. And I have a degree in printmaking from the San Francisco Art Institute, but now I design and make my own jewelry. You do? Yes, I do. Is this one? Both are, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very pretty. Thank you so much. Is that gold? Yes, it is. This is a stick-up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of gold there, huh? Yeah, it is. It's expensive. And this, uh, that, that a lapis lazuli? You got it. Oh, yeah. That's very pretty, too. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll take this one. <laughs> Give you $1.98 for it. <laughs> okay, Pamela, good luck to you. Thank Shall you. Shall we begin? Surely. Bing. There you go. You may have A or B. A or B. I'll take B. B. For Pamela Carrington. Denny said, I just hired a new gardener, and he's really weird. I don't want any half-hearted responses. <laughs> I'll give him a cue a little later, but not on this one. Let's have I just hired a new gardener. He's really weird. He doesn't cut the grass. He blanks it. <laughs> he doesn't cut the grass. He blanks it. What was the first, just the first part? I just hired a new gardener, and he's really weird. Weird is the operative word. A weird gardener. Right. Okay. What are your basic Oh, good. Just loaded with sugar the way I love it. I don't have this yet. I don't have this yet. Oh, you don't I'm have this yet. No, and I'm walking yet. back he already to do. You. You're walking back. Walk slower. No, wait a minute. We're trying to walk back. All right, with five people. Let's see if it'll work. Oh, you're all going to stare at me now. Oh, <laughs> oh goodness gracious. Now, wait a minute. The operative word yeah, is yeah, no, gardener. Yeah, gardener. Weird. 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 Yeah, doesn't gardener. cut the grass. Weird. He, blanks. He, doesn't, he blanks it. He blanks it. Yes. He doesn't cut the grass. Is that the answer, Blanks? No, you oh, have to put a word oh, into the no, blank no, place there. He cut Dump cut. Oh, no, no, he doesn't cut the grass. He, uh, so. I will, while we're waiting for him, we'll have a little musical... Interlude. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. 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 Cut. Then he said, "I just hired a new gardener, and he's really weird. He doesn't, doesn't cut the grass. He blanks it. Combs it. Oh. Would that be a weird thing to do?" Knows. Well, I guess it would be weird. Uh, what do you say? <laughs> Speaking of weirdos, this guy really takes the cake no, here. i got to tell you this. What? Now, not only was I pressured, and I didn't even understand the question, I didn't understand my answer, right? Yeah. So I put back combs it. <laughs> back combs it. I can't believe that's right. Oh. Uh, 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 oh. I started to hold up the Pathetic Award for him until she said, <laughs> back off. Right. Oh. 
Well, she got one out of that. Well, okay. that's wonderful. I said no, he smokes it, man. He smokes it. Yeah. Stuck his now, tongue out at the me. The thing is, Bill, everyone, oh, I would, I would wager, everyone here will say smokes the grass. What is that, Betty White? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I even put a bet down on her. What do you when say? We, when we, when we light up later, you're gonna look silly with a comb in your mouth. <laughs> smokes it in the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Purcell. <laughs> his gardener's weird. He doesn't cut the grass. He... I would say he chews it with his Jimmy he Carter smile. Chews it, eh? Wouldn't you chew it? Yeah. They're no, not too wouldn't. thrilled with that. <laughs> they man. wouldn't no. either. Well... A weird thing to do with grass would be to smoke the grass. Yeah. Hey. All right. Now, I bet Betty says smoke. I'll bet you I'll nickel bet she you says smoke. What were you going to put down on me, a bet? I was going to put on a bet that you would say smoke the grass. Combs the grass. Combs oh, the grass. I get scareder and scareder. That's the second time I've matched Bill. Why would you smoke grass anyway? Why would you smoke grass? Now, why would you smoke grass? There is a euphemism for a Mexican weed called grass. You're kidding. Called marijuana. <laughs> called you, you, you mean you put it in a leaf and you smoke it? Yeah, no, you roll it up in this funny paper. In a newspaper paper and you smoke it? Paper. Not in a new... Oh, dear me. <laughs> All right, Bob, this is yours here. The Egyptian... I've been Robert Mitchum's for tea. <laughs> <laughs> we all remember that. <laughs> the Egyptian diplomat's wife said, My husband is always making secret trips. Uh -oh. I didn't even know he went to Israel until he came home with blank on his breath. <laughs> The Egyptian diplomat wife said, My husband is always making secret trips. I didn't even know he went to Israel until he came home with blank on his breath. He went to Israel. Right. Now? He didn't have grass on his breath. No, no. <laughs> I just I want to point out something Israel to you, Bill. Yeah, yeah, but I got the last one right. Yeah, not, I know where Israel is. I know you okay. kill the Bob Newhart show, right, okay. and you kill Tattletales. Okay. But I you're not going to do it to us! Okay. okay, he went to Israel, right? And he came back with the... Uh... Blank. I didn't even know he went to Israel until he came home with blank on his breath. Okay, I'll put anything down. You go. By the time you get there. All right, I will walk slowly, Bob, to give you the benefit uh, of a weak mind. Bob? Okay. You mean Bill? Bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bob the Daly's Egyptian... the president of the network. <laughs> the Egyptian diplomat's wife said, My husband is always making secret trips. Why, I didn't even know he went to Israel until he came home with blank on his breath. I'm really lost. Uh, You're lost on this one. Um, I was lost too. I know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. He don't know where Israel is either. <laughs> I didn't even know he went to Israel until he came home with blank on his breath. You see, he ate something in Israel. He ate something in Israel. Kosher. Until he came home with kosher on his breath. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait okay. You can't have kosher on your breath. Right? I know you can't have kosher, kosher on your breath, but the rules say the first thing he answer he gives right. is the one we must accept. So Imagine he said kosher. Imagine this dummy saying well, to him he can't have <laughs> kosher on his breath. Yeah. Imagine you. He had pancakes on his breath. No, right. he had bagels on his breath. That's right. Bagels on his breath. Wait All a minute, right. that's very close. That's kosher. So I suppose they have the no, bagels. Are only, bagels are not they kosher? Well, Made of pork? No, yeah, but I have put it in a slot. Until he came home with. Maybe on the weeks he comes, I can just go to San Clemente and Richard vi uh, visit Richard Nixon. Is that Lox? Lox. Well, bagels and Lox go together. That's right. <laughs> Charles? Is there a vacancy downstairs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll try and arrange one. Chicken of them. soup. Chicken soup. Eat, darling, eat. Have a little chicken soup. You're going to feel better in the morning. What do you say? One of my favorites. Matzo ball soup. Matzo ball soup. Yes. 
All right, Richard. Chicken soup. Chicken soup would be very healthy Jewish penicillin. What do you got? Salami. Salami, another good one. Kosher salami. So there we are at the end of round one. It's two to nothing in favor of Pamela, <laughs> which surprises everyone, including me. Now we've got this for you. Today's consolation prize is our first. A supply of contact. Even if your house has 150 rooms, contact brand self and easy plastic has a different color and pattern for each of them. And West Bend's two to ten cup automatic quick drip coffee maker features a double filter system, lets you brew delicious coffee with or without paper filters. And from Ventura, a jumbo wheel Pullman and dazzling jade with nylon pull strap, this energy saving wheel automatic really gets you rolling. And smooth and silky by Remington, the electric razor for women, the shades as well as a blade, the Remington smooth and silky. It's blank filling time again with our star, Gene Rayburn. Okay, Johnny Olson, thank you. All right, I am ready here. What's the problem? Oh, here we are. Uh, we go to round two. This is the final round. And again, Pamela, you may have A or B. I'll take A this time. You want A? Sure, why not? Okay. Two people do not play. Bill, you do not play. And uh, Betty, you do not play. We play Imagine Bill. Can we play with Imagine each other? Imagine Bill <laughs> not playing. I'll just mess around a little bit. That's all. Here it is. Nutty Nelson was thrown off the bomb squad because he tried to keep the bomb from exploding by blanking on it. <laughs> Did? Yep. Nutty Nelson was thrown off the bomb squad because he tried to keep the bomb from exploding by blanking on it. That's right. Okay. Have you been thinking about this, Pamela? Oh, yeah. Good. Here we go. Nutty Nelson was thrown off the bomb squad because he tried to keep the bomb from exploding by blanking on it. Wedding? Wetting on it. All right. Brett, she said by wetting on it. What do you say to that? You know what they say. If you want to put out a fire, tinkle on it. Okay. Wrong. Making wet on them. Making wet. All right. Now, Pam, you're up to four. We come to Sarah, who says... He tried to put out the fuse by TTing on it. TT. That five. And all you need is Richard, you'll have a perfect round. Tinkle, tinkle, little bomb. There we go. Splendid. You got them all. Now, Bob, you know what you have to do? Yeah. You gotta match all six to stay in the game and achieve a tie. That is the best you can do. Frank said, I married the bionic woman and I think I got gypped. Not only were her batteries not included, her blanks weren't included. <laughs> okay. In a moment or so, we'll be ready. Remember what you have to do. You got to match everybody. Okay. All set. Oh, oh, Sarah's gonna. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna change mine. <laughs> okay. Frank said, "I married the bionic woman, and I think I got gypped. Not only were her batteries not included, her blanks weren't included." Boobs. Okay. What'd you say, Bill? I would say if you could read that, boobs. Also. There it is. Okay, six to one. The score. Got to match everybody. Brett. It's howdy booby time. There you go. Six to two. Charles. Of course, I took it to the proper end. She, her boob bulbs. Her boob bulbs. Six to three. The score. Remember, you got to have everybody, a uh, match with everybody to achieve a tie. Sarah? First thing you should always check is a person's teeth, don't right. you? Right. <laughs> that means Pamela wins the game. Okay, Bob, you're going to 
Match game 78. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for match game 78. A Mark Goodson, Bill Tottenham production. Get ready to match the stars from Shanana Bowser. Brett Summers. I got the lightweight microphone. Yes, it's very nice. I'll be very careful with it. What I do, you see, to keep it brave. This is a very expensive microphone. I'll, uh, I'll loop the cord here so I don't see when you when you tug on the cord there. Someone, uh, hello there. Isn't this fascinating? I'd love to just go. Have you noticed how these young ladies are all color coordinated today? Yeah, yes. this guy is the best looking one on the panel. <laughs> right? Yeah. They're all color yeah. coordinated. That's is where there they a special reason for that? Game. Yeah. What is he oh, writing? hey, listen, he's writing. Well, hey, wait, listen, wait. I want to hear what I'm you're I'm almost writing. finished. I'm almost finished. I heard about it now. Okay. Yeah. Flourish. Yeah. Right. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Da -da -da. Poem. Poem, right. <clears throat> By John Bowser Shanana. <clears throat> For being on Match Game, I humbly give thanks. I love being silly and filling in blanks. With Gene, Brett, and Charles, and whoever is there, they're all such nice people, but none grease their hair. <laughs> the audience laughs while I'm racking my brain. You better be careful on my rubber chain. And all the contestants who before they go are trying to match us and rake in the dough. I flex mental muscles. I win or I lose. It's always a pleasure. Match game. I love yous. Oh. Ah. Throw that away. I'm going to keep you that. You want to frame it? Yes. No, Excellent. sign it there. I'll sign it. You can sign that Greaseful for me. Piece, now, let's say hello to Bert Waring and Stacy Ziegler over here. <laughs> Please greet both of you ladies. Bert's current champ with over $11,000 being challenged by Stacy. They've each had their first round question. Neither one has scored a match. We see how we do with round two, Stacy, A or B? B. B it is. And B says, the bionic woman said, it's rotten being made out of doll parts. Aww. Every time somebody pushes a button on my back, I blank. <laughs> You're a study in brown and, and green today, aren't That's you, right. Dad? Yes. With just a dash of mustard, I Except hope. Except the reason I'm walking funny is I'm wearing the wrong socks for this outfit. <laughs> I don't want anybody to see him. Are you I sure you're not wearing the wrong shorts? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> show us your socks. No, I'm not going to show you Come my on. socks. <laughs> the bionic woman said, it's rotten being made out of doll parts. Every time somebody pushes the button on my back, I blank. I tinkle. Tinkle, she said. Okay. Every time somebody pushes the button on my back, I... I Bowser. Do I have to play the game too now after I wrote the poem? Oh, yes, you oh. must participate. Too bad, because I said cry. Cry. No, cry is one of the good possibilities there. Whatever the little, you know, dolls do. Yes. Oh, they do a lot of swell stuff. <laughs> the trick is don't catch them at it. Uh, no. She said, say mama. Mama. Okay. Mama. I say mama too. Everybody says mama or cry or something like that. What have you got there? There. Well, You've been on both sides of the fence here, Brienne. Been on both sides of the fence, so I'm very happy. I potty. Oh, you potty, yeah. Okay. Excuse me, are we using technical terms here? 
Well, that's all right. Okay. Perfectly acceptable <laughs> euphemism there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob. Uh, first, I want to know, is that a match? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, do you have on blue socks with that brown suit? Yes, I have on blue socks. Green green shut up. Who asked tacky, you? Tacky. That's terrible. It's yeah. very tacky, but I... I, I, I I'm shocked. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you why. Because we tape a whole bunch of shows in one day. So you have to pick out one color. So I'm not going to change my socks you every told. 20 seconds. Yes, I told. Well, everybody knows that you take a whole bunch sure. of shows in one day. So I wear one. Uh, I hello. come every day. I change day. my socks for every show no, I do you with don't. you. Yes. Don't, don't lie to those people out there in Ms. Lee. You know, I should tell you about He's a barefoot. card I got. Remember when we were talking about uh, doing this show, uh, Gene Rayburn and Bob Barker, the show <laughs> that we were going to have? Yes. I got a nice card from a lady, and she said we should never do it. She said it'll never work because the same show shouldn't have two sex symbols. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mark. But she didn't know you wear blue socks with your brown suit. <laughs> you want my answer? I yes. mean, it's your show. Right. Just Any time. Chat Any time. Every time. I said tinkle, spelled W-E-T. Okay. Every time somebody puts a button on my back, I... I said I wet my Betsy. Wet my Betsy. Okay. All right. We'll have a question for you in a moment or so, Bert. But now we've got this message for you, America. Pay attention. Now, here's the way it is, Bert. You need f uh, three to tie and four to win. What'd you say there? Okay. Muggsy said. Hey, listen, you have a tough voice. Read this Muggsy. in Muggsy. Just okay. uh, the, read this in your tough voice. <clears throat> in your normal voice is okay. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. Muggsy said, I live in the world's toughest apartment building. When the landlord wants to evict you, he not only breaks your lease, he breaks your blank. Very good. I got it. You got it. Can I see that? I don't know what I was reading. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hughes is welcome. Muxie said, I live in the world's toughest apartment building. Sure. When the landlord wants to evict you, he not only breaks your lease, he breaks your... Don't say it yet. Now you can say it. Neck. Neck. Yeah. Your neck. Well, this is, there's a little more popular phrase than that. Breaks your... What do you say? No more popular phrase than that. I do better when I read the questions. Oh, neck. all right. I read it. That didn't cross my mind. I was thinking of arms and legs. What do you say? I say, he breaks your legs. Breaks your legs. Yeah. How are you going to move? How are you going to get out? <laughs> they drag That's me. not our problem. I don't care. Don't complicate things. Oh, poor. What's, oh, oh, what's the matter, Charles? Nothing. <laughs> are we on? Yes, we're on. It was a time when you used to ask me to use my tough voice to read. <laughs> Yes. I mean, Patty Duke saw those real tears. Yes, sir. I mean, that's real acting there. Nothing. Real bad. Right. <laughs> now, Brianne. I said, you want, me to, oh, you want to read it again? Not only breaks your lease, he breaks your... Legs. Legs. Sorry. Now, where are we? Still three to two here. Okay. We're still three to two. Legs. Still three to two. Now, you must match Joyce to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Never look at me for a tie. <laughs> I said jaw. Jaw! So that means Stacy Ziegler wins the game. <laughs> Bert Waring is leaving here with a bundle of money, $11,200. Thank you, my dear. Goodbye. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> All right, this is all for your benefit, Stacy. We polled a studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank beat. If you give us the answer that that studio audience wrote down most frequently, you get $500. Now, if you give us the answer they wrote down second most often, you get $250. And for matching their third response, you get $100. And uh, three of our six dinglings over here will give you a little assistance. Whom do you call on? Charles. Hi, baby. Hi, sweet. Heartbeat. 
heartbeat is his. Fran. Oh, this is, uh, I thought of Tiger Beat. Tiger Beat. Magazine. What is that? It's a biggie. It's a biggie. <laughs> is it a song or a it's story a or a comic oh, book? Sorry, Tiger leave. Beat is a magazine? Yes, yes. The magazine? For, 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 well, sorry, the no, you can stay. We'll let you finish out the week, <laughs> Brianne. It's all right. No, In her defense, <laughs> I worked my way through college selling Tiger Beat. I'll bet you did. I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I thought immediately of Deadbeat. Deadbeat. Dead yeah. Okay. Oh. We have Deadbeat, Tiger Beat and heartbeat. Now at this point you have an option. You can choose one of those or you might have a better idea that you'd like to submit. What do you say? I'm going to go with heartbeat. Heartbeat. Okay. Let's see if we have a heartbeat up there somewhere and if so where may we see the $100 number. Offbeat is a good answer. Isn't it? That's yeah. what Tiger Beat is. All right. <laughs> you think Tiger Beat's going to come up there? Hey. Yes. Here comes Tiger Beat. Here comes Tiger Beat. Go. Downbeat. Down Down yeah. That. Well, doesn't look too doesn't, good. You know why it doesn't? There was a different group here that day. No, these are good responses. Offbeat. Down I know beat. they're good, but I mean they're not, they're not body functions. No, she wants oh. heartbeat. She, let's see the $500 number. Oh, you got it. That means the least you can play for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. But a lucky spin of the star wheel, and you'll double your money, and you'll play for $10,000. Give it a go now. Good luck to you. Let's all root for a double four, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. is ringing and I think it's for no, me. No, no, stick it on there. You're going to love this part of it. All right. $10,000. Good luck to you. Stand on the blue dot, face me, and here we go. This card says blank and nonsense. Blank and nonsense. Okay, hope you're on the same wavelength with Bob Barker here. If you are, it means $10,000 for you. There it is. Blank and nonsense. Fun. Fun and nonsense. I, I Would you say that? No. All right, let's find out what Bob Barker says. If he says fun and nonsense, that means $10,000 for her. Uh, this would have been a lot more fun if she had said stuff. Stuff and nonsense. Or sense and nonsense. Yeah. Sense and nonsense. Okay, stuff and nonsense is a good one. Stacy, you've improved your, your position. You've got $600. That's not bad. You're going to meet another player later, right after we do a little business with America, okay? How would you like to join me in introducing and meeting our new player and welcoming warmly Ken Curry here. We welcome you. Let's find out a little bit of about you before we begin. Okay. Tell us about Ken Curry. Well, I'm 22 years old. I'm single. And uh, I work for the telephone company in Akron, Ohio. Really? <laughs> yes, uh-huh. What do you do and for them? I'm a service representative for yeah. the phone company. And I'm out here visiting friends on vacation. I'm having a ball. Well, good. <laughs> well, good luck to you here. I hope Thank you have you. a good time here, too, Ken. We'll begin by asking you to make a selection here. You can have A or B. I'll take B. B it is. Thank you. Excuse me. <clears throat> George said, my wife must be having an affair with a baker. Last night, I found blank all over the bed. <laughs> Whoops. I got it. All right, Graham. Okay, okay. George said, my wife must be having an affair with a baker. Last night, I found blank all over the bed. Well, I'll say dough. Dough. Okay, Ken. You say dough. All right, Bowser, you said dough. Hello, Ken. Telephone company? <laughs> uh, we were almost on the same line here, but not exactly. Crumbs. Crumbs. That's dough Bye. after it's been baked. <laughs> All right, Brett. Well, drawing on my own life, I figured he took his lunch hour and ran over there in his little hat and his jacket and his little white pants. So I said flower. Flower. No? I said I found flour all over the bed. No. Okay, Charles. I was going to put dough and I did. Oh, you did. I was going to 
I watched when you have an affair with a baker last night. I found dough all over the bed. Can I say something? I was so thrilled to see Kent, what he looks like, because I've never seen what a telephone representative looked like. There's, Those make appointments, they yeah. never show. So it's nice to see. <laughs> it's nice to see what they actually look like. Um, dough. Dough. Okay, two for ten. Got a little dough for him? I, too, am from Akron, Ohio. I, too, am 22 years old, and I, too, said dough. There you go. You made him very unhappy in Arkansas. Uh, it's Missouri. Uh, Missouri. I went, <laughs> was I went to high school and college in Springfield, Missouri, the queen city of the Ozarks. Right. <laughs> yes. Incidentally, they love you in Springfield. Good. Well, I was there two cities, a few, couple years ago, and they asked a great deal about you. <laughs> they, said, they said, is Gene sobered up? And... <laughs> Thank you very much. No, they did. They liked okay. you. All right, Joyce. Well, I figured that he wouldn't need the dough, but he would need her but he'd flower the bed first. Flower. <laughs> oh. She told the whole story there that I think went over everybody's head. Need, K-N-E-A-D. Right. All right, the cop Even... said, no wonder that guy had an accident. He couldn't see. Instead of baby shoes hanging from his mirror, he had blanks. <laughs> No wonder the guy had an accident, he couldn't see. Instead of baby shoes hanging from the mirror, <clears throat> he had blanks. Here we come to Stacy. He did pretty well with his. He got three in his first round question. Let's see how you do. The cop said, no wonder that guy had an accident. He couldn't see. Instead of baby shoes hanging from his mirror, he had blanks. His glasses. Oh. Right, just answers. Answers. It is not for you to judge. That's as good as Tiger Beat. You've, have you seen little baby shoes yeah, hanging from the Yeah, and right. Well, the, the implication of the question was that you couldn't see because a large object of some kind was hanging there. Tell us about the large object that was hanging from the mirror. I have to dedicate this answer to my grandmother because she always wears combat boots. Combat boots. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Don't, I, go, don't go home for Christmas. <laughs> I uh, didn't, didn't get near shoes. I said, you said a pair of baby shoes? That's what normally hangs from the rear That's view mirror. That's true. I said a big pair of boobs. <laughs> Combat boobs. You misunderstood Combat. the question. You misunderstood Combat the question. Boobs. Combat boobs. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Right. Sad, isn't it? It is sad, yes. <laughs> Size 13 men's ski shoes. Right. Okay. The Size 13 men's ski boots there. Okay, <laughs> Stacy is looking for a pair of glasses, Brianne. I'm sorry, I said Wilt Chamberlain's tennis shoes. That's a good answer. That's right. right. Wilt you Chamberlain would have very large tennis shoes. This audience loves me. I can hardly contain them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they love you in chips, though, don't they? <laughs> Okay, Bob Bar. I started to say the latest copy of Tiger Beat. <laughs> yes. I, said, <laughs> I said ski. 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 Right. Don't beat it that The audience tiger. loved it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that reaction? Are they breathing? Don't just John? sit really? there, breathe. Yeah. There's a lady on the second row who's getting blue. Right. <laughs> Joyce. Yes. Have you got a nifty answer for us? Yes, I'm so overcome by you two sex symbols. I do. <laughs> The Jolly Green Giant shoes. Jolly Green Giant would have very well, large I, I shoes, wouldn't that. it? That's sort of like they were all <laughs> good responses. So there we are at the end of round one. The score is three to nothing in favor of Ken Curry. Round two coming up right now. Then we'll go to round two here and ask Ken Curry if he wants A or B. Well, I'll go ahead and take B again. You want B again? Sure. All right. Three people play: Bowser, Brett and Joyce. Okay, whatever you, you say, honey, you're the boss. You know me, I pay attention and I don't do it. I don't goof off or do any of that stuff. I'm right in here every minute. Sure you are. <laughs> Fred said, I don't think my mailman likes me. Instead of putting my mail in the mailbox, he put it in the blank. <laughs> I don't think my mailman likes me. Let me see. You would. Oh, Fred said. Fred said. I don't think my mailman, mailman likes, likes me. Instead of putting my mailbox in the mailbox. He oh, I think you're right on no. that. No. I don't get that. Very good. No, you don't play this Mine's round. Very good. Here, dear. Yeah. Thank you. Show that to somebody. All right. Put it in the. Right. Wouldn't it be great fun? Oh, 
No. Okay. <laughs> Kennedy's on about it. We're just about ready. Ready, Brett? Kid loves sure. It. Fred said, I don't think my mailman <laughs> likes me. Instead of putting my mail in the mailbox, he put it in the blank. He put it in the trash can. In the trash can. <laughs> okay, Ken. Let's see if we get any trash cans over here. What do you say? Hi, Ken. Are you there again? Talk to you, Ken. Oh, this time we're going to have a happier conversation because I said trash can. Oh, bye bye. Okay. Yes. I don't want to have an ugly argument with the judges and have to get up and leave and fight and scream well, and holler. probably ugly judges. But I said garbage. Good. Okay. All right, Kenny, that's fine. Now, Joyce. Me to get six? Well, yeah, he'd like six. Would you like six, Kim? Oh, I yes, like six. I, I, I six. would like that. <laughs> I'll give you five, and here's six. There you go. Okay. Six for Kim Curry. Oh, now, you have to stand by for your round two question. Do a lot of catching up there right now. This for you. All right. Tune in next time. Yay. When Brienne will do a cartwheel this on this so very sad. stage. Gene Rayburn here. Join us next time for Match Game 79. Goodbye. <laughs>
I just won the world's worst contest. The first prize is a week in bed with blank. Mm. The world's worst contest. First prize. A week in bed. Paul Lind. Paul Lind? Is that the worst prize? I don't know. I I might enjoy that. What do you say? I like Paul Lind. I said a week in bed with me. You. Because I wet the bed. No, I don't. No, no. <laughs> All right. What do you say? I love Paul Lynn. Yeah, he's funny and all I that. I wouldn't mind a week in bed with... Well, maybe not in bed, just hanging around the pool. Right. Better. Yeah. Okay, anyway, I went for our old favorite, Howard Cosell. Howard Cosell. When in doubt. That would be revolting. The man, I was well, going to get the man that was so involved with Brett for years and, and wild... Exciting things. Howard Cosell. <laughs> Howard Cosell, yeah. Well, he'd talk all night long, wouldn't he? <laughs> What'd you say, well, buddy? I guess it depends on how you get your kicks, you know. But I said King Kong. <laughs> might not be so bad, you know, depending. First prize a week in bed with King Kong. That would be Pretty difficult, good. yes. Mm -hmm. Unlucky yeah. Louise said, I just won the world's worst contest. The first prize is a week in bed with... The flu. Oh, the wow. flu. <laughs> Wonderful. Like wonderful, wonderful. Real good. First prize. How do you get it? You have to kiss somebody. Oh, no, I think so. Oh, right in. What do you say? Not now, Jane. I have oh. a headache. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I have found over the years on this wonderful show that when you're kind of stumped, it's either boobs or Howard Cosell. <laughs> <laughs> and the latter is most appropriate. Does Howard Cosell have... Uh... I don't think so. Oh, I, I see. All right. Okay, so there we are. Mary Ann, now you got the hang of it here. Roger, you ready for yours? Jim said pollution is really getting bad. Uh -huh. Well. How bad is it? <laughs> that was a solo performance, wasn't it? One person responded. Okay. On the other side, pan left. Now, wait a minute. Would you stand up, the lady? Uh, there. Now, okay. Uh, now, let's give, let's, let's give uh, one more chance, John. Uh, get your microphone over there uh, to her, uh, if you've got one there. And as long as she's going to do it, let's uh, give her billing and a picture on her face and everything. All right, you ready? Jim said, pollution is getting really bad. How bad is it? Oh, thank you. I think she broke your mic, John. Here's how bad it is. Last time I went to the beach, a bully kicked blank in my face. <laughs> you know the saying about the bully always kicking sand in your face? Well, this says, Jim said, pollution is getting really bad. Last time I went to the beach, a bully kicked blank in my face. All right. Okay. Roger Campbell. Jim said, pollution is getting really bad. Last time I went to the beach, a bully kicked blank in my face. Smoggy air. What? Smoggy air? Smoggy air. <laughs> How do you do that, Roger? It's so thick out here, you can oh, kick it. Oh, it's, <laughs> smog is so thick it can be kicked. <laughs> that was a nice recovery, I would say. Well, uh, it was too hard. I was going to say kitty litter, because kitty litter has, you know, but I did. I said garbage, so we used garbage. Garbage was all over the beach, and he just kicked garbage in his face. The beach was filled with I garbage. I it. I think it's just a terrible, sort of boring, dreary little question. I think that those cute kids have been coming up with some really wonderful questions this week, and I think that one really stinks. Somebody slapped Four it. dirty hot dogs. Well, that's a good answer. Uh, There'd be a lot of litter and garbage around there, Charles. 
I hope this is a match. Seriously. Smoggy air is what he said. Well, I just hope this is a match. Well, we'll do the best we can. <laughs> Smog. Smog! It's very difficult to kick smog, thick as it is out here. It's very thick, though. Yes. Well, I'm really from New York. Right. So I... And they have beaches there, you know? Yes, indeed. And it's also very sooty there, so I said soot. Soot, soot yes. I, this audience is violent. <laughs> You mean you mean those globs of oil that come up from the tankers and all that? Ooh, this is all so unattractive. <laughs> yes, isn't it? Jeez, and oh, hangs the yuck. in the, the oh, yuck. Yes, soot. It's oh, the in yuck. that black Ooh. sand. Soot. Say something disgusting. I said oil. Oil. That's disgusting. Yes. That's disgusting. That's terrible. I hate that when I see that on the beach. Yes. I just hate that. It's awful. It is. Me too. Th what do you say? I say that matching Brett is only slightly less alarming than when I start matching Bill Daly. Then I'm really worried. <laughs> garbage. garbage. She's got garbage. So kidding, there you are. Kidding. One for you. That's the end of round one. And now we've got this joke. not to cause a revolution, I have been uh, pressured into acknowledging a group in the studio audience from a city in Texas called Richardson. Is that correct? <laughs> They're a wild bunch. Okay. Cut! You've got it. All right, thank you. They are swimmers from various schools in that city, and we're happy to have them here with us. Now we go to round two here. Marianne, you can have A or B. I'll take B this time, please. All right. Everyone plays. Phil said, That's horrible Hank's house. Take a look. It's the only house on the block that has a sign that says... Beware of blank. We got one for our, okay. Feels like that more of a swing sense. Horrible Hank. That's Horrible Hank's house. It's the only house on the block that says a sign that says beware, beware of blank. Beware of blank. Yes, Horrible Hank. I'll have one. We're all sold out, mister. Try the other truck. Oh, all right. <laughs> He's certifiable. <laughs> Marianne, Phil said, that's horrible Hank's house. Take a look. It's the only house on the block that has a sign that says, beware of blank. Beware of man-eating tiger. <laughs> beware of man-eating tiger? Mm -hmm. tiger? Marianne? You know, your answers are looking better, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that was my answer. That's oh, that was your answer? She saw my card. That's if you I'm say man-eating tiger, I'm going to fall over in a dead faint and make a loud noise. All right, let me get rid of that card then. There we are. Okay. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, beware of horrible Hank. How about that? And that's that's right. You have to see Hank so mean that he could say that's where that's that is. horrible Hank's house. Take a look. It's the only house in the block that says beware of horrible, horrible Hank. Hank because he's so terrible. All right. I think that is a wonderful answer. I think it's the best answer he's given this week. As a matter of fact, I think it's the best answer he's ever given on this show. Thank you, Tom. Show and tell. Hank. Beware of Hank. I don't understand that. We were looking for something else here. What do you say? What were you looking for? The definitive answer. Well, oh, I love you, Bob. Oh, I love you. Audience, I ask you in all That's candor. Is that the definitive answer? I don't everybody think so. <laughs> Bonnie, Come what on, have you got? I didn't answer that way. I no, I, I'm sorry. I thought everybody go in a different oh, direction. I, went, I, I thought he was horrible, and yes. he didn't, you know, and it's usually beware of dog and that, so oh, he was right. horrible. So I said, beware of wife, is what I said. Horrible Some hand. of the people Only like that. Has a bit. You don't like that answer, but they well, it's all right. like it. It stinks. Beware of wife. Oh, the wife is a dog. Well, oh, I see. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I point that out because I also have wife. <laughs> <laughs> now, you must match man-eating tiger with the Marsha Wallace. And We're often uh, mentioning listen, the same breath. Don't, don't think it's impossible. Because <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> Well, I think I need treatment. First I matched Brett, then I matched Bill. Now I've matched them both. Owner Beware or... Beware of owner. That means Roger Campbell wins the game. All right. Well, Marianne, it was a pleasure to meet you.
Actually, we're going to have some gifts coming your way Thank from you. Match Game 78. Mary Ann Cooper, ladies and gentlemen. There she goes. All right. Does that bring joy to your heart? Always. And the wheel there, the star mm -hmm. wheel. We're all set for you once again, Roger. You now have $11,050. We'll see how much more you will win right now. We polled the studio audience and said write down your best answer to this. The Boston Blank. Oh boy. Remember, matching the answer they wrote down most frequently, you get $500. $250 for the second most popular, and $100 for matching the third. And whom do you call on? Richard. We just had our version of it here called Proposition 13, the Boston Tea Party. The Boston Tea Party. Right. That really stirred him up, Richard. Charles. The Boston Strangler. Yeah. And Bonnie. Bonnie, have you got one? Uh, sure, uh, what, I have it's, it's, one. Something will come uh, to you. Sure, Wait I'm a minute, sure that something, something may come from above. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. There. Celtics. The Boston Celtics. All right. Okay. So there you have. You got the Celtics, you got the Tea Party, you got the Strangler. The Strangler. You want the Strangler. Okay. Boston Strangler is what he's after. Let's see if he's up there, and we'll find out what's under the $100 response. Red Sox. Okay. May we see the $250 number? There it is. You've got it. Congratulations. Another $250 for you. The Boston... I think it's going to be the tea party. All right, show us your tea party. Tea party it is. All right. We've got to do a little business with America, and then we're going to get back to you, Roger Campbell, so don't go away. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. This is a built-in bed board in the box spring to super comfort and support from Simmons. And from Cody, a gift collection of Masumi fragrances. Masumi, the essence of inner beauty by Cody. And a hot tray and pork products to use for pork cookout time. Pork is easy to fix, delicious to eat, and a great food value. An orange crush. Smooth, fresh, lightly carbonated soft drink crush. The taste that's all its own. There's fun for everyone when Match Game 78 continues with Gene Raver. Thank you, Johnny O. All right. Here we go, once again, with Roger Campbell. He says he feels very confident about winning another bundle of money. He's got 11300 right now. Let's see what he does here. He's won the $250. That means he's going to be playing for 10 times that amount, $2,500, or double that amount if he has a lucky spin on the star wheel. He's done it before. He knows it must make one complete revolution, and he'll be playing for double if the wheel stops in any of the star areas. Grab one of those pins and give it a good spin. And there we go. The light will light up if it stops on a double. It means he'll be playing for $5,000. And Now, you did it before with her. Let's see if you can do it again. Good luck to you. He is playing double again, $5,000. And this is it. Blank Farmer. F-A-R-M-E-R. F-A-R-M-E-R. Blank Farmer. Blank Farmer. Okay, now, Bonnie's finished. We ask you to give us the answer that matches hers. If you do, you get $5,000 additional. What do you say to that? Blank farmer. Wheat farmer. Wheat farmer. Well, they're very big in this country. I guess there are more wheat farmers than any place else. We grow more wheat than any other nation in the world. Bonnie, what do you say? I said gentleman farmer. A gentleman farmer, yes. Okay, you both had a good try at it. Roger, you still got your 11,300. You're going to meet another player, so let's welcome Renee McKimmy. She's coming out right now. You know, Ron? Yes. Renee, it's uh, nice to have you here with us. Uh, we'd like to find out a little bit about you. Would you tell us the story of your life in nine seconds <laughs> nine or seconds. 12, whatever? 
Well, I'm a um, compliance administrator for a manufacturer of medical products. And uh, um, let's see, I'm single. I have... You had to think about that for a second, did you? Yes. 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 Am I single or am I not single? Yeah, I guess I'm single. (laughs) Let's see, I have two pet ratties named R2 and um, Emma. Two pet No, just R2. Ratties? Rats, yes. They're cute white, little things. They run around. White rats? No. One's a black yeah, cooded rat and the other one's a cream cooded <laughs> rat. Real icky rats. Rats. Yeah. Washy rats. Real icky rats. No, they're not icky. They're nice little rats. They the kind of fine. Yeah, I never oh, saw a nice rat. I never yeah. met a rat I liked. In my whole life, I never met a they're rat clean, I liked. You know? They're clean? Yes. Yeah. They're better yeah. than cats. Yeah. You know, they keep me in cage. That's nice. Okay, Renee. Good luck anyway. <laughs> you may have a choice here of A or B, Renee. I'll take A. A it is for Renee. A, is a for Renee. Norma said, Norm said, not Norma, Norm. Norm. Norm said, something crazy has happened to my television set. Last night I saw the late, late movie and a commercial at the same time it was strange. Godzilla was cleaning blanks. <laughs> Godzilla was cleaning blank. Late, late show and a commercial at the same time. Godzilla was cleaning blanks. Hello, oh, Bill. Okay. Hi, how are you? You finished that quickly? Oh, I gotta be back. My, your boss told me to finish fast. Oh, all right. Okay. So nervous. Okay. Give me, give me, give me. Here we go. Renee, Norm said something crazy has happened to my television set. Last night, I saw the late, late movie and a commercial at the same time. It was strange. Godzilla was cleaning blanks. Bathrooms? Bathrooms. Okay, that's one of the things you see in those commercials. Bill, what'd you say? I said he was cleaning his rats. No, he was cleaning his kitchen sink. Kitchen sink. All right, that's another commercial. Brett? Ooh. While Godzilla was sleeping, he was cleaning up. Ovens, another thing you see in commercials, Charles? I said floors, dude. Floors? Okay. And Bonnie says... John. John. There's one for Renee. Close your John, Richard. Tardy. Tardy, see? That's two for him. Toilets. Toilets. That's three. Very good. Now we've got this message for America. Gene Rabin to join us next time. Match Game 78. Goodbye. Thank you. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 78, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. This program was edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars from the love boat, Ted Lange, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Raleigh, from Dallas, Audrey Lander, McLean Stevenson, and from Harper Valley PTA, Edie McClure. As we play the star started Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Raven. Hey, John. Where'd everybody go? Where'd everybody go? <laughs> I, I think it looks ridiculous. You think it looks bad? Well, <clears throat> I made fun of his suit, so he told me that he'd take me down to the store where he gets all his stuff. Yeah. Gorge. And I guess I got lucky because they only had two of these left. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't get the pants. The whole thing was 300 bucks, so I just popped the 150. Nobody sees your bottom on this show anyway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But I don't know. I did the whole thing. I think it looks like good, don't you think? I think it looks wonderful. You don't think it looks great? You know what I think? I don't know how something that looks so fabulous on Ted could look so terrible on you. I think that's an insult. I think they've been insulted. You want to build her in the mouth? No, no, no. I'll hold her while yeah. you build her in the mouth, okay? Minute. Hold it. It's a whole new uh, way of life for me, a whole new image, Gene. <laughs> oh, really? I really don't I give up. I think a... it's Douglas Fair. You don't mind what anybody says. You just let it roll right off your back. I'm just going to let it all hang out, as they say. Right, yeah. <laughs> And change my way of living Douglas and if that Fairbanks, ain't enough. Jane? You, what's that? Douglas Fairbanks. Yeah. Easily. Easily. Douglas Fairbanks. Douglas who? Fairbanks. That's Alec right. Guinness. Right. One. Senior. Yeah. Senior. <laughs> right. After he had been embalmed. Listen, we better get the show going because I gotta get the jewelry back by 4:30. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah. All right. You look wonderful. Hey, wonderful. Mark, All right, let's say hello to Karen and Barbara over here. <laughs> 
Are you ready to go, ladies? We're coming down the home stretch with the two of you. As a matter of fact, this is it. Barbara, you need one to tie and two to win. Last game. Don't worry about it. It'll feel comfortable. You'll stretch it a little bit. The buttons right will pop off. Right. Weird Willie is so weird. He's the only man in the world who carries his bowling ball in his blink. Okay, I'll push it in. There it is. It's working now. Here we go. Weird Willie is so weird, Barbara. He's the only man in the world who carries his bowling ball in his blink. In his nose. You know? He's supposed to be weird. You've got a shot at it. <laughs> Even though you only got one. Yes. All right. Keep your fingers crossed. Here we go. All right, Ted, let's see it. I thought that Weird Willie was married, and I thought that he would carry a bowling ball in his pregnant wife's jumpsuit. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's weird, all right. What do you say, Brett? I thought Weird Wooly, while it was single, and he carried his bowling ball in his vest pocket. Another weird answer. That's all we want is weird stuff here, Charles. Moving along, a typewriter case. A typewriter case. That's not so weird. That's rather That's practical. Rather fa fairly conventional. Weird Wooly, only man in the world who carries his bowling ball in his where? What? Who? Well, Brett and I think alike. Pocket. In his pocket? Yeah. What did you say, McLean? I'll tell you where I said when I get darn good and ready to tell oh, you where right. I said, Gene. Oh, we'll wait for you. We're not okay, no, I'm ready. Don't want to push you. Just getting cocky when I get dressed up, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I'm stuck in this sucker for 23 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. No, I, it does look good on me. Oh, Open yes, it does. Pocket. Right. Look very right. handsome. No, if I, if I, what I need is a training bar. It looks like I'm growing little. <laughs> <laughs> you will get a series that goes on the ocean, I can tell. Right yeah, away. Like that. Because I've had four now that have gone down the dumper. <laughs> uh, okay, what well, I said was that Weird Willie carries his bowling ball in his pants. Aha! Now, the way it is, Barbara, you've got to match Edie to achieve a tie. That's the best you could do. What do you got? Are you a championship bowler or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Edie! <laughs> No idea, because he has his ball in his pocket. And it's not good. So wins the game. Come on down, Karen. Right there, please. Thank you. Now, you've got $500. Many thanks for being here on the match Thank game. You. Barbara Dixon, ladies and gentlemen. There she goes. Hello. Ready? How do you feel? Pretty good. Good. We've got the super match for you where you could win over $10,000. Good luck. Let's begin. We polled an audience and said, would you please write down what you think would be the most popular response to this? Toast blank. Oh. Toast blank. Now, three of the six dingbats will offer you some assistance. Look them over. The ones who are trying to get your attention are the ones who have the answers. <laughs> Ted, please. I... You didn't even look at Ted. That's all right. We have communication. Oh, you do have. We're on a way of communicating. It's right. called vibrations, brother. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> We're getting vibrations. Really? I would say toast of the town. Yeah. Toast of the town. Edie. Ted took mine. Toast and jam. Toast and jam. Ooh. All right. McLean. Smart move, sweetheart. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got what is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Let us in on it. Pray Crazy. do. Put me in a white coat and just. <laughs> <laughs> Toastmaster. Toastmaster. You go with Toast of the Town, huh? So there they are, Toast and Damn Toastmaster, Toast of the Town. You want one of those or one of your own? Toastmaster. You want Toastmaster? Oh. She's now you misled you her. You applauded so very loud for Toastmaster. And not so loud for Toast of the Town. And now she chooses Toastmaster, and you say, uh, <laughs> Make up your mind! <laughs> All right, she says Toastmaster. Let's see if it's up there. May we see the bottom one, please? Uh, toast and coffee is not a bad answer. The next uh, one says, uh, Toastmaster. Uh, Are you see? Yeah. Don't you let her wait till the 500. Don't kiss and wait till the 500. Toaster. What's wrong? We're waiting for the $500, 500 response. You think he's going to be up there? No. Yes. yes. You think he's going to be up there? Yes. Oh, well, why don't you applaud louder yes. than the Toastmaster for it? Go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You say, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. 
Well, now, Karen, you've got $250, and we'll tell you what that translates into right after we tell America about this. Now, the question is, Karen, are you going to play for $250, I mean $2,500, or $5,000? It all depends on the spin of the wheel. Good luck. Grab that peg and give it a pull, and here we go. you're playing for two thousand five hundred dollars that's no small sum nothing to be sneezed at good luck to you ready chuck here it good is luck, sweetheart words to blank take a look at it words to blank i'll show it to charles just to make sure that we understand each other see it words to help him out i can see that glazed look in his eye he needs an answer, but no answers from you, if you please, because it might be a bad one, and she'd say it, and then you'd lead her astray like you did on the other thing there. All right, your job is to match Charles. If you do that, you get $2,500. How do you fill in that blank? Words to remember. Words to remember. That's a good answer. Charles? I'm sorry. I, that's a beautiful answer. I said words to music. Words to music. So hard. Words to live by. That's another good one. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, uh, Karen, you've got $250, and it was a pleasure to meet you and have you here on the match game. Thank you very much. Karen Nobomoto. Here come Kathy Young and Wade Anderson. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Now, let's get acquainted. Wade, please tell us about you. Okay, my name is Wade Anderson. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm out here finishing my master's in student development, and I'm getting married in December. Really? A fellow student? Yes. Good. All right, Kathy? I'm Kathy Young, and I'm from Oceanside, California. <laughs> and I have a ten-and-a-half-year-old son, and I play bingo and poker. <laughs> <laughs> really? Don't worry. Yeah. You can go to Bingo Anonymous and they'll cure you. Of that. I, sometimes I think I should. All right. All right, good luck to both of you. Wade, do you want A or B? I'd like A, please. Yes, sir. Mike said it's strange being married to a health food nut. Every day my wife takes a bath in a tub full of blank. <laughs> See, Mike is married to this girl. Health food nut. Right. Mike said it's strange being married to a health food nut. Every day my wife takes a bath in a tub full of blank. Tub full of yogurt. Yogurt. That's good. Very good. All right. That's not bad. Yogurt. No, yogurt is real good. You ever try that? Yes. That's why I didn't write this that same oh, answer. I see. Yeah. This is better. You should try this. This is really good. Because it massages the skin and everything. I said alfalfa sprouts. Aha. Very good. Yes. That would be That'll, fun. Yes. Yes. Good. Especially if you were not alone. All right. You've done it, huh? Yes. <laughs> Wasn't it fun? Yes, sir. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Helen, I was only kidding. Uh, no, I said you took a bath in a, in a tub of uh, uh, brewer's yeast. Brewer's <laughs> yeast, yes. Health food nuts, they do indeed imbibe in a lot of brewer's yeast, oh, rich in the all. B complex vitamins. Carrot juice. Uh, another goodie. <laughs> Carrot juice. Have your navel full of vitamin A. <laughs> Every day, my wife takes a bath in a tub full of what? Well, my sister is a health food nut, and yep. she adds skim milk to her bathtub. Does she really? For real. No She's kidding. kooky. What does it do for her? It's good for her skin. Really? Mm -hmm. You have very pretty skin. Do you bathe in anything special? Sea salt. Sea salt? Mm hmm Doesn't that sting your eyes? No, just eyes? a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, McLean. Skim milk in the bathtub, also sports fans will allow for a very thin ring. All right. <laughs> <laughs> However, comma, my answer was trail mix. Trail mix! <laughs> that would hurt. That would be very painful. Well, you pick up a lot of strange stuff on the trail, so you don't know what you're eating. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, Edie, what have you got there? Well, you know, like brown rice and stuff like that are really important for your diet. Right. It gives you a lot but, of energy, right. 
But it gives you a lot of energy. And you're like your karma gets really good if you like get the bacillus growing all over you with yogurt. Yogurt! Oh, yeah. All right. Ready, Kathy? Ready. Here's your first shot at it. Now, you've all heard the, the song. It's a fairly old song for me and my gal, remember? Sure. Sure. Well, Farmer Brown sings a different song. It's called For Me and My Blank. Farmer Brown. <laughs> Kathy, you ready? Here we go. You've heard the song for me and my gal? Uh, well, Farmer Brown sings a different song. It's called For Me and My Blank. For Me and My Cow. Me and My Cow. I love my cow. What do you say? Now, I hope that's not a reflection on the farmer. Me and my cow? Cow. Wait till the ERA hears about that, boy. That's incredible. I said cow. You said it. And for Kathy, so score tied at the moment. Brett? The bells are ringing for me and my cow. All right. Cow. Oh, he's really on a roll. He's got the whole upper tier. Farmer Brown sings a different song. It's called For Me and My... Cow. Wow. Four. Kathy has four. What do you say? Bells are ringing for me and my goat. <laughs> ah. Now, goats are very friendly. They make wonderful pets. You can... <laughs> Thank you, John. All right. What do you say there? <laughs> This show is utterly ridiculous. A cow. All right. All right, for Kathy in the first round. Amazing. Five to one to score. You got some catching up to do. We'll see if you do it after this. And here again, the star of our show, Gene Raver. Okay, John. Let's go. Kathy, you're ahead. You go first. You gotta play with one person. Uh, B, please. I'm the only one that plays. That's right. That's why I said goat, because I want the airtime. <laughs> <laughs> I knew everybody else was going to say cow, so I said goat. There's a sign over there that says stretch. Do you see it? Yeah, right. Okie dokie. <laughs> He's bending your Watch suit. It. What the hell are these things? <laughs> <laughs> and your voice hasn't even changed yet. Yeah. <laughs> How would you uh, respond to this, McLean? Okay. Harry said, yeah. I just went to the world's worst Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. Instead of cookies, yeah. the fortunes were in the blank. <laughs> you have to write it down. Oh, that whole thing? <laughs> no, no, just your answer. Just one word or two words in the blank. Whatever. That's okay. good. Say, hey, she's got a good answer. Right. Why don't you steal that one? That's not a bad answer. Okay, wait a minute. He's trying to come up with a better one. I don't think he can come up with a better one than that. I don't know if I can. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Kathy. Harry said, I just went to the world's worst Chinese restaurant. Instead of cookies, the fortunes were in the blank. The rice. In the rice? Just buried it in the rice, huh? That's really not much of a container. What did you say, sir? I got a big laugh last time, so I figured I'd use it again. <laughs> they were in the goat. <laughs> did you think you of that? You knew I was going to say that. Why did you say that? Oh, you should have said that. Now, Wade, you need four to tie, five to win. Okay. Four. All right, here we go. Everybody plays. Ugly Alfria is so ugly. She's the only woman in the world with varicose blank. Varicose Blanks. Here we go. Ugly Alfria, so ugly, she's the only woman in the world with varicose blanks. Varicose cheeks. Cheeks. All right. That's not bad. What would you say? Thighs? Eyes. Oh. Not Who bad. Who said eyes? 
Raise your hand. Oh, the Dodger fan. All right. A lot of people said eyes. What do yes, you say? Yes, I'm just like a lot of people. I said eyes. Eyes. Got to match everybody else now. Wade? This question doesn't make any sense. That's for starters, and a lot of people have varicose cheeks and varicose eyes. I've never seen anyone with varicose hair. Varicose hair is good, so that means... Kathy wins the game with you. The rest of you hold up your answers, please. Eyelids. Rash, eyelids, lips, and you don't want that. All right, come on down, Kathy. Right there in the blue out of the room, please. Now, Wade, we're going to spin you off here, or you'll be back later for game number two. Okay. Yes. Muss up your hair in the meantime, would you? Listen, while we spin him off, let's spin this message for you. All right. This lady is here for the first time. She's going to have a go at the big money now. The big money super match. You ready for it? I'm ready. All right. We had a bunch of nice, smart people in here like this bunch. <laughs> and said, write down your best answer to this. Jock oh, blank. I've got one for that. All right. Whom do you want to? Um, well, McLean and I did so well last time together. I think I'll take McLean. We did do well, didn't we, dear? Yeah, we did. <laughs> and I thought rather well on the game, too. Yes. <laughs> oh, silly goose. Jock. Can I say strap? Jock strap? Sure. Jock strap. All right, there's one. Charles. Jock Mahoney. Jock Mahoney. Yeah. Right and Ted. I would say Jock E. Jockey. Is that possible? We sure. Jockey, Jock Mahoney, and Jock Strap. Those are the two, uh, three they've given you. You choose one of those or give us one of your own. What is your pleasure? Um, I think I'll go with McLean and say Jock Strap. All right. Ooh. <laughs> think she's right? All right, let's see if we got a Jock Strap up there. May we see the $100 response? Jacques Cousteau. Jacques. <laughs> Never talk about our answers again. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, level with me. Is there anybody in this audience who would have written Cousteau after Jock? <laughs> sure, now you say that. <laughs> oh, boy. Jacques Cousteau. All right, maybe see the next one, please. Jock Ewing. All right, so far, nothing is up there that the audience that. gave you. No, I wouldn't yeah. have said that. Now we go to the last one, your last chance for a jock strap. There it is. Good. All right, you got $500, and we're going to have to delay the denouement until next time because we've just about run out of time. But you'll be back here to see if you're going to play for $5,000 or for $10,000. Right? I'll be here. <laughs> Good. Join us next time for the match game. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Today's contestants will also receive an assortment of Crayola products with everything children need for hours of imaginative play. Fun to create with Crayola. Maintain your furniture's natural beauty with the Guardsman Furniture Polish recommended by manufacturers of fine furniture. Guardsman, the finishing touch for fine furniture. New Carina Motion Chunky tastes better, costs less than the leading competitor. Motion Chunky dog food, better taste, lower price. When you've got anything to six or squeaks, reach for WD-40. Makes things work smoother, last longer. Do it yourself with WD-40. <laughs> A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. This program was edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars. Abe Burrow. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Rosemary Forsyth. Richard Dawson. And from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, Betty White as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 77. And now here's the star of Match Game 77, Gene Raver!
John. Thank you, friend. I greet you. Thank you for joining us. You're going to have a good time today because... The Great Gatsby rides again. Is this a Gatsby suit in your judgment? Yes, sir. Have we That's seen beautiful. that before? Beautiful. No, I think this, we're doing this for the first time. Oh, yeah, I could tell. Adorable. Show them the shoes. I think they've seen the shoes, haven't they? Uh, oh, yes. nice. oh, there they are. Yeah, Fun in the carnival. Well. No, I'm go yes, I'm going to the carnival right after we finish here. I've got the booth on coming. Step right up, folks, oh, and I meet Lois be. Stevenson and Elliot Mangooby. <laughs> now, this lady's our current champion. She's won. $5,600. That's great. She's a grandmother, and uh, she's a very engaging person. We're engaged. <laughs> what are you going to do with your money, Lois? Well, I would like to take a little holiday. Where, do you, where would you like to go? I'd like to go to Hawaii. Okay. <laughs> Eight tickets Thanks. to Hawaii. She's taking the kids with her. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> And now she's, we're just meeting Elliot here for the first time. We welcome you, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, we have never met before, have we? Or we wouldn't have worn the same suit. We got a match anyways. <laughs> oh, man, that is a match. All right. You got the idea, Elliot. Where are you from? Uh, originally from Cairo, Egypt. And I moved here about 13 years ago. Yes. And I now reside in Chatsworth, California. Yeah. Uh, two things. I'll be a graduate student from Cal State at Northridge this June. Yes. And I'm engaged to the most beautiful beautiful girl in the whole wide world. Oh, isn't that nice yeah. and exciting in your life? And she lives in New Jersey. <laughs> oh, that's the bad news. Yeah, really. <laughs> Glad you gave us the good news first. Really. Now, if you're from Cairo, Egypt, does that mean you're an Egyptian? It means I'm also Jewish. <laughs> I'm an Egyptian Jew. They you blanked are. me out of there. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You mean you're not an Arab? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> You like rye bread? Uh, I love rye bread. You're Jewish. Yes. <laughs> and bagels. You do. I had some this very morning, Elliot. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good ones, too. Well, Elliot, good luck to you, Thank sir. You. Now, before we start, we've got to do a little business with America. If you'll stand by and get ready to make your selection, we'll do that business with you, dear friend. Don't rush me. Are you ready, Elliot? Yes, I am. Okay. I'll push this button. You're really from Egypt, I eh? I sure am. Yes. <laughs> And your girlfriend's in Jersey. And she's in Jersey. And you live here in California. And I live here in California. I'm never going to figure that one out there. <laughs> Egypt, eh? Egypt. How do they say A and B in Egypt? Uh, Elif Ubet. Elif Ubet. Did I get it right? Okay. You want Elif or Ubet? I'll take Ubet. <laughs> Ubet. Okay. This is Ubet. Ubet. Oh. Elif Ubet. Carl the Cannibal went to Hollywood and had a huge cannibal meal he ate blank. <laughs> this is a good one. Yeah. Carl the cannibal went to Hollywood and had a huge cannibal meal he ate blank. Oh. Got it? Got it. Uh, Carl? Carl the cannibal. Carl the cannibal. Or any cannibal. Name it. <laughs> it's the cannibal of your choice, eh? But why do I care? You know Sam the cannibal better? Put it down. Why do I care? Carl the cannibal went to Hollywood. And had a huge cannibal I, meal. I, I Two operative words there. Hollywood and cannibal. Got it. Got it? Elliot, are you thinking about it? Yes, I'm thinking about okay. it. Okay. I will stroll in your direction. <laughs> walk this way. Okay. I wouldn't need the talcum powder. <laughs> I have very recently I saw that marvelous Egyptian exhibition of King Tut. And it really, have you seen it? No, I haven't. The gold head and all that? Oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> Listen, Elliot, Carl the Cannibal went to Hollywood and had a huge cannibal meal. He ate blank. He ate... Brett? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Elliot, have you seen this show? Yes, I have. You have? Yes. You have seen the show, you're sure? Very of it. much. Have you been in America very long? Uh, <laughs> Yes. Well, you've been in Hollywood very long. Yes. Okay, we'll find out. I think you'll get the idea. The first round questions are tough. Abe, show him your answer. Well, he ate a cast of thousands. A cast of thousands. The show business answer. Had a huge cannibal meal. He ate... I thought maybe he was going to make the bus fare for the girlfriend to get out here, but not with those... No, dear. Fat, big, enormous... Cannon. Yes. Yeah. See, what, the idea is he ate, he had a huge cannibal meal he ate. Uh, yeah, 
any large person has cannon. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm glad you explained that. Bill, that's, what's his name? Uh, what Conrad. You? Yes, right. He ate the King family. There's a good one. <laughs> You're okay, Chuck. That is a good one. That's another excellent one. That may be the definitive one for all I know. Rosemary Carl the Cannibal went to Hollywood, had a huge cannibal meal. He ate. Ta da da. King Kong. King Kong, another good answer. A lot of good choices here. You probably Except wonder you. where Chuck came up with the definitive answer. He just looked down King and King saw King me right King King King. down. Look down. <laughs> Where'd you get yours? I wrote mine in. Well, whatever that is. Yes. The King family. The King family. Okay. Elliot, you got the idea again. now? Yes. Yes. No, I don't have you. It's zip. You would hear bells ringing if you scored anything over there, Elliot, up there. That's the way we go. Let him hear the bell. He may never hear it, but just ring it for him once. Thank you. That's what you hear when you Where's score. The there you see. Okay. Uh, we'll go to her first rounder right after we do this for you. Hello there. Shall we carry on? Lois, are you ready to carry on? Yes. Okay. Here it is. It's all yours. George said to his son, yeah. he says, I'm taking away your driving privileges. Sure, you were only doing 55, but you were doing it in blank. <laughs> yes. May I just one second? One more time. For all our friends, we now have the English version. <laughs> I did that for Elliot, the Egyptian version. Right. This is the English version. Sure, you were only doing 55, but you were doing it in blank. Who said that? George, George said that to his son. I'm taking away your driving privileges. Sure, you were only doing 55, but you were doing it in blank. Put it. We appreciate your enthusiasm, but don't shout out those answers because they may be rotten answers, you see? And very you often they are. And yes. Mm -hmm. You are not totally infallible. Are you having difficulty? Yes. I'm sorry I can't help you, my dear. So am I. Yes, it's terribly sorry. I'm sure you're only doing 55, but you were doing it in blank. You're doing it in blank. You must watch the show more often, too. Have you met Elliot here, who never watches there? Okay, Lois, you ready? All right. George said to his son, I'm taking away your driving privileges. Sure, you're only doing 55, but you were doing it in blank. My car. My car. My car. You want to hear my second guess? Yeah, what is your second guess? Reverse. Reverse would have been terrific. I'm a second guesser. Second question here. Yes. Her, her second her, answer was terrific. Uh, she her, said you were doing yeah. it in reverse. Uh, uh, her vacation, she should go to Egypt. That's right. <laughs> what did you say, I said the most conventional thing in a parking lot. Very good. That's another good one. What do you say? I said you were, she was doing it in the driveway. There's a terrific one. Yeah. Chuck? The oncoming lane. The oncoming lane. That, oh, there's some marvelous possibilities here. Everyone except yours, Lois. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, my dear? Sure, you were doing only 55, but you were doing it in... There are really some marvelous possibilities. Yes. They really so were. So far, we've had three good ones. But from here yep. on out... <laughs> it's an, it's another machine gun trick. It is. Meters. Doing Just 50, you were doing it in booming, meters. Do something. Yeah, Just 55 so meters. Yeah. Well, remember, she had difficulty. She had a little time, a difficult time thinking up one. Uh, Richard, what do you offer? Psychiatric help. <laughs> <laughs> Just come in and lie down on the couch. Right Reverse. Here. Reverse is the answer. That's probably the best answer. Yes, no doubt a smart lady like you would come up with a terrific answer. Definitive answer. Right. In the garage. Hey, that's a good one. Excellent. So that's the way it goes. And round one question, she really saved you. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, Elliot, you may have again. What is it? Uh, B for Elliot. <laughs> oh, B for Elliot. <laughs> no wonder we're losing a war. <laughs> B for Elliot. B for Elliot. We could have him exported to back to Egypt, couldn't we? Then? Call the immigration department here. He's so cheerful. Do you think he owns oil? <laughs> <laughs> here it is. Murray's Mexican restaurant has two rooms. You eat your dinner in the main room and you spend the rest of the evening in the blank room. <laughs> Murray's Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Go for it, Abe. Why not that? All right. Did you hear that, Elliot? Yes, I did. Murray's Mexican Restaurant. 
think about that. Okay, put them in the slot there, and away we go. <laughs> Isn't show business great? Oh, it really is. is America. Yeah. Got, what do you do for your student? I'm a student at Cal State in Northridge. Oh, that's right. That's looking for a job. <laughs> looking for a job, yes. And you're engaged in... Back east. Yeah. Yes. When she hears your answer, she oh, may... Uh, <laughs> Maybe all out there. You ready? Okay, here we go. Murray's Mexican Restaurant has two rooms, Elliot. Yes. Two rooms. Eat your dinner in the main room. You spend the rest of the evening in the blank room. The definitive, definitive answer: bathroom. There with you. <laughs> all right. What do you say to that, Abe? By George, I was brilliant. There it is. What's the Elliot? Okay. Now, for Elliot, B for Elliot, the Touriste Grande the room. The Touriste Grande room. See, yeah. I'm waiting. They didn't give me the buzzer. They knew I had other answers back here. It's called, that it's called because I do Mexican accent, actually, it's bathroom. It's bathroom. <laughs> okay. You think I should pick in English? <laughs> Okay. Yes, we just lost Mexico City. Hello, it's very funny. Because I was in a Mexican restaurant once and they had muchacho machachos on the, on the different bathrooms. Right. But right. After I wrote it, I realized it wasn't that word at all. It was caballeros. But it was too late to change. Damas y caballeros, sí. Si, lo entiendo. Now, Rosemary. They never do. Eat your dinner in the main room, spend the rest of the evening in the blank room. I think I'm getting back in the swing of things. Really? Oh! You're up to four, Elliot. El Jano is what he's seeking. Ah, yes. Show him to the men's room. Rest room all. Rest room all. Same thing. You now, just said it yourself. You what? see, you said El Jano. El Jano. But being a Mexican restaurant, it was the Juan room. The Juan room. <laughs> Oh, he's happy. Now, nah, you got your work cut out for you. We'll see how Lois does right after we see about this. Here we go. You ready, Lois? Yes. You know what you have to do? Got to yes. match all six, don't you? Yes, sir. And that'll achieve a tie for her. Wanda has unusual grooming. She doesn't shave the hair on her legs. Instead, she blanks it. <laughs> Unusual grooming. She doesn't shave the hair on her legs. Are you implying that she's Instead, very neat? Instead, she blanks it. Well, you may imply anything you think Lois will there imply. There are no hints to, as to what her personality traits might no. be. Has on you, she doesn't shave the hair on all. Oh. Okay. All right. That's good. You like that answer, yeah. darling? All right. all right. That's very good. I hate this pen. Would you like another one? Yes, well, show me another, another pen for Brett, please. Will you, hon? Oh, wait till I put this Thank in. you. They will. That they don't have, they have you have to turn in your old pen. Thank you. Part of it. <laughs> All right, you. here we go. Lois, you ready? Yes. Now, Wanda has unusual grooming. She doesn't shave the hair on her legs. Instead, she blanks it. Pulls it. Pulls Plucks it right it. out. Plucks it right out. All right. That must be a painful Ooh. process. Yes. <laughs> Abe, she says she plucks it out. What do you say? I was thinking that she used a blowtorch. Aha! Uh -huh. But I didn't say that. You didn't. What I did just you said the simple thing. She, she bleaches, bleaches it. it. So that means Elliot Mangubi wins the game. What the rest of you have? Okay, she pulls it out. There it is. Come on, boy. Don't go away now. Oh. Lois. It's a pleasure to meet a charming grandmother like you. We've got Thank you. Five thousand six hundred dollars for Lois Stevenson. Goodbye, my dear. Okay. Here we are. Do we do, do we really match? Uh, let me take a look at it in the monitor. Oh yeah, we are in the same there. Right. I like my tie better than I like your tie. It's okay. Now listen, you got a chance to win a lot of money here, Elliot. Buy another ticket back to Egypt there. You could buy Egypt if you want enough money here. We polled a studio audience not too long ago in this very room, and we got their best response to this. Blank Wolf, W-O-L-F. Now, the answer that they gave us most frequently will reward you with $500 if you match it. 
If you happen to match their second most popular matcher, you get $250. And then it's $100 for you for matching the third most popular answer. And three of the six celebrities are permitted to help by suggesting answers. Richard? Werewolf. 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 Herewolf. Herewolf. Brett. Brett. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? I am. And Charles. What do you say, Chuck? I got two, I don't know. No oh, doubt. Oh, that's nice. Oh, th oh, those are both excellent. Aren't they excellent? Yes. yes. All right, I'll go with the shortest one. Cry Wolf. Cry Wolf is a good one. Now, you got three good ones there. Big Bad Wolf, Cry Wolf, and Werewolf. Now, Elliot, it's your choice here and your decision to choose one of those or think up one of your own and give us that one. I shall pick Richard's answer, Werewolf. What was that? Werewolf. <laughs> Werewolf. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Elliot. Elliot. May I ask you a question? I don't mean to be personal. You, you sure may. You don't use narcotics, do you? <laughs> Stand on the blue dot. <laughs> From Egypt, eh? From Egypt. <laughs> okay, all right. So he wants a werewolf. werewolf. <laughs> Let's see if we got a werewolf under the $100 response. Peter and the, not there. Let's see if we've got a werewolf under the $250 response. The big bad wolf. This is the last chance. Let's see if we've got a werewolf under the $500 response. No, no, I'm not he sure of the spelling, but I don't think that's it, is it? Well, is that it? Of course it is. Hold on now. According to our distinguished Roger, he spells it that way. <laughs> yeah, but Roger... I know, but let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Roger can spell everything but words. <laughs> okay, listen, you've won the $500. You now have a total of 600 Elliot. That's almost plain fair back to Cairo. But uh, you got another shot here because we're going to play for 10 times the 500 or $5,000 now. And we'll be glad to give you the money if you'll match one of our celebrities exactly. Uh, Richard? Okay, Richard, you're on. Where? Good luck to you, Elliot. Get your ESP flowing over to Richard Dawson. See if you can come up with the same answer. Here it is. Blank secretary. Blank secretary. Blank secretary. Okay, he's finished, Elliot. Give us an answer that matches his. We give you $5,000. Isn't that easy? Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> oh, isn't it? Easier than living in Cairo, isn't it there? <laughs> Blank secretary, what do you say to that? Legal. Legal secretary? <laughs> Legal secretary. Legal secretary. Legal secretary. That's right. Okay. That means a secretary that's married. <laughs> What did you say to that, Richard? I didn't say legal. <laughs> Private secretary. Private secretary. Now, may I give you a little tip here, Elliot? Well, you, you go for the least common denominator here. I think there are far more private secretaries in the world than there would be legal secretaries. And therefore, I, I, what a, listen, you won $600. What am I giving you advice for? It's your money. Do anything you want with it. It's your life. Listen, here's a little message for you. Hurry right back after that. I'll get a message. <laughs> Will you all come back next time? No. Yes, yes you will. <laughs> I will. You will? Where? Sure. We will have a real live a werewolf here on the show to greet you, one and all. Werewolf. Let's see. Any plugs to be done here? Anybody have anything they want to say? Speak now, forever afterwards, hold your peace. No? All right. I came out here to do the match game. You did? You made a special trip. I wanted to plug the match game. They told me plug the match game. I Thanks think. very much, Abe. You're a splendid fellow. Join us next time for Match Game 77. I'm Gene Rayburn. Tally and home. the stars from Vegas, Bart Braverman, Brett Summers, 
Charles Nelson Riley, Rita Moreno, Bill Bailey, and Patty North as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rayburn. Really? He yeah. says I look better in gray than I do in navy blue. She I says like I look better in navy blue. In All navy right. Blue I think you meant your hair. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you think I look better in gray, applaud. <laughs> okay, okay. You're going to look better in blue, applaud. Yeah. Okay. Those are my people. If you think you look better naked, applaud. Huh? <laughs> okay. You asked for it. That's as far as I go. That's Hello what the there. Bishop said to the actress. Do you remember these two people? <laughs> remember these two people? Ron Ship is a member of the LAPD who works in West Los Angeles. That's right, but I still have a job. You still have a job, yeah. <laughs> because why do you say that? Because oh, one of my my answers. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, we'll forget. We won't remind him of that. Then. Okay. <laughs> and Marilyn Mason here has a husband who is in the building contracting business, right. builds houses. That's correct. And uh, they have a child who is eight months old. That's right. Whose name is? Michelle. Michelle. Mm -hmm. All right, if you're ready to play, what do we do here? <laughs> oh, we go to round two because nothing happened in round right. one. Well, a lot of things happened, but you weren't here to see them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now who goes first? Score is tied. Ron went first last time. So, Marilyn, you go first this time, A or B? B, please. B it is. Okay. Ha, 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 ha. You weren't watching, were you? Uh, <laughs> what is that? Well, that's a blue one. Oh, thank you very much. Get the right. whole kitten caboodle out of here, baby. Right. Oh, kitten caboodle. Now, wait a minute. Oh. How do I look in gray? Very butch. <laughs> <laughs> she looks okay to me. <laughs> she looks okay to you. <laughs> right, you, you look wonderful. Thank a you. touch of orange. The old thank tiger you. for Princeton there. Let's wear all of your clothes next show. Yeah, let's get them all out I've here. I've got that figured already, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fat Freddy is so fat! How fat is the little guy? I'm sorry, you're fired. <laughs> Get him out of here. Fat Freddy is so fat. How fat is he? Okay. <laughs> he's so fat, he's the only man in the world to ever get a ticket for Jay blanking. <laughs> hey, what's it say in the newspaper? Unbelievable, North. No, this is South Dakota, just came in. Yeah. 742-874 gray, 843-022 for blue, and the plain pipe clothes rack poles are open another hour and a half. Okay. That <laughs> laid there like those outfits. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. During, wait a minute, during the... No, 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 I didn't need to dress it. Uh, I didn't need to dress it. No, I guess we're going to wait for the commercial. <laughs> because you could have an accident and hurt yourself. Oh, real bad. You're ready. <laughs> Who's ready here? <clears throat> uh, you. Fat Freddy's so fat, he's the only man in the world to ever get a ticket for Jay blanking. Waddling. Jay waddling. She said Jay waddling. You know, you're an ad for a clothing store. What? what? With all those clothes, what are you doing? Somebody just turned turn on. It's going to be hard to explain. <laughs> Also hard to just say. trying to sell some. That's right. I may get something. I cash clothes. Remember that guy who used to go around right. on cash clothes? Well, you get $10 for both. I'm sorry. Plus no, they're worth a lot more than that. We're waiting for Bart Braverman's response oh. is what we're doing. Oh. I was going to say waddling, too. You were going to say that? No, it's an unusual word, isn't it? I'm yeah, but I had it in my mind. I didn't say it. I said rolling. Oh, Jay rolling. Jay rolling. <laughs> Fat guy. You know? yeah. think rolling and waddling are both good. Um, I, do you like waddling? Yes. Charles liked it, too, so that's why I took it. Waddling. Ah! 
Here's the way it is, folks. It's very difficult when you've written an answer that's especially good, you think. Then the person who precedes you says that answer. Then you've got to be especially creative I'm and clever, as now. Charles <laughs> is, and he is going to say something so funny you're going to fall out of your seat now. No, your pants will fall down. <laughs> Never cross a Western woman. <laughs> Jay Wilder. Jay Wilder. Are you ready, Miss Moreno? Oh, you won't believe this. I won't. It's so bad. It is bad? I couldn't think of anything. You couldn't think? I don't want to show you. Oh, you have to show. Oh, I have to? Okay. Or you give the money back. <laughs> All right, Jay eating. <laughs> Fat people would eat a lot. I like that. that. Yeah. I said it was bad. The reason I'm holding they the clothes on in front of me like this what? is because... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Well, I started to uh, remove no, I and there's certain thing there. I unzipped, yes. you see, so oh. I can't. All right, Bill, what do you got? Having trouble? We need some help, sweetheart? No, no. Uh, can I answer this after you zip up your fly? No, 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 go right ahead. Right. I put Jay Bulging, whatever that means. Jay Bulging. Jay Bulging, remember he worked yeah. for the uh, William Chicken Morris free. Agency. That's Jay right. <laughs> Not a very good agent. He joined the rest of them. Okay, <laughs> Patty. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Yet? No commercials yeah. yet, huh? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Tune in, folks. Okay. This is the first no, I, time I, I, I a see. man will flash on network television. No, no. <laughs> the doctor said, I just gave my patient a heart transplant using the heart of a cow. Yo. There's only one side effect. The patient has an uncontrollable urge to blank. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> okay. Doctor said I just gave my patient a heart transplant using the heart of a cow. There's only one side effect. The patient has an uncontrollable urge to moo. To moo. Move. Okay. That's a chew is cud. <laughs> chew is cud. That's good. Anything a cow does is okay. Now uh, cool it. Go ahead. Let's see how a Western woman answers a question like this. I said that this old cow was going to moo. Oh. How does a typical sophisticated Easterner answer it? Never crossing a Western woman. I have respect for you, the way you handle that farm, madam. You are Thank fabulous. You. I also said moo, Gene. There you go. What do you say? Well, lost ladies from uh, the west of Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> thought we all saw she say moo. Moo. Leave her on. Start talking. Moo. Okay. Hey, I, I, I didn't get that question. I said either uh, eat grass or smoke it, whatever you're covering. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, if you don't say moo, this game's going to end in a tie. What do you say to that? Moo. Moo. Sir. Now, this is the first game. You'll be back later to play the second game. We're going to spin you off and spin a message for America. And see you later there. Watch this if you would, please. I like a casual look, baby. You look like Frank Sinatra. Oh, hello. Oh, there we are. There we are. Didn't have time to do the tie, but it is California. You and love I mean... a tie. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. You ready? I am ready. Okay, for what? Ready for money. <laughs> oh, yeah. The big money is coming up here, Ron. We pulled a studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank dime. Oh. If you give us the answer they wrote down most often, you get $500. For matching the second most popular answer, $250. For matching the third, $100. Three of the six stars can help. Choose the ones who have a reasonable look of intelligence about them. A big part. Come up and see me some dime. <laughs> All right. How about uh, nickel and dime? Nickel and Nickel dime. And dime. Uh, how about one thin dime? <laughs> Brother, can you spare a dime? Yes. Brother, can you spare a dime? Nickel and dime and one thin dime are the three they've given you. You can choose one of those or think up one of your own. What would you like to do? I think I'm going to go with Brit. Thin oh. dime. One thin dime is the one that Brett gave you. Is that what you want? Okay, that's what he wants. One thin dime. 
I think they I don't know. Uh, nickel and dime sounds a little but more... But I didn't know what dime it was. Is that I didn't know what dime it was, yes. Five and dime. Five and dime. Five and dime. Five and dime. Who thought of that? I did. Dime after dime. Dick thought of that? I did, too. Very good. Give him a buck. Give him a buck. Give him a fiver. What the hell? Give him a buck there. Okay. Thank you very much, Dick. All right. Let's go down at the bottom and reveal a $100 number and see what we've got there. Brother, can you spare a dime? I thought that'd be up there a little bit higher. It's not, though. May we see the next one, please? One thin dime. What do you think? Five and dime? You think Dick is right? Yeah. All right. Slide the big one. Nickel and dime. You were wrong. Give him the, give him the dollar. Damn, uh, Johnny Olson, get the dollar back. He was wrong. <laughs> I'm only kidding there. Okay, you've got $250. Means the least you'll play for is 10 times that amount or $2,500. Step up there and see if you can double your money and play for $5,000. Okay, Good luck. We'll all roll for a double. Here we go. Come on, Ron. Double it up, baby. <laughs> Sorry, it did not make one complete revolution. Yeah. Now, you sure you're on the LAPD? Nope. I mean, how the hell could you pull your gun out of your holster if you can't make I'd it go around once? I'd be very careful if I were you, yeah. Mr. Raven. Yeah. You live in West All right, L.A. go. There you go. Hey. Yay, yeah, baby. Sure, there you go. Oh. All right, you're playing for $2,500 with Patty Deutsch, and good luck to you. Go, Patty, go, Here Patty. Here it is. Loss of blank. That's L-O-S-S -S of blank. Loss of blank. All right, Ron. If you give us the answer that Patty has written on that card and put in the slot, we give you $2,500. What do you say to that? Loss of memory? Loss of memory. Loss of memory. He said loss of memory. There was one other answer that came to my mind, that one that he said, and this other one that's in my head. Uh, there are two good answers. And I know there. another one. You know another one. Well, we'll find out about that in a minute. What do you say? Can, can he play? Yeah. What do you say? Well, I said I thought of loss of innocence. Loss of innocence. Oh. That's an interesting I one. I didn't think of that one. You didn't think of that no. one. I, I hope you saw a loss of memory really there, Patty. No, I said loss of blood. Loss of blood. <laughs> Never mind. We're going to have another shot. I thought shot loss of luck. Oh, Never mind. Now, wait, a loss of blood is that one. That woman is a mother. Don't boo her. Loss of life loss is another good one. Yeah. A couple of good choices here. Ron has $250. He's going to play another game with Marilyn Mason returning for the second time, the final game. And here we go. All right. Well, welcome back, Marilyn. Good to start, Sean. There you go. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. You each have... Uh, did you win any... No, that was the first game. What's wrong with me? This... <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn, you may have A or B. I am going to try B again, please. All right. B, again. B says, Weird Willie, the cowboy, is really weird. How weird is he? Not only does he have spurs on his boots, mm -mm. he has spurs on his blank. <laughs> Ready, man? All right. Ready, read it. Yes! Just write it Weird Willie, the cowboy, is really that. weird. Not only do he have spurs on his boots, he has spurs on his blank. Hands. Hands. Blank. Hands. Yeah. No, that hands. makes sense. That she makes said sense. hands. What would you say? <laughs> 84 different answers. What do you say? He's so crazy. He has spurs on his hat. <laughs> <laughs> and win, as I do believe. The program's going to be different tonight. What? There we go. <laughs> Okay, hands is oh, what, uh, yeah. the answer that Marilyn gave. What do you say, Brett? Sit down, dear. The bleeding will stop in a few minutes, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Loss of blood and memory. <laughs> That's right. Uh, no, honey, this cat was heavy into spurs. He had spurs on his spurs. <laughs> you don't like that answer? You can't win them all. Haven't when a Western out. woman bites the dust again, I said bun. Bun. <laughs> I love that. Jingle, jingle, jingle. And you certainly have. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Hands is the answer that Marilyn gave. Not only has spurs on his boots, he has spurs on his... He's a different kind of cowboy. His ears. 
His ears. Mm. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> Little oh. delicate diamond spurs. See, there are earrings in this. Yeah, place. earrings. Right. Okay. Mine isn't any better. Yeah. My... His spurs on his horse, which is kind spurs of... Spurs on his horse. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Um, that's enough. Got, you got enough vitamins for today. Okay, Patty. <laughs> spurs on his wife. Spurs on his wife. Spurs on his boots. He has spurs on his wife. That's interesting. Okay. Well, that's our Spurs jokes. <sighs> you, get, you get ready for an answer now. Getting ready. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can you can come up with an answer even before we ask a question if you'd like. <laughs> okay. The way it's been going here <laughs> wouldn't make no difference. Oh, Any policemen do. Hey, I got a little message for you. Watch this. <laughs> now, as we move from lovely Bart Braverman back to the game, we have this for Ron Chip. Hey, did you hear that King Kong got thrown out of the land of Oz? No, no King Kong. Yeah, it happened after he tried to blank a bunch of munchkins. <laughs> it happened in Monterey. Come on. <laughs> oh, that's, they're wearing narrower lapels, John. I'm, I'm going to get the scissors and cut those lapels off. <laughs> Ready. Ready. Who's got the question? Are you missing something? Did you realize that you've left it somewhere? I left it right here. You're ready. Everybody <laughs> ready. <laughs> okay, run right ship. Did you hear that King Kong got thrown out of the land of Oz? It happened after he tried to blank a bunch of munchkins. Tried to eat. Tried to eat a bunch of munchkins. <laughs> okay, Bart. He certainly did. Eat. Did, did Ron say eat? I assume by that little. Yeah, he said eat. Sure. Eat a bunch of bunches. I said put sugar and milk on and eat. Put sugar and milk on and eat. A bunch of Hmm. Okay. Hello, darling. Get me out of this. <laughs> Save her again. If only I could get her out of this. Yeah. Out of the building, into that car, and up Beverly Drive. Yeah. <laughs> eat. Eat it. Is. Run. What do you got for old Ron? Munch. Munch Which a bunch of munch kids. Right. That's another one. Say her deep. Eat her munch. Close. Monkey around with. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Bill. That's funny, but who cares? Oh, Bill, you're lovely. We're going to miss you. Okay. What did he Patty? say? Oh, good, good. Saute. Saute. That's it. Yeah, but no, saute no, is not eating. All right, so there's round one. And uh, Ron has four. And since uh, you're ahead, we're going to ask you to go first, Ron. You can have A or B. I'm going to take A. A, it is two people go play. Go baby. <laughs> Guess. The only guy, am I the only kid? Yeah. Right. No. Yeah, Dr. Head, you. Too much pair. To... Two losers oh, sitting wow. next to each other <laughs> are the only ones. Thank Here you. Here it is. Weak William uh -huh. is the world's worst basketball player. Uh -huh. He couldn't even dunk a blank. You know, when the guy takes the ball with one hand and jumps way up and puts it right in there, that's called dunking the basketball. You know. I did. Well, there's I didn't know some I people who did things on this show every time we do. Weak William is the world's Iver worst basketball player. He couldn't even Sir, dunk a blank. A golf ball? Ball. How did you pass the police test? <laughs> he said a golf ball. That was hard. <laughs> he surprised golf the hell out of everybody. Jesus. All right, Bill, show and tell. He said a golf ball. Sorry about a Dunkin' Donut job. <laughs> donut! Donut! Yeah, but you know something? That's a very brilliant answer, golf ball. Golf yeah. ball is good, but... Uh, no, think about, about it. it. Think, think about it. Think about it. I owe for a ticket to you. He couldn't even dunk a blank. There <laughs> All right, now he's got four, and Marilyn, when we get back from this commercial message, that means you'll need four to tie or five to win. Watch this, if you please. Thank you very much. Ask Bart, what is the name of the character he plays in Vegas? And he says, Binzer. And I says, is that his first name or last name? He says, I don't know. There, there is no other name for the, those of you who are Vegas aficionados. There is no other name. For they the call you Binzer. Sometimes they call me the Bins. The Bins. Yes. Yeah. You know how you go down to... to
too fast in the water, sometimes you get the bins. Oh. Uh -huh. Say good night, Bart. Good night, Bart. Okay, I'm Gene Rayburn. Join us next time for Match Game. Goodbye. <laughs> Some of our contestants will receive Anorex's Model 240D slide protector, comes with Ford style handset control, Superbike Ford's halogen lamp system, and computer designed optics for pinpoint images from Anorex. And Quasel presents this hand blown crystal lamp from the Satin Lace Collection, designed to add beauty and walk to your home exclusively by Quasel Lighting. And from ASCO, simple picture taking in the disc format. The Glass F28 lens, motorized film advance, electronic flash from ASCO. And a supply of quality automotive chemicals from the marketers of popular Quaker State motor oils. You'll be staying on the road with Quaker State. And Cup of Noodles is the soup you enjoy right from its own cup. Add hot water and it's ready in three minutes. Cup of Noodles from Nissan Foods. You'll love it. This program was edited for broadcast. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game. A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Get ready to match the stars. Dick Martin. Brett Summer. Charles Nelson Ryder. Vicki Lawrence. Richard Dawson. And Betty White, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 78. And now, here's the star of Match Game 78, Gene Raver. Have I told you about my trip to mainland China where you can buy silk brocade very inexpensively? And you want to food, All right. <laughs> you may ride. That's called kowtowing. Literally, kowtowing. Cow what? what? Yeah, kowtowing. It, it originated in China when they paid him. But this is a hunk of silk brocade that Alex Gewurz, a tailor here at CBS, made into a, what I think is a very handsome waistcoat. Don't you think so? Yeah. Thank you very much for saying so. You You're staring in disbelief. I'm going to wear this. I don't care what you say. Oh, well, you can beautiful. wear it anywhere if I you've got the guts. At 9 o'clock in the morning, you're so dressy. <laughs> Well, I didn't have a black four in hand. All I found was this bow tie, and that makes it a little... It's, uh, I'm a little overdressed, but it's all right. I'll take the tie off later. Are you ready, ladies? That's hardly the word for what you're yeah. dressed like. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a go at it? Where are we here? In the middle of round one, right? And neither one of you scored yet. It's zero to zero. Now you must get busy, right? Okay, we'll do that right after we do this. I'm ready if you are. Okay, here's the last round. Susie Jacopuzzi. B, please. B. That's a nice sound to that. Yes. Susie Jacopuzzi. Sally said, I had a terrible nightmare. I dreamed I ate a giant fur ball. When I woke up, I discovered I'd swallowed my blank. <laughs> yes. Right. That's the idea. <laughs> Betty's going to love this one. Yes. Yeah, you're going to like this one. <laughs> Susie Jacopuzzi. Okay, Charles is finished. Sally said I had a terrible nightmare. I dreamed I ate a giant fur ball. When I woke up, I discovered I had swallowed my blank. My rabbit. Rabbit? Rabbit. Yeah. Is that a common household furry pet yeah. that one would find in any household? <laughs> well, I think your championship is safe, Patty. All right, Dick. No, I said pussy cat. Right. I said my new puppy. The new puppy. 
<laughs> that furry dog. That's gonna take <laughs> Betty off. I yeah. Hate <laughs> I figured that would really make her cranky. I said kitty. Kitty, okay. Anything you say. Cat seems to be the response, Susie. Vicky? Kitty cat. You have a kitty cat. Yeah, no, I don't. But no, you don't. Do you have a dog? Yes. You do? What Several. Kind? What? Mutts. Really? Mutts. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Well, I, it's kind of boring, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm an animal lover, too. I yes, you? according to your police blotter in Philadelphia, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> cat is coming up here quite frequently, Susie. All right, show us your cat. When Dick Martin heard the answer, he said it was just a hair off. No, yeah. it's a cat. <laughs> All right, now, Patty, you're in the catbird seat, as they say. All you need is one to win. Did you hear about the mad scientist that crossed Dean Martin with a fly? No. Would you like to hear about him? Let me tell you, this scientist, now he's got a blank fly. <laughs> Cross Dean Martin with a fly. Now he's got a blank fly. Bravo, bravo. I finished him. You finished. Finish. Patty Wright. Did you hear about the mad scientist that crossed Dean Martin with a fly? Now he's got a blank fly. Drunk. A drunk fly. Drunk fly. One drunk is all you need. Championship not quite as safe as hope. <laughs> yes. Uh, we were thinking of something uh, that, well, well, you'll find out in a second yes, or so. Well, I thought of drunk. Drunk. So that wins drunk the game. Fly. What the rest of you Did anybody say bar fly? Bar fly. Everybody else said bar fly. <laughs> he had five bar flies and one drunk fly. Go up there and give him a kiss. He saved your blank. <laughs> saved your championship. Well, listen, Susie, it hadn't been a total loss because we're going to send you a lot of gifts. We're going to send you a jar full of live flies there. And cats. And cats, too. Susie Jacopuzzi, ladies and gentlemen. Now, got another shot at it here, Patty. Let's see how you do this time. We'll see if you get to the big money. We pulled the studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Ricky Blank. Remember, $500 for matching the most popular answer. For their second most popular, you get $250, and $100 for matching the third most popular. What do you say over there? I'm going to go with Richard. Richard. Ricky Nelson. Ricky Nelson. Uh, Betty? Oh, uh, Ricky. Uh, Ricky Ricardo. Ricky Ricardo. And Brett. I knew she was going to do that. Ricky, Ricky, Ticky. oh, Ricky Ticky, who? <laughs> Ricky Ticky Tavy. I knew something would come. Ricky Ticky Tavy. Ricky Ticky Tavy. Ricky Ticky Tavy. Oh yes, indeed, of course. Yeah, the Kipling the Cobra uh, right, right on the Nern. Ricky Ticky Tavy. Ricky Nelson and Ricky Ricardo are the three. You have a choice now of one of those or one of your own. Ricky Nelson. You want Ricky Nelson? All right, let's find out if Nelson is up there. May we see the $100 number? Ricky Ticky Tavy, yeah, there it yeah. is. The it's up there, all right. May we see the $250 response, please? Ricky Ricardo. I think it's a good omen for you. I think you picked a winner. <clears throat> all right, let's slide the big one. Yes, congratulations. Now, you pick up another $500, you're over 1000 you have an even $1,200. More important than that, you're going to play for 10 times that amount, or $5,000. You've got to pick on one right now. Richard. Okay, good luck to you, Patty Wright. Here it is, worth $5,000. It says, Department of Blank. Department of Blank. Okay, Patty Wright, give us the answer that Richard has written on the card. We'll give you the $5,000. Department of Unemployment. I can't think of anything. Department of Unemployment. You have a hard time up here. You're I good know. over there. Over here, you kind of come unglued here. What did you say to that, Richard? She says Department of Unemployment. Water and Power. Water and Power, yes. Yeah, Department, Department of Water. Yeah, that's very big out here, because they supply water and electricity and all that. Patty, you keep improving yourself. You got $1,200, and you'll be another player later. Right now, we've got this for you. 
Hello. Hello there. Let's all welcome Rick Richardson. Yay, Rick. What do you say, Rick? How you doing, Gene? You ready? I'm ready. Where are you from, Rick? I'm from Wendell, North Carolina, originally. Yeah. I'm, and out, you here, I'm out here working now. Yeah. I work for a large manufacturing uh, corporation. Yeah. Uh, administration specialist. Uh, I play a lot of tennis. Yeah. And I hope I have a lot of fun today and hopefully I can win something. You're going to have a good time. <laughs> Nice threads. Oh, yeah. oh thank you. Yes, sir. No, no, certainly not. You're well coordinated there. Well, good luck to both of you. Let's begin by asking Rick to make a decision about A or B. Okay, I'll take A. A it is. You got A? Joe said, it's very strange having R2-D2 for a neighbor. Today, he came over to my kitchen and asked my blank for a date. Now you must know who R2... You know who R2-D2 is? Have you seen Star Wars? <laughs> it's a robot in Star oh, Wars. Okay. R2-D2, a R2 robot in Star Wars. Very strange having R2-D2 as a neighbor. Today he came over to my kitchen and asked my blank for a date. Bing. Thank you. Doesn't Thank he you. look cute? We're going to have a swell time, and you can keep the vest on. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and my black socks. Yes. Well, you always keep and your black man. socks on. <laughs> Rick, Joe said, it's very strange having R2-D2 as a neighbor. For a neighbor. Today, he came over to my kitchen and asked my blank for a date. My refrigerator? Very good. Very good answer, I think. Refrigerator ought to work. Actually, yeah. the refrigerator is much too tall for R2-D2. Oh, really? So he asked the trash compactor. Oh, the compactor, yes. Yeah. He had a crush on him. <laughs> what was that, Betty? He had a crush on him. He had a crush on him. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> You've been married to what's-his-name so long, you're starting to do his jokes now, aren't you? She just couldn't resist it. She's <laughs> blushing. <laughs> well, I thought the trash compactor was built in, but the washing machine, I felt, would be nice and uh -huh. right in size yes, and all right. like that. It had a clean relationship. I went it? with my friend, our deck, garbage compactor. Garbage compactor, okay. So we got a couple of those. One washing machine. What would you like to throw in here, Vicky? Uh, a trash compactor. Do we win something? You and Dick? <laughs> yes. You're going to have a dinner together in the green room. Uh, <laughs> side by side. Shrimp. Yes. Now, we're looking for a refrigerator, no, Richard. Trash compactor is a good date, but if you want to have a wild time, you go with the blender. The blender. Oh. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Say no more. He was more interested in a hot date. He went with the toaster. Aha! I got the point. So, Rick, there you are. Now, Patty, let's see what we've got for you. Ralph said, I knew the honeymoon was over when my wife started using our marriage license as a blank. <laughs> That's when the honeymoon is over. You know my marriage? Yeah. The honeymoon is over. My... Well, I've started using the marriage license as a blank. Round one, just anything that well, comes here. I'm just trying to think of something, dear yeah. ducks. Patty's trying to think of something, too. That's it. Yeah, using our marriage license as a blank. All right. <laughs> You got one of equal difficulty to his. And here we go. Ready, Chuck? Yo! Okay, buddy. Ralph said I knew the honeymoon was over when my wife started using our marriage license as a blank. Newspaper. As a newspaper. Not an inspired answer, I would say. Had she gone just a little further, I said newspaper or whatever for the bottom of the birdcage. Using the marriage license for the bottom of the bird cage. Yes. All right, for the birds. Almost a match. Yes. The bides. The boids. Remember the bides? The bides. Alfred Hitchcock, I said a paper for the new puppy. Yeah. Paper for the new puppy. All right, Chuck. Chuck says the lining for the parakeet cage. The parakeet, man, a parakeet. 
Same old story. And a canary <laughs> and a little puppy. All right, Vicky. Well, I'm a newlywed, so mine's more boring. Paper, hey, paper airplane. airplane. That'd be good. Boing, there it goes right out the window. Yeah, the marriage and everything. Marriage it's in trouble too. when they use it for dartboard. Dartboard. You know you're in trouble, right? Yeah. All right, Miss Betty. Or a cleansing tissue. A you? cleansing tissue. Yes, indeed. Of course. So, there we are at the end of round one, and we'll go to round two, but now we got this to do for you. Today's consolation prizes are first, Franciscan's new floral sculptures dinnerware, gently sculpted blossoms with a blush of pastel, four patterns in white or celadon, floral sculptures by Franciscan. And from popular library, featuring Sweet Golden Sun, a great romantic epic of a woman's fierce struggle for love in the untamed West. And 1,000 watts and exclusive swing-away handle makes Sunbeam Swing Air Blower Dryer, the power pack portable to pack along wherever you go, swing air from Sunbeam, and comfortable Hager slacks, machine washable in a wide range of beautiful colors and patterns. Hager slacks, because looking good makes you feel good. And here's more of Match Game 78 starring Gene Raven. Thank, thank you, John. Here we go. Round two, the final round. Rick, you may have A or B. I'll take A again, Gene. A it is? All right. Now, Norm said, when I say my wife eats like a bird, I mean she eats like a bird. Today for lunch, she had a grilled blank on rye. <laughs> she eats like a bird. I got it. Got it. I heard it. Yep. <clears throat> eats like a bird. Eats like a bird. Okay. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait. Don't be nervous. Wonderful answer. Okay, Rick. Norm said, when I say my wife eats like a bird, I mean she eats like a bird. Today, for lunch, she had a grilled blank on rye. Grilled bird seed. A bird seed. How it? There are two good possibilities here. Bird seed or worms. He said bird seed. There's nothing wrong with that. What? What'd you say? I, I said grilled worm. A grilled worm. Okay. Yes. I think I, I said, uh, I think I misunderstood the question. Oh, you're going to come up with one of those weird answers, are you? I said she had a vulture on rye. <laughs> a grilled vulture on rye. Eats like a bird. You see, I, I thought that they, were, they meant as a bird. Don't apologize. Hello, Charles. Hi, it's I said a beetle or a bug. If you go to 89 cents now, you get a Coke, the beetle burger. The, the beetle burger, <laughs> yes. Birds eat beetles and bugs. Bees. That's wonderful that we have such a healthy bird life in America. It keeps the insects down and the mosquitoes. Worms. There's one of the possibilities. That's a good one. Show us wow. your worm. There it is. Worms? Oh, the woods is full of worms there. Yes. Okay. Well, Rick, if you had said you'd be in clover, yeah, if you had said worm, now all she's got to do is match one and she'll have won her third game. One nurse said to another, that new surgeon is really weird. I'm sorry. I know, you're too late. Yeah. You'll be sorry in the parking lot later when I slash your tires for not cooperating with us like this. Yeah, I'll give you another chance. One nurse said to another, that new surgeon is really weird. Okay. Wonderful. He walked into the operating room wearing three rubber gloves, two on his hands and one on his blank. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, You're such a dirty old man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Patty Wright. One nurse said to another, that new surgeon is really weird. He walked into the operating room wearing three rubber gloves, two on his hands and one on his blank. Nose. Nose. Okay. One nose will win the game. She'll win by a nose. She just did. Yeah, she won by a nose. thing happened to her twice in a row. Dick Martin said nose. He was the only one who said nose. Everybody else said head, and she won by a nose. And Rick, 
Uh, we thank you for being with us here on Match You're Game welcome. 78. We're going to send you some time. gifts. Thank, thank you very you. much. So long, Rick Richardson. Here it is, all for you. Now, Patty, let's get right to it. We pulled the studio audience, said write down your best answer to this. Snappy blank. Remember, 500 for matching the most popular, 250 the second most popular, and 100 dollars for matching the third. Who do you want over here? Brett. Snappy sayings. Snappy sayings. All right. Dick. Snappy patter. Snappy patter. And Richard. But he is a snappy dresser. Right. Snappy dresser. Thank you, Richard. Snappy dresser, snappy patter, snappy sayings. You have the option now of choosing one of those or snappy. giving us one of your own. I'll say dresser. Snappy dresser. That's Richard's answer. Let's find out if it's up there and if so, you where. Sure May we see the $100 response? <laughs> snappy answer. She's not going to find any of those here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we got a snappy dresser under the $250 number. Yes, we do. Congratulations, Patty. We got $250. What do you think's under the big one? Tom. Okay. Snappy Tom. Snappy Tom. That's a spicy tomato. All right, now you're going to play for $2,500. You have to choose one celebrity and match them exactly. I'm going with Richard again. All right, Richard. Here we go. This time, Good luck Patty. to Patty Wright. <clears throat> Little Big Blank. Little Big Blank. Okay, he's finished. You give us the answer that matches his. We give you two thousand five hundred dollars. Little big horn. Little big horn. Yes, sir. That's where they had that terrible disaster. Depending on whose side you were on. You remember uh, Custer's last words? What did All he say? All leaves are canceled. All leaves are canceled. Hey, 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 hey. I'm Gene Weber. Join us next time. Match game 78. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 78, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tottenham production. This program was edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars from Dallas, Steve Kennelly, Brett Summers, Carol Nelson Riley, Jamie Lee Curtis, Richard Paul, and Fanny Flagg as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game PM. And now, here's the star of Match Game PM, Gene Raven. Does it make me a bad person? <laughs> Takes a man to wear red shoes, I'll tell you that. Are you ready? That's right. I met your rose. That's not all, honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shall we have a go at it? Why not, John? Okay, greet Laura Sands and Randy Sherwood. <laughs> Welcome. We'll get acquainted first by finding out a little bit about each of you. Randy, let's begin with you. Well, after getting out of the Navy, I majored in broadcast management in college, uh, was a disc jockey a number of times, and worked in an engineering capacity in television down in San Diego. And I'm unemployed now. It's a difficult business it, to get into, isn't it? Very competitive. It? Very yes. competitive. Tough. You've got to really know people and be places. That's right. That's right. Well, good luck Thank here, you. and good luck in your continued career. Laura, let's hear about you. Well, I was born and raised in Denver, Colorado, and I moved out here about a year ago, and now I am a clerical typist. All right. Short and sweet. 
Laura, good luck to you too. Here on Match Game PM, each of you will have three opportunities to match as many of our stars as you can. The one who's done that most often at the end of the third round will go on to play the Big Money Super Match where you can win over $20,000. I'll take B, please. He says he wants B. When the Martians landed, they decided there was no intelligent life on Earth because they landed in blank. Got it. <laughs> By the end of the program, you have to tell me the connection between the Titanic and Denver, Colorado. Uh -huh. The connection between the Titanic and Denver, Colorado. Do you happen to know? See that? That's why a show like this should be informative and filled with wonderfully interesting things. Hmm. Well, there I'll think about it. There is a connection, right? There is a connection. Right. We'll you find don't out. know it, do you? You got your red accessories up the kazoo. <laughs> but you're... Okay, Randy. When the Martians landed, they decided there was no intelligent life on Earth because they landed in blank. Washington, D.C. Okay, Randy. Steve, I think he's on to us. What, what did he say? He said Washington, D.C. That's what I said, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm now, Peter, what are we going to do for the rest of the evening yeah. if we all say Washington, D.C.? I don't know. <laughs> we'll pray I, I for I a wanna, tie. I want to thank Miss Roberta Peters of the Metropolitan Opera for lending her fourth act Lucia costume to Brett so she could do the show. Yeah, Washington. Washington. Zero. But he's trying. Hello, Jamie. Hi. When the Martians landed, they decided no intelligent life on Earth because they landed in... Beautiful downtown Burbank. Yeah. Burbank. <laughs> Sorry, I did And you, sir. Well, when they landed, they said, take me to your leader. And they came to see me. Bye. Wow. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I must say I was so afraid because uh, for a minute those little green men looked quite a bit like a very nasty rabbit, and I was frightened. <laughs> and you didn't have no peanuts on you. Nothing. All right, Miss Fanny. Well, I said that they landed in a match game run through. <laughs> <laughs> but then I don't care to work again. I mean, what difference does it make? I'll hit you with my red shoe. Okay. Four for Randy. Look at him. Now, Laura, you'll have three opportunities to catch up. Let's see what it says here. Billy said, when I was born, my parents kept me in a jar. For okay. years, I thought I was a blank. <laughs> okay, Laura. <laughs> Billy said, when I was born, my parents kept me in a jar. For years, I thought I was a blank. Pickle. Yeah. Pickle jar. Well, I, I think I came close, but I, you probably won't allow it. A pickled pig's foot. Yeah. Pickled pig's yeah. foot. That's, no. There's the word. No, no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Hold on. A pickle. Pickles, pickles, pig's foot. Yeah, yeah. pickles and pig's feet are two different items. Yeah. See, but. So I'm, are cucumbers oh. and pickles. Right. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. I almost got you, didn't I, you little right. devil? I think we're going to have another no-show. Dill Pickle. Dill Pickle. Okay. Where are we? 41? I went right down to the heart. Just a simple word and a match. Pickle. All right, you got it. Here it is. When I was born, my parents kept me in a jar. For years, I thought I was a... Pickle. Pickle. Why are you so sad? <laughs> I felt like being sad. You wanted to display a sad no, emotion? No, no. Yes, so that, so that they wouldn't you. think I had. So oh, yeah. I see. I got you. <laughs> Richard Paul. <laughs> Specimen. Physical specimen. Oh, good. You can't crawl out of that one. <laughs> Miss Fanny, rescue us from this. Will Daddy you? Paul, so amusing. <laughs> I said pickle. Uh -huh. 
up in around one. We have a tie score. Round two coming up in a moment or so. Right now, this for you. Now, see, we have a tie score here. We'll go to round two in a moment or so. But I just want to clarify the thing about Denver. Do you understand what it is? I sure do. Do you understand what it is? What? I mean, do you want to explain it, Charles? Oh, Molly Brown, right? Oh. The unsinkable Molly Brown was called that because she was on the Titanic and she didn't sink. And, and when I go to Denver, I always say at the Brown Palace, which is very nice. That's why the musical was called The Unsinkable Molly Brown. And it's not that important, but it's interesting. These things are very interesting. Are you I trying to tell us that she came oh. from Denver? It's all so heavy. Heavy and interesting. He's not heavy. He's your brother. Oh. I feel so refreshed. You know what they would say to you with another Titanic? <coughs> Men and women and all guys with a lot of red accessories first. <laughs> And uh, red shoes first. Uh, okay. Shoes. Randy went first last time, so Laura, we ask you to go first this time. B, please. B? B. Okay. <laughs> True. What? <laughs> no. So you hear voices now, don't you? The Titanic is coming back to get you. One farmhand said to another, he said, Farmer Brown is really mean. He's the only farmer in the world that uses his wife as a blank. And you, you're the only two. Steve and Richard are the only two who play. Okay. Laura, one farmhand said to another. Put it in the slot. Farmer Brown. One MC per show, if you please. <laughs> One farmhand said to another, Farmer Brown is really mean. He's the only farmer in the world that uses his wife as a... Plow horse. Yeah. Plow horse. The answer was plow horse from her lips. What'd you say? To God's ear. Yeah, it's the 20th century, so close. A tractor. Tractor. Wow. And you, sir? Well, the woman had a very uh, large, well, sharp pointed nose, and he just grabbed her by the ankles and used her as a plow. Yeah. As a plow. <laughs> so there's no match there. She said you are plow a sadist. Horse. You are a sadist, oh. Richard Paul. She had, long, she had long nails and she was a pitchfork. Well. Now, Randy, let's see if you make any progress here. <laughs> Old man Periwinkle said... Hey. There you go. <laughs> what did he say? Seventeen is when your sex drive goes into first gear. 65 is when your sex drive goes into blank. <laughs> 17 is when your sex drive goes into first gear. 65 is when your sex drive goes into... Reverse. Reverse! <laughs> What do you say to that, Jamie? It actually should go in the repair shop, but actually goes into reverse. Yeah. Oh. Time and what do you say to that? I hate to think of life as just a set of gears. <laughs> reverse. Reverse. Now, Laura, we'll go to round three. He's matched all six of our stars. <laughs> that means you have one chance to match the two you haven't matched, and you can have A or B. A this time. All right. A. 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 Yes. Ben said, my sister is really strange looking. How strange is she? Very good. <laughs> Not quite in unison. It's you must be in unison. <laughs> <laughs> what time must you be in unison? <laughs> Meet me in unison in the world. She just had a sweet 16 party. That's not her age, it's her blank size. <laughs> All right. My sister is really strange looking. She just had a sweet 16 party. It's not her age, it's her blank size. Bra size. Bra size. <laughs> but I'm asking both. 
Steve, what do you say? Well, I was thinking we were still doing the daytime show. I said shoe size. Shoe size. So that means Randy wins the game. What do you have? Right. You missed the call. Don't you come on down, Randy. Here we go. Randy Sherwood, the winner. Pleasure to meet Laura Sands. Gonna send some gifts to you for Match Game PM. Laura Sands, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a little message for you. Hurry back. Randy Sherwood believes this is a fortuitous moment for him because he is unemployed. <laughs> and he has a chance to win over twenty thousand dollars at this moment. If you had a job, Randy, it would take you two or three weeks to earn that amount. <laughs> At least a day. Yes. Here we go. We uh, poll the studio audience in this very room. Very smart bunch like these here. <laughs> and we said, if you please, write down your best answer to this. The eyes of blank. Now, if you uh, give us the answer, which they wrote down most often, we'll give you $500. For matching the second most popular answer, $250 for you. And if you match the third, we give you $100. Now, as you call on three of our six stars, call on the ones who have a glimmer of intelligence in their eyes. If you call on the dummies, you're going to strike out. <laughs> All right, one at a time, if you please. Ah, uh, Jamie. Jamie. The eyes of Laura Mars. The eyes of Laura Mars. The motion picture. Brett. I say the eyes of the world. The eyes of the world are right. upon you. Oh. Look Could over we get carefully. a little stretch there? <laughs> Richard. <laughs> Texas, son. Yeah. The eyes of Texas. The eyes of Texas are upon you. The, the eyes of the world, the eyes of Laura Mars, and the eyes of Texas are the three they've given you. And now you have to make a choice. One of those or one of your own. Texas is a nifty answer, but uh, my first thought was Laura Mars. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go with Laura Mars. I'll go with Laura Mars. I went with Laura Mars for two years. Was it nice? No. No, I didn't like her at all. All right, he wants Laura Mars. We all want Laura Mars. All right, let's find out if we have Laura Mars under the $100 number. The eyes of the world. Oh, There's you Brett's all laughed answer. when I yeah. sat down to play. Yes, we did laugh. <laughs> Let's see if we have Laura Mars out of the $250 response. The eyes of Texas. Now, I no thought that was going to be on top. I no, really did. No, if you don't go to the movies, you poor treasure. What are you doing now? No, I just want to come down and speak for Texas. Now, wait a minute. You're going to say a word about Texas? I want to talk about if Laura Mars comes up here. I'm going to talk about Texas. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, wait a minute. No, my chick is going to talk about Texas. No, I've come down to now, show we want my to see you that the people choose Laura Mars over a state that is so beautiful as Texas. <laughs> Go ahead, show your sign. Show your sign. Okay. I am Houston. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hold everything. Wait a minute. I want the senator from Texas over here. All right. So they can see the disaster. Senator, thing that's happen would you come right over here? here? He's trying yeah. to give me a. Freedom. Would you get out of the way? Get out so we can get some people up here. All right. All right. That's what we've been doing all day. It's if not was my only fault. on the streets of San Francisco, we wouldn't have touched him in the town. <laughs> you want to buy those? I didn't know they made them this big. <laughs> oh, and he thinks he's going to win the money. <laughs> okay. It was the red colors. All right. Where are we? Oh, oh he's won... Uh, Five uh, five hundred dollars, uh -huh. which means the least you'll play for is ten times that amount, or five thousand dollars. Do you realize that? Woo! But we're gonna give you another shot. 
Got another audience match here. That's Slider. Blank dropper. Oh, boy, I got one. You got one. I got one. Call on me. Call on me, Randy. Oh, Trust me. Wait a minute. No, Let's see. Go who should I call on? The eyes of Laura Mars. The eye dropper. That was all a plot to get us. I think I'll call on Brett. Okay, Brett. I say, here and now, to y'all, the eyes of eye dropper. Eye dropper. You dropper, eye dropper. No singing. Uh, Did you see that catch? And they say I'm blind. I am not blind. <laughs> okay, that's one. You want Fanny? Yeah. Yeah. I'll okay, Fanny. Fanny. <laughs> How would you like her? Fried or scrambled? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Over easy. Over easy. Oh. Over easy. <laughs> Precious, precious, hush up your, shut up your ears, shut your eyes, don't Come on, Fanny, give us an answer. We'll just think he's going to be rich. Uh, <laughs> let's see, let's see, Snooky Lanson, Snooky Lanson, Snooky Lanson, name drop. Name drop. <laughs> oh, yeah. One more. Uh, I go with Jamie again. That was oh, I go guys, with Jamie, too. You used up all my answers. You got uh, one? I got one. Uh, um... Um, uh, no, I don't have one. I'm sorry. I'm blank. Honey. They took my honey. only two. All honey. right. Honey. Yes, I, I want to say, no, don't no, buzz no, a buzzer. No, no. Don't buzz I a do buzzer. I am going to say Texas dropper. Oh. <laughs> Texas dropper is a bird that flies. Okay, you got a choice of eye dropper or name dropper. You want one of those or one of your own? Sure, my first thought was name dropper. Name dropper is what we want. Let's see if it's under the $100 fund. Eve's Eve's dropper is there. Let's see what we've got under the $250 response. Name dropper it is. Congratulations. Another $250 for you. So that means you've got a total of $7,500. Wait a minute. See what's under the bottom one. That you're playing for. the bottom one. The top one says... I drop it. Okay. Seventy-five hundred is what you're playing for. However, you can play for fifteen thousand dollars if you get a lucky spin of the star wheel. Get up there and spin Come it. Come on and double it up, babe. Double. And we'll all root for a double. Here we go. Ready, Steve. Oh, Steve. Okay. Good luck to you. Stand on the little uh, blue dot there facing me, if you would, please. Thank you. Here we go. Begin blank. Begin blank. Okay. Now, if you give us the answer that Steve has oh, written on the card, put the... we give you fifteen thousand dollars. What's wrong? Nothing. Got to put it in a slot. Oh, seventy-five hundred. Yeah, I didn't uh, hit the double thing there. Okay, give us an answer if you would, please. That was tough. Uh, begin firing. Oh. oh. I thought you had the money in your hip pocket, young. All right, turn around here, heart. and we'll ask Sweet. Steve what answer he has on his card. Oh, a little Cole Porter tune. Begin the beginning. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? Before my time. Yes, you have no right. idea what he's saying, begin the beginning? No. Oh, when you begin the beginning. I still don't. Da, da, he, still, da, da, he still doesn't recognize it. Okay, well, Randy Sherwood has a total of $750 and our best wishes, and now we've got this message for you. Join us next week for Match Game PM. We'll have another bevy of beautiful stars like these. <laughs> and a lot more money to give away. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Some contestants.
cuts greasy dirt without streaking and makes shiny surfaces sparkle like glass. Windex shines more than just windows. And a portable radio and Popeye's fun and delicious. A terrific freeze at home treat. 12 hours in the sort of play. Risk treat your youngsters with refreshing Popeye's. And the Polish L system from Turtle Wax. Space age protection for your car's finish. Three layers deep, 24 months long. The Polish Shell system. For Max Game PM, a Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. Get ready to match the star, Orson B, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Love, Linda Day Joy, from Family Feud, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Dillavant, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game, P.M. And now, here's the star of Match Game, P.M., Thank you. Would yes. You do me a favor? What? Would you get the camera to show America your shoes? Oh, I oh, love oh, them. Well, now yeah. wait a minute. Great. I love Doesn't those everybody shoes. have shoes like these? No. Not since 1925. No. That's me. <laughs> you remember the great Gatsby? Yeah. I love them. Well, here I am again. I welcome you one and all oh, and ask wonderful. you to greet our two players here, Allison McCall and Carl Cookerly. Yeah. How do you do? How do you do? Good. Now, we'd like to find out a little bit about each of you, and Carl, we'll begin with you, sir. All right, I'm a native Californian. I teach fourth grade in Valencia Park in Fullerton. I bet the kids love you. Good luck to you, Carl. Now, this lady. Um, I'm from Belmont, North Carolina, and I'm a senior at South Point High School, and I like to play tennis, and I'm on the gymnastics team, and I'm really excited about being here, but I'm nervous. No, you don't have to go. I tell you how you can get over here being nervous. Get out here and do a cartwheel. <laughs> That'd relax you, wouldn't it? No. No? May I point out to each of you that here on Match Game PM, each of you will have three opportunities to match as many of those as you possibly can. And the one who's done that most often at the end of the third round will be the winner. And we'll go on to play the Big Money Super Match, which can pay off a big bundle of money over $10,000. Wow. So here we go. Boom. Now, Carl, I'll ask you to go first and make a selection here, A or B? I like B. You want B? Okay, anything you say. As in B cup? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, C cup. Here we are. 102 year old Mr. Periwinkle said, Oh, I have. I have my own energy shortage <laughs> to conserve my energy. I only blank once a week. <laughs> oh. 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 All right, I'll come over here to Carl Cookerly. Gotcha. 102-year-old Mr. Periwinkle said, I have my own energy shortage. And to conserve my energy, I only blank once a week. Sleep. What? Sleep. Sleep once a week. I think your fourth graders could have done better than that. <laughs> now, wait a minute. 
I don't think Carl quite understood the question. Orson? Carl does not know that Mr. Periwinkle is known as a randy old man. Randy, a good word. <laughs> Terror of the old folks' home. Right. And he only fools around or makes love. Once, Once a week. week. Conserves his energy that way, you see. Okay. What do you say to that? For making whoopee. Making whoopee. We have the same answer. Yeah. I also said making whoopee. I wonder where he got it. No, I didn't copy. And when he does, he sits down. Sits That's down, right, right. You've been cutting velvet, I see. <laughs> yeah. Cut <laughs> velvet. Cut <laughs> velvet. <laughs> Okay, Linda Day George. Oh, Miss Periwinkle said I have my own energy shortage, and to conserve my energy, I only blank once a week. Well, if I was 102, I'd only move once a week. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> sit, stay in one place, eh? Oh, you want well, to put that away in that slot there? Yes. That's perfectly Sorry, all right. I thought you were getting fresh with me. <laughs> Hello there, <laughs> Richard. Promises, promises. <laughs> yeah. Make love. Man, I remember. Yeah. I remember no. when. Hello, Joyce. I love you, Mr. Periwinkle. I love you, too. <laughs> but you're too old for me. <laughs> I know. What? <laughs> uh, I didn't think make love once a week, because he's really old. Yes. I thought, I thought probably kiss, because it takes a lot of energy to go... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of energy to pucker up, eh? There. So, Carl, that's the way it goes here. Now, let's see how Allison does with her first rounder. Remember, they're a little difficult. Fat Frida was such a fat baby. <laughs> Beelzebub. I didn't. Beelzebub is exactly right. I didn't expect that. Well, all right. If you're going to do it, let's do it. Now, fat Frida was such a fat baby. I'm going to tell you how fat she was. A stork that delivered her needed a blank. How fat she was. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good. Splendid. Yes, indeed I will, Allison. Nothing is too good for you. All right, since we've finished over there, now we're finished. Here it is. Fat Frida was such a fat baby, the stork that delivered her needed a blank. A helper? A helper. Aren't you going to be surprised when six celebrities over there say helper? <laughs> well, I am, I'll tell you that. <laughs> she didn't draw them. Right. You can't win them all. The stork needed a helper. Oh! an egg and you compound it. <laughs> what do you say? She certainly has a sturdy yes. little body. Yes. <laughs> I figured she was only going to get four. Oh. <laughs> I don't believe it. That's you know, this game is really quite unpredictable. These rotten answers sometimes can win thousands of dollars there. I beg your pardon. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. I think there's something wrong with me. I... No, I said crane. Crane. Patches. The stork brought a friend along. It was a crane. It was he said, a crane. Help me. That's, That's right. right. It was another crane, another bird. Ah, the fat man stork that delivered needed a helper. What do you say to that, Well, Linda? I said that his helper was a crane. Yes. So far, two helpers, two cranes. Colonel Hogan, in other words. Colonel Hogan. Or a Bob Crane. Oh, Bob Crane. Yes, of course. All right. Um, he's been mentioned on yes, television. Yes, that's right. Oh, wow. the last time I met. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, they always have to have the baby right in the thing, in the blanket. Oh, yeah, the blanket. So I said needed a horse blanket and crane. <laughs> okay. So there it is. And the round one, two to nothing in favor of Allison McCall. Round two coming up later, but first this. Now, Allison is ahead here, so we're going to have to ask her to go first. You may have A or B. I'm B. You want B? Uh -huh. You sure? Okay. <laughs> That's B for Carolyn. Right. <laughs> At the hospital, when the nurse put Tom in traction, yes. she hooked him up wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what's coming. You sure you want B? <laughs> She hooked him up wrong, and in seconds, the machine yanked Tom's blank off. <laughs> well. Now, traction. So we come over here to Allison McCall. At the hospital, when the nurse put Tom in traction, Allison, she hooked him up wrong, and in seconds, the machine yanked Tom's blank off. 
head. Head. I okay. can't think of nothing. <laughs> okay. Oh now, wait a minute. You leave her alone. She's a struggling student and needs the money. No, I said leg. Leg is a good response. Leg is good. All of those, you know, head, leg, arm, all that. If she hooked them up incorrectly, what do you say? Well, leg is good, but head is better. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, there it is. That gives it three. Leg is good, but... She uh, hooked him up, you say. Hooked him up wrong. Incorrectly. <laughs> Incorrectly. Yeah. And it's second, the machine yanked Tom's head off. Last word, I believe. Were, was it good for you, too? Yeah. <laughs> What? She was trying to get ahead in nursing. Oh. Oh. Now, Tom, you got to catch up here now. You ready to play a little catch-up game here? Here yes. we go. Everybody plays. One counterfeiter said to the other, this $100 bill isn't going to fool anyone. The back is supposed to have a picture of Independence Hall, not Blank Hall. <laughs> I you got, got it. it, all right. Because she saw, yes, she saw, uh, uh, Orson. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, here we go. Yes. No, I didn't. Alice, uh, Carl, are you ready? Mm -hmm. you know what you are. Quiet! Thank you. Thank you. It's your old soul. <laughs> Hello, Hello mine. One counterfeiter. <laughs> <laughs> One counterfeiter said to the other, this $100 bill isn't going to fool anyone. The back is supposed to have a picture of Independence Hall, not Blank Hall. Juvenile. Juvenile Hall. Juvenile Hall. <laughs> you like that answer. Oh, well, why are you applauding if you don't like the answer? Why are you applauding if you don't like You are weird. <laughs> Weirdos. Pay no attention to them. What do you say? You're supposed to have a picture of Independence Hall, not Monty Hall. Right. <laughs> and you. What do you say? First, I have this to say. Uh. I did not steal, steal this, this answer. answer. Right. Monty. Monty. <laughs> Just a coincidence. I did not steal this answer. And he wouldn't... Monty. <laughs> Monty, Monty. Who does that routine? <laughs> I'm not a beast. Monty, Monty, Monty. Monty. You know, I, I should have thought of it being, him being a teacher, but I put Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Okay. You know, right. Mr. Clancy. That's a very good. Andrew right. Carnegie's sister out there. Andrew now, Carnegie yeah. is <laughs> applauding <laughs> out there. Thank you very much. Now, Richard, we're up to you. El Monte. El Monte. And you, Joyce? I said Monte Hall, the greatest MC. <laughs> Really? Well, Should we give her our Christmas presents now? <laughs> I think we're going to be denied even that, <laughs> you rascally woman. Oh, oh, where are we here? And in round two, five to nothing, the score. All right, we're going to go to round three. I'll push the button, reveal one question for each Alice in your head. You still go first? Um, A this time. You want A this time? Yeah. There's only one person who plays. Who is that? Charles, are you ready for this? He was picking on me, and he's the only one who's playing. You're the only one who plays, Charles. <laughs> Count Dracula well, said. Who? Make sure the camera has me terrific. Yes. No, it wasn't on the thing. It was on Linda Day George. <laughs> Why? Wasn't it? Why? <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> Come on, now. Ten. There we go. I mean, All I'm right. trying to improve my wardrobe, and it's on some blonde. Yeah. <laughs> A very fancy piece of velvet. Thank you. Yes. Blueberry Hill is the answer. No, 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 no. I'm ahead of my time. I just got a wonderful new job. Starting Monday, I go to work for the blank. <laughs> for the blank. Thank you, like you said. For the blank. Now let's see how he does when he's the only person. He's all alone. Yeah. Right. That's one he's of on the, his own. That's one of the lesser Bella Lugosi impressions <laughs> to be had. All right. Dracula's the one that's What's that? Hold everything now. He's all ready. Uh, contractor says, I just got a wonderful new job. Starting Monday, I go to work for the... Can I ask you one question? What's the question? He's trying to find out who Dr. Dracula is. <laughs> My dear, it is not Dr. Count. Dracula. Oh. Count Dracula. Count Dracula. What? 
Is he the one that bites you? No, I'm the one who bites you. Vampire. I can't think of nothing. I'm sorry. Your answer is vampire? I go to work for the vampire? She said vampire, Chuck. <laughs> My hair doesn't look good. <laughs> this is not a job being the when only has solo. It? <laughs> when I first bought it, it looked better. <laughs> I chose in my solo performance blood bath. Good answer, right? Now, Carl, do you want B or do you want A? A. A. You want A? Okay, you got A. Here it is. <laughs> Cynthia said, I live my life by the 11th commandment. Love thy neighbor, but don't get blank. Love thy neighbor, but don't get blank. And we're back in the horse race. There we are. Okay, Carl, come really see. Here we go. Cynthia said, I live my life by the 11th commandment. Love thy neighbor. But don't get blank. Caught. <laughs> he gave the definitive answer. And I give the definitive response. Oh, Caught. there it is. So it's now five to one. Brett? That's a male answer. That's a male answer? You're absolutely a male answer. You know what the, preg the, the, the female answer is? Now get pregnant. Oh. Now, you must match all of the remaining celebrities, Carl, to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Let's see if now it he's happens. He's going to be, it's going to be. Caught. I chose the female response. Carl <laughs> <laughs> Cookerly. Nice to meet you, sir. Many thanks for being with us here at Match Game PM. So long, Carl. While we're spinning him off, we're going to spin these messages for you. Oh, he's good. Now, here's Allison McCall. She could win a great deal of money here. To get you to that money, Allison, we have two audience matches for you. And I want to point out that whatever you win in these audience matches, you'll have a chance to multiply by 10. And that'll be the final dollar figure that you'll be playing for. Let's begin. We polled an audience here uh, not too long ago. And we got their best answer to this. Weak blank. Now, you will get $500 if you match the answer they gave most frequently. And for their second most popular answer, you get $250 and then $100 for the third. And three of the six celebrities can help you out. Um, Orson. Oh. <laughs> That's not an easy one. I know. <laughs> Candy, little girl? <laughs> that was tough. Weak Link. Weak link is one. Okay. Richard. What I get when I look at you? Weak need. Yeah. Weak need. Um, Linda. Well, uh, uh, weak heart. Weak heart. That's so there heart. they are. Weak heart, weak need, and weak link. Allison, they're the three. Have you got a better idea? Please. I'll go with Richard. Weak yeah, need. Right. Okay, let's find out if it's up there. And if so, where? Let's begin by revealing the $100 response. Weak stomach is one. No weak knees there. Let's see if we got them under the $250 number. Weak sister is another good one. But we're looking for weak knees. May we see the big one? Slide it, Earl. Yes, you got it. Very good. Well, congratulations, my dear. Now, you've won the 500, which means the least you'll be playing for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. And let's go on to the next audience match. Slide it, Earl. Way to blank. All right, call him out. Richard. Way to go. Way to go is one. Charles. Charles. Hello. <laughs> Santa Fe. Way to, way On to. On the way to Santa Fe. Way to, no. It's, da, 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 the way to Santa Fe. Yeah, Santa Fe, right? Santa Fe, right. Da, da, no, it's not Santa Fe. 
San Jose. Yeah, that's what I said. San, San Jose. Jose. <laughs> On the way to San Jose. Um, Brett. That's a uh, way to do it. That's the way to do it. Okay. So those are the three. San Jose, way to do it, and way to go. I'll go with Richard, way to go. Way to go. Okay. We'll begin down at the bottom as usual, and we will reveal the $100 response. Way to heaven. Oh, really? Way to go. The way to heaven is a way to go there. May we see the next one, if you please? Way to San Jose. Atta boy, Chuck. Last chance for way to go. 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 Another $500 multiplied by 10 is 5,000. You got a pot of $10,000 to shoot for. We'll be glad to give you the money if you match one celebrity exactly. Richard. Yes. Okay, here we go. It's worth $10,000. No help because you may be giving her a rotten answer. All right? Think carefully now. Get your mental telepathy going over to Richard, and here it is. In the heat of blank. All right, Richard's finished. Allison, give us an answer which will match his, and you get the $10,000 in the heat of... The night. All right. Okay, Richard. She says in the heat of the night, I'll match you. What do you say? I'm... S oh, yeah. <laughs> money to give away and a lot more enchanting celebrities as these. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Some contestants will receive Record a Call 80. Ceilings so beautiful, so warm, so interesting, they have the crowning touch to any room. And rain dance car wax lasts longer than any room car wax. Water being improved, the pot guarantees it. And Bardol's new fuel system treatment. The gasoline additive to help keep your entire fuel system clean. The gas tank to carburetor, you'll feel the difference. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM, a Mark Goodson, Bill Sudman production.